What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the City Life Project YouTube channel for yet another fight companion. First of this week, and we're doing three this week, so... What up? Welcome to everybody. Live play-by-play, -play, live commentary, live reaction, of course, live interaction with all you folks on the channel. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Drop a comment in the live chat. Introduce yourself. We have a great fight community that we are building here. And also like the video because while you're doing so, if you like the video and drop a comment in the live chat, you're automatically entered into winning some prizes. Yes, that's right. We do giveaways on every live stream that we do here on this channel covering fights. So what's up? What's up? I see pains already in the chat what's going on brother sadly i won't be watching the event but i'll chill chill here for a bit hey fair enough i know it's early for a lot of you um good morning bahrain by the way hosting brave uh combat federation i truly do love watching this league i've watched two other uh, full cards of Brave Combat Federation. Really dig the vibe. And apparently they have special guest Hasbula dropping by. Folks, I'll tell you one thing. Hasbula is going to drop by this stream as well. If that's not a tease, I don't know what is. Uh, but again, comment, like, join our community. Uh, Booth, Malam, Torres, Mora. Oh, those are, your, uh, those are your predictions right off the bat. I love it. My week's going good, brother. My week's going good. Uh, it's been busy on the work side, but hey, happy Friday. Happy Friday. Excited to start off. My broadcast just got a lot louder. Um, excited to start off this week covering some fights. We will be doing the whole Brave card today and then tomorrow, uh, the Bellator prelims. Depending on what time the prelims end, because I know it's a stacked prelims card, uh, we might cut it short at the prelims or go all the way to the, to the main event. Regardless, we'll be doing a chunk of of Bellator tomorrow, and then UFC Fight Night in the evening. Depending on when UFC Fight Night ends, we might also jump and cover the Jake Paul Anderson Silva belt. Thank you very much, uh, Florida Panthers. Now, <laughs> shout out Waggle Golf. Get your waggle on .com. They support these streams and my podcast. The Even if you're not a golfer, Waggle Golf, best damn golf apparel out there. I'm not a golfer outside the mini golf. Okay, let's. Uh, the, the broadcast is still introducing everything. So until the fighters start walking out, we won't introduce the first two fighters. But if, again, if you're new to this channel, that's what we do. As the two fighters are walking out for their bout, we highlight them, we show them some love, we, we give them some recognition, right? Because I know, especially on these brave CF cards, a lot of the casual MMA fans, those who just watch the UFC, those who just watch Bellator and whatnot, they don't know a lot about these guys and gals. So we like to highlight them, like to uh, tell you what their fighting style is, what their records are, whatever information we can find on Tapology, Sure Dog, Wikipedia on the fly. We do highlight them for you folks. And then I want to hear your predictions. Even if you don't know them, even if you do know them, I want to hear your predictions. Shane and I always go, uh, one of the one of our users, one of our listeners, I guess, users, one of our listeners that dated me, one of our listeners, he, uh, him and I always do beer bets. So we do one for one bets on, on each fighter. Even if we don't know them, it's just fun. So get your predictions in. We want to hear them. I'll be here for the Bellator and fight night for sure. Nice dude. Nice. What's cool about brave CF is if you want to rewatch it later, um, I'm watching it via their YouTube channel. So there you go. Uh, since it's 10 AM central time where I'm watching this again, shout out Bahrain. Bahrain, I should say, hosting this beautiful event. There you go. There you go. No beer for me this morning, just some coffee. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow's going to be a long one. Tomorrow's going to be a good long day of fights. I mean, literally from the morning, starting with Bellator, all the way to Jake Paul and Anderson Silva at night with a bunch of great mixed martial arts and a UFC event thrown in there as well. Mm -mm. Nothing like... Uh... Nothing like a nice coffee to start for you. What time is it in Bahrain, by the way? I probably should have checked that out. Paul Silva's rig. How so? How so? People were saying that about Woodley. People were saying that about Askren. Oh, did Jake Paul beat their asses? And this is going to be his toughest test yet. All right. Still just seeing some highlights from like the weigh-ins. And then we'll get into uh, highlighting the first two fired fighters here. Now, I figured this would happen. You know, it's the, the start of the broadcast. They're getting everyone pumped. The YouTube's trying to get a few more people onto their stream. I get it. I get it. And I know this one. This ain't no one champion stream. I know this one's not going to blow up like some of the other streams on the City Life Project YouTube channel. 
But regardless, I was going to watch this anyways. And that's what that's what I tell everyone on these streams. Again, if you're new to the channel, like, welcome, welcome. We're building such a great fight community. I know this morning it might not reflect that, but everyone's working. No one's watching Brave CF like the psycho that I am. Uh, didn't see the bet. Uh, United Fighter Association is going to happen no matter who wins. Oh, oh, the... Um, well, how's that a rigged? Uh, how should that play into the fight at all? I'm very confused, Payne. I'm very confused. Paul is gonna win. Ah, I mean, is he the favorite? I wouldn't be surprised if he's the favorite. I don't know. I want to believe. I want to believe. Like like with like with Charles Oliveira, I wanted to be a believer. It didn't it didn't work out well that night. But you know what? I'm putting my money on Silva. I'm putting my money on Silva because this is what, if it goes and what is it, seven rounds? It's it's, it's seven or eight rounds. It, it's not as long as I know some of the some pro boxing matches. Whatever the case, if it goes the distance, I think Silva's gonna win. I mean, I don't think he has the power anymore at 47 years old to knock out you know a young strong guy like Jake Paul. Um, if he gets clipped, if he gets clipped by that shit man by that that punch that jake throws that knocked out woodley that knocked out asker and then 100 his you know old fart of a brain is going to shut off the thing is he's still quick i don't know if he's going to be able to get hit with one of those loaded up shots that you know woodley just kept his arms down for where Askren just didn't even think that the guy could box so didn't give him any sort of respect uh anything i've just seen is making me think it's rigged i don't think it's it can't be rigged there it's 2022 bro <laughs> in in big promotions in north america they there is no rig because they lose money at the end of the day right you can't beat vegas anymore dude this ain't the fucking 60s shit even early 90s with how much money is going through with betting on boxing and mixed martial arts now there's no way it's rigged i'm sorry wholeheartedly disagree now if we're talking uh like rising <laughs> out east i mean things are a little bit different um, I won't go as far as to say the Habib's promotion pays people to win, but I mean, we'll see. <laughs> um, didn't Kevin Lee fight Diego Sanchez in Eagle FC? How did that turn out? I, did, I obviously didn't watch that. I mean, I don't want to watch Diego fight anymore. Exactly. It's 2022. You're digging yourself even more of a grave there, buddy. Uh, Jake Paul gives them all the money he pays them to win i'm so confused dude it's a sanctioned boxing match i'm uh, are you trolling me or something like i i'm i'm concerned that you're serious about this pain because you're a smart guy you're a smart guy <laughs> still waiting for the first bout to start by the way folks put it this way when, when the whole jake not even jake paul logan paul okay that's one thing that's one thing I don't trust that guy at all. I think that guy, I mean, did you listen to that? even Andrew Tate? Not, I mean, I take everything Andrew Tate says with a grain of salt too, but he was saying that like Logan is just, he's not a real fighter. And hell, you know, Sam Alvey said the same thing. He was training with, um, with the Paul brothers at one point, former UFC fighter. And he said, Jake's the real deal. Like whether he's going to be a great pro boxer or not, he's a boxer. He, he's developed his skills. He's a boxer. Logan, Pain. If we're having the conversation about paying people off with Logan Paul, that I, I have some, I have, uh, I have time for that conversation. Jake is in the fight game now. There is no paying people off. There is no paying people off. Um, there's Eagle FC on Sunday. Nice. Uh, Sunday. I told my roommate I'd watch football with him most of Sunday, so I doubt I'll be doing the Eagle FC stream on Sunday. Who's who's headlining? Are there any big names on that one, Pain? <laughs> look i'm not a fan of him either by any means but like i'm taking everything that is the disney star and youtuber jake paul aside and being like okay this is combat sports he is now a combat sport athlete that's where i'm judging him on i'm a fight fan man i'm not a what do you call it reality star fan although i was watching that i don't even know what it was called last night but it got me hooked uh, and he's gonna win against a great hey I let let's do you want to do a beer bet for this? <laughs> oh, I feel like I'm gonna lose again. 
Also, Jake Paul fights are rigged until he gets an MMA cage, and if he wins, then I'll still say it's rigged. Put it this way. If he gets into an MMA cage, then I think it's more rigged than boxing. Why do you think boxing is rigged, man? Boxing is is, is harder. Uh, anyways, we can go back and forth all day. Agree to disagree, Payne, and I hope our boy Silva comes out on top. So that way, you can cheer, I can cheer. We can uh, clank those glasses and be merry. I also don't like boxing. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Oh, Shane and I do our beer bets just head to head, like head to head matches. Um, whoever picks the correct winner has to buy the other person a beer. Um, and then if it masses to a six pack, even better, clean sweep, buy the person a six pack, done. In this case, I'd have to like direct depositor <laughs> or I guess PayPal you the funds to go buy your six pack. Or one. Let's. I don't. I'm, I shouldn't say that. I. I will be in the hole that much. I keep the comments coming, folks. By the way, it's a comment-driven live stream. Once the event begins, and it looks like okay, it's about to begin now. It looks like there's a little bit of a schedule. Ch- oh no, they're just they're just highlighting these fighters here. Okay, okay. Uh, but yeah, folks, like the video, drop a comment in the live chat. We're totally interactive. We're giving away some prizes today. If we hit fifty likes. On this video, we'll give away some City Life Project merchandise. By the way, Grave Digger Jones, if you're listening, uh, sent out your prize today. I'll send you your confirmation number and everything. Grave Digger Jones was the last uh, person to win a prize on this channel. So there you go. There you go. Hoodies, t-shirts, custom crew necks. We want to give back to all you who've been uh, supporting us on this channel. Uh, Brave CF65 is upon us. The first of two prelim bouts, and then we get right to the main card. Right now, the broadcasts are just introing some things. I have the volume really low, so I don't even know really what they're saying, to be perfectly honest. I'm just excited to hang out with you folks. Um, But as soon as the first fight begins... I'll highlight both of the fighters. That's what we do on this channel. Again, if you're new to the channel, before every fight is they're making their walkout, we highlight the fighters. We show them some love, um, especially in these promotions where a lot of people aren't fam- aren't as familiar with the fighters as you know UFC, Bellator, One Championship, etc. Want to show them some love. Want to highlight them. Run down their fighting style, their record. Uh, if there's any odds attached to them, you know where the betting folks have them at. Then I'll give my prediction, and I want to hear yours throughout the fight. Live play by play live reaction, live commentary, and of course, interaction with all you beauties. All right, so until the broadcast tells me otherwise, uh, the fight that you see on the screen is the first one in the prelims. So again, we'll we'll highlight that once they start walking. I don't want to get premature here, highlight the wrong two fighters, and then (laughs) then have to do it all over again because on these smaller promotions, uh, the fight cards, I mean, they're not set in stone on like Tapology or Sherdog. There's a lot of things that change the day of the fight. Uh, If Silva wins, I'd be happy, but but I do, do, or I I super doubt it. (laughs) No comment. I'm sure you can find a way. Uh, Cater Allen. Ooh, that's a great question. That's great. And if there's anyone in the chat here who wants to talk about that as we lead up to this first fight on Brave CF, totally interactive. Like we said, folks, Cater or Allen, that's a good, good matchup. Now, I was in the camp that Allen probably should have. I mean, is this a title title eliminator fight? I hope so. I don't know, given the last two losses that Cater's had, but hey, he lost to fucking Holloway and narrowly to Emmett. Like, I. It, that one could have been a draw, right? Like it was so close. What I like about Cater is he always pushes forward. He will not stop. What I like about Allen is it doesn't matter if he breaks his hands in his exchanges. He's going to throw with those cement mitts of his. I mean, look at the Dan Hooker fight. He just walked through him. And Dan Hooker is an excellent striker. I know Dan Hooker has you know, been on the, the decline as of late, but he's still an excellent striker. Cater is probably just like the, the the better striker than than Hooker, so maybe it's like a little bit of a test, um, a little bit of step up there. I would say that it has to be title eliminator because Allen's earned it. What is he on eleven and zero streak right now? My money's on Allen, but if it goes further than two rounds, Allen's gonna injure himself. It's just like he goes, he just goes that crazy, and he breaks bones 
when he when he throws elbows and and, and fists. And if Cater can survive that and go the distance, even even out of two rounds, I think he pieces him up points wise. Um, I haven't seen Allen's ground game at all, so maybe if he senses he can't box with, you know, the the Boston brawler in uh, Calvin Cater, then maybe he takes it to the ground. But uh, my money's on Allen for this one, mostly because I'm just like I think it's such a close fight. Um, I'm just I'm just rooting for Allen a little bit, so that's where that's why I'm picking. Like, there's not any deciding factor on their style that's like making me pick one or the other. I really enjoy both of them, both as like people, athletes, and like fighters. Arnold Allen, though, I, I want to see this guy fight for a title, so that that's who I'm picking in this one. Tend to throw some money on Cater. I mean, dude, you, is uh, what are the odds for that one? Cater's fucking solid, man. Fucking solid. What do you think of the Canucks' first win? Oh, my God. I mean, they didn't make it easy on themselves, did they, against Seattle, the crackheads? Uh, it was a it was a messy win. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. It was a messy win. Uh, they blew the lead. Or, sorry, um, they tied it up, got the lead, and I was so scared they were going to blow the lead again. I even tweeted, I was like, if Seattle wins, I'm going to puke. Keep the comments coming, folks. Comment driven live stream. I love hanging out with Payne here. I mean, Payne, you can just hog the chat all you want. But if there's anyone else watching, if there's anybody else who wants to chime in on some fight talk, um, I'd love to do so. We're still waiting for the first fight to start. The broadcast is up. We are well, 20 minutes in, no fights yet. Typical smaller promotion. Typical. I almost considered starting this at 1030 uh, Central Time because I was like, that might happen. But you know what? Watch hours, baby. Let's go. Uh, Katie's like plus 175. and Oh, Arnold's the favorite. Interesting. All right, then, yeah. Smash Cater, dude. Smash that sportsbook. Especially if he's the underdog. Well, um, is there any money on Cater, like, ending it? Because, I mean, you might as well just, you know... Go big or go home, right? What are the odds of him like ending it in the second round or something like that? Go like real specific. Go real Pacific on the on uh on that East Coaster's ass. That was some Al Algermain Sterling uh <laughs> quote there. <laughs> oh, I really want to highlight these fighters here, but I want to make sure that's the right fight. So bear with me, folks. Bear with me. If all goes to plan, it should be Kevin Ruar against Omar. El Dafroi. Oh, fuck. Dafroi? Dafroi. Cool name. Kevin Ruart against Omar El Dafroi. Okay, they're announcing all the tale of the tapes on screen right now, so I think we're about to get into it. Yep. I think we're about to get into it, folks. Oh, did they add one on here? Okay, the fight order for one of them might be a little bit different. Anyways, we shall see. They're announcing them all on screen right now. Again, you can check out the Brave uh, 60, Brave CF 65 Rumble in the Kingdom. The whole event is on their YouTube channel. So uh, fire them up, mute them, and then chill with me. <laughs> Um, we'll see if it's these two who are starting. It looks like there might have been a change. Yeah, there has been a change. Of course there has. So we're going to adjust this quickly on screen here. As the first two fighters walk out, we'll adjust the screen as it looks like there's been a little bit of a bout change or order change for the bout, rather. Uh, when they announce it on screen, we'll uh, we'll change it up here on screen. Man, the intro for this is fancy. Brave CF, shout out Bahrain. What an event. I mean, they, they go ham with the... Oh, cool. It looks like whatever region they are, too, they kind of put on a little bit of a, a show, depending on the culture. Again, I've watched two full cards of Brave before, and I was, I was impressed. Again, we, we cover a lot of smaller promotions here on this channel. 
we do a lot of fight companions for for the smaller promotions and I, and I was really blown away with what brave uh has been able to do in their young existence thus far and they're, they're throwing promotions on left right and center i believe 64 was what last weekend or something like that um bah, 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 bah. Usually I do finishes, but I never do the exact round. If I take cater by finish, I think it's plus 250 around there. I can't wait for UFC 281. Oh, my God. Uh, Brave CF, by the way, folks. If you didn't know, that's where uh, the likes of Hamzat Chemaev, for example, got his first bouts before coming to the UFC, his first professional bouts. Yeah, it's a, it's a legit league. It's a legit league. Uh, Meatball by finish, Poirier by finish, Zhang by finish, Pera by finish. Dude, if Whaley Zhang doesn't just demolish Carla Esparza, for the people, Carla is a disgrace of a champion. An absolute disgrace. Rose too. Fuck Rose Nama Yunus. I have, like, I, I would be so happy if she never gets a title shot again. Ever again. And Carla, after this, cut her. Cut her from the UFC. Both of them, absolute disgraces to the sport. Absolute disgrace. Cannot wait for Weili Zhang to, to, to... Oh, man. I just can't wait. I cannot wait. Uh, Meatball gets her third straight spinning elbow. How crazy would that be? How crazy would that be? Shout out to Meatball. You know, taking one for the team and actually, uh, actually going to New York. Patty refused refused to be on the the that card due to tax purposes and add a boy standing up for his uh for himself and his his bank account right off the bat <sighs> again shout out to everyone watching live here on the city Light project youtube channel not that big of a crowd today and i expected that brave cf friday morning i mean shoot it's it's barely it's not even 10 a.m. out on the West Coast. It's like it's 1030 here central. It's not even noon on the East Coast yet. So shout out to you who, who are joining. Shout out to you who are going to be watching and listening to my play-by-play. -play. And that's what we do here. Live play-by-play, -play, live reaction, live interaction with all you amazing people in the live chat. We have a contest going on as well. So like the video, drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes. Patty is in the UFC 282 Vegas card. Exactly, because he's not taxed like crazy on that one. Uh, take him by submission in that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can't wait for Raul Rosa Jr. debut on that card as well. Yes, I saw that yesterday. That's going to be awesome. Honestly, man, though, Patty, I'm a little... He's got to get his striking going. And even watching his vlogs, like you can tell his boxing coach, like he... His boxing coach is on him. And I think Patty's striking was heavily exposed in the Levitt fight because Levitt is not an elite striker. And no disrespect to Levitt, but he's just he's not even close to that level. And he exposed Patty. Patty looked awful on the feet. Absolutely awful in the striking department. And to be honest, his striking style isn't really clean anyways. I was hoping he would develop it a, develop it a little bit more. But I mean, he's only three or two UFC fights in. There's still a lot of time. But yeah, a little concerning as as Patty fights better and better opponents. His striking is very sus. Uh, Patty will probably corner Molly, and Molly will corner Patty. Maybe I hope so. It's funny the more I listen to Patty and like his vlog and stuff like that. It's like it's very much um the UFC that kind of build them as like a as close of a pairing as they are. Now don't get me wrong, like they're training partners and all that. And you're you're probably right. He's probably going to be in his corner. But it's interesting to to see him say that like you know, we're normal people too. Like I have like a fiance. <laughs> she does all her stuff. Like like it it it. it is very ramped up by the UFC and their marketing. And I totally understand it, but it was, it, I mean, it's cool to listen to Patty's podcast and watch his vlogs and get to know that guy a little bit more as well as some of the other UFC fighters. I mean, Izzy Israel de Sonia does that. Um, ba -ba -ba. Volkanovsky starting to do that. <laughs> Sterling's is annoying as fuck, but he's doing that. I think Patty will destroy going destroy. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. First round submission, probably a guillotine. Uh, Patty likes to take people's backs, though, more than more than go for the guillotine. I've never seen him drop for a guillotine, either. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. 100%. And, you know, Patty Pimblett, he's one of the reasons my buddy Shane got into the UFC as well. All right, so we are 30 minutes in, and we have not seen a single fight yet. Braves really milking this intro. And don't get me wrong, this is this is very heart heartwarming right here. What what they're showing right now it looks like um helping out some. Oh, that's sweet. Inspiring global compassion, uh, bringing in uh, kids. And, and adults alike with some developmental disorders by the looks of it, bringing them into the cage, including them into, including them into the show and things like that. That was super cool to see. Again, a, a rising promotion out in the a, AUE. I believe most of their events are in Abu Dhabi, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, it's cool to see them in Bahrain today with special guest Hasbul is going to be there. Okay, so it's a, a prince who actually owns this promotion. Prince with some military background by the looks of it. Again, I don't know too much about the ins and outs of this promotion. I will uh, I will start to do some more research. I've, I've watched two full cards, 50-something and something. Um, and, and it felt like that was just yesterday, but here we are. Brave CF 65 in Bahrain. Finally, the first fights are going to start, folks. So welcome. I know this is not a huge stream. I know the, the live chat is not even close to buzzing like it usually is, but I kind of expected that. As always, I, and I tell everyone, the reason I do these streams is I'm watching these fights anyways. I might as well just like fire up the webcam, fire up the mic, and just talk to anyone who's, uh, who's in here as well. Again, we'll do more focused play-by-play -play when the fights start. Reaction. Um, comments on anything that the broadcast highlight. Full access from my point of view. Okay, first fight. Uh, I'm going to change this up. Bum, 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 bum. All right, so it looks like... Okay, never mind. They're just going through the, the card again. God damn it. They've done this twice now where they've like on screen just gone through the whole card and it's like, which one is the first fight? Just please tell me so I can adjust it. Oh my God. Because again, a lot of the smaller promotions like this, Tapology will put on or Sure Dog, like what the order was before, you know, the fucking broadcast started, but things tend to change. So once that is announced, I'll get it back on screen. We'll highlight the fighters and we'll get into it here. A lot of rag in the puck for the first half an hour of this stream, folks. Um, bu -bu 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 Who's my favorite football team? Pff, BC Lions, obviously. Come on, dude. Uh, I saw you make picks on the Soda Pod. I didn't know you watched football. I mean, the Soda Pod is a Minnesota-based podcast, so I'm forced into the Vikings fucking silo of pain. But no, huge CFL guy. Um, I watch the NFL because I like sports, but I really could care less about who wins and loses. I guess like when I make my picks on the soda pod, that's when I have like, I guess some skin in the game. But as far as the NFL goes, I mean, when Marshawn Lynch was dominating with the Seahawks, I watched them. Uh, yeah, I watch the Super Bowl every year. I'll st I'm going to start watching more football on Sundays with my roommate. But, um, but yeah, CFL, baby, BC lines. Let's fucking go. <laughs> I'm sure more people will join along the way. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Regardless, I'm just pumped to watch this one. I had some friends. Uh, shout to the Wolf Fighting Promotion, a new, a new, um, a new promotion in Sweden. They were uh, they followed me on social media and have been really excited for this card. We chatted a little bit. They said that this is one of the one of the better Brave cards that they've seen in a while. So I'm pumped to see it as well. Okay, Rumble in the Kingdom, Brave sixty five. I think we're about to begin, folks. We saw the intro video for like the fourth time. I think we're about to begin. As soon as the fighters start making their walkout, we'll put the, the right fighters up on the screen. We'll highlight them. If you're new to the channel, again, welcome. Like the video. Drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes. If we get to 50 likes on the video, we will give away some prizes. 
to some lucky people who commented in the live chat. <laughs> Seahawks, I guess. But I've been following the Vikings now because of uh, the soda pod. Tiger Cats over lines. I mean, you're not wrong. Tim Horton Stadium is fucking gorgeous compared to... Look, BC Place is amazing, but they built that one like in the height of the Lions CFL run and for like big British Columbia events. Like, uh, like when the World Cup of Soccer comes through Vancouver, they're going to play their game at BC Place. I think it's like 60,000 seater arena, which pff, you're lucky to get fucking 10 for a Lions game these days. Saints versus Vikings. I mean, not this year, bud. Not this year. At least Saints are young and they're like exciting to watch, but no, Vikings are five and one, baby. Let's go. Five and one. Let's go. Gabriel, what's going on? What's up from AZ? Gabriel, we've seen you on these streams before, haven't we? I feel like I feel like I recognize your name. I feel like I recognize your name, brother. What is up? Welcome to the Fight Companion. We do a minimum of two every single week. We'll be doing Bellator tomorrow and UFC as well. So up to four actually this week as we're starting with Brave CF. We're going to be doing Bellator tomorrow morning, UFC at night. And then if we have time, if the main event of Jake Paul Anderson Silva hasn't started yet by the end of the UFC fight night, then we'll fire up the stream and we'll jump on and watch that one together as well. But Gabriel, thank you so much for joining by commenting. You automatically entered into winning our contest. So thank you so much. And I hope to see you more on these live streams. We truly are building such a great fight community here. And I know it's early. It's Friday morning here for Brave CF. I didn't expect a lot of people to join us here, but oh boy, for Bellator, for UFC, things get absolutely buzzing. We get hundreds of people in the live streams and they're so much fun. Oh my God, they're showing yet another intro video for the fighters. You know, I love it. I love it. More YouTube content for them, but come on, Brave CF. Just tell me who's coming out first. Uh, again, thank you so much, Gabriel. You're an absolute beauty. <laughs> Only reason we are bad is because Andy Dalton has been playing uh, since week two, bruh. Three of our losses should have been wins. I mean, I guess that's a few of the Vikings wins could have been losses too. Uh, talks of Karma going to Eagles if that happens. Oh, Kamara going to Eagles if that happens. I'm going to cry and never watch NFL again. The Eagles are an interesting team this year because, like, they have the talent, they have the tools, but it doesn't seem like they can put to put it together for the whole game. Like, there's times in the game where you're like gritting your teeth, being like, "What the fuck are they doing?" And then there's times where like Wentz is in God mode, so they're interesting to watch. I think I picked them as my safe pick this week. We do those sucker teaser bets uh, for the Soda Pod, which is which is even more fun uh, for our show. I think I had them as my safe bet this week. Uh, I'm not sure. You'll have to go back and listen to the podcast. Which, by the way, folks, if you dig my vibe, I do have a podcast, The Soda Pod. We're on YouTube, but we're more predominantly audio-based, so check it out wherever you get your podcast from. All right. The, oh, wait, okay, so it's like one championship, the ring. That's right. So it's not an octagon. It is a circle cage, a nice circle cage, and the strobe lights are going. Big John McCarthy slash... Bruce Buffer, I mean, he's literally a, a mix between the two of them, the announcer there. Getting us all ready for this event. All right, I'm turning it up on the broadcast a little bit here so that I can hear what's going on. Uh, for sure. Happy over 1K subs. Congrats. Thank you so much, Gabriel. I appreciate it. I mean, we've been grinding. We've been doing a lot of live streams and... Uh, Man, I'm just happy to grow this fight community. We did do a 1K uh, special just to thank all you folks. If you want to hear a little bit about myself and the co-creator of the channel, uh, like our vision for it when it started, how it became what it is now. I mean, I, I encourage you to go check that out. It, it was a lot of fun. It's more kind of like a podcast vibe. But uh, anyways, if you uh, if you want to hear us say thank you, thank you, thank you to you amazing folks over and over again, then, uh, then you can go and do that. And Gabriel, I appreciate it, brother. I hope to see you on uh, some of the streams tomorrow, either Bellator or UFC. Yeah, I'm fucking pumped. Thank you so much, Gabriel. This is awesome. I love seeing returning and new members, uh, community members uh, on this channel. This is really awesome. And like I said, I'm never going to ask anybody to donate or anything like that. All I want you guys to do is like and comment so that we can get to know each other, so you can join our community and we can talk fights. 
You did minus three and a half, I think. Oh, thank you so much for listening to the podcast, buddy. I appreciate it. Payne fucking rights, man. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna have to send Payne some some merch just for being an absolute beauty and supporting us. Which by the way, Payne's got Xanified vibes. I haven't seen Xanified in the live chat in a while. I think I think the guy's busy. Never claimed his prize either. Oh man, the sound. I mean, it's a lower promotion. I shouldn't be too critical. The output of the mic compared to like the music they have in the background is night and day. I have to like keep grabbing my clicker to turn it up and down. All right, he's reading out the sponsors, etc. We'll get the first two fighters up on screen here and highlight them in a sec. Sounds good, buddy. Again, shout out to everyone joining. Like the video, drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes, much like Gabriel did. Live commentary, live play-by-play, -play, live reaction, and of course, interaction with all you amazing folks. We're going the full card today. It should be three and a half hours worth of fights, folks. Three and a half hours starting now, not this 40-minute fucking... Ugh. Sorry, Kyle. I'm, I he told me not to swear on these anymore because YouTube pays us more when I don't swear. But fuck, dude, it's been forty minutes. We haven't seen a fight yet. All right. Please. Okay, now it's a a, a brave CF gym fucking ad. All right, here we go. Here we go. Finally. They're announcing the first fight here. Do I even have the ones listed? Oh, this one's amateur. All right, well, the first two fighters are walking out right now, folks. I don't even know if I have anything to put on the screen for them since they're amateur fights. But don't worry, we'll continue to give play-by-play -play and live reaction nonetheless. I'm going to look them up here in a sec. I just want to make sure... Anyways, folks, I got Tapology up in front of me. I got SureDog. This was the first fight that they said was going to be going, but uh, no, looks like we have some amateurs first, which is okay. I'm, I'm pumped for that. I'm here for that as well. As they make their walk out here, if I can find any info on them on the fly, we will highlight them because that's what we want to do here, especially in these smaller promotions. Want to make sure that the fighters get some recognition, get some love. Again, appreciate all you joining us here live on the City Life Project YouTube channel. We do a minimum of two fight companions every week, but we're doing three this week. Hell, maybe even four, depending on uh, how late the Silva and Jake Paul boxing match goes. All right, first fighter making his walkout. Again, an amateur bout to start this event. Mohamed Salah Madi fighting out of... I missed it there. Let's see if I can get a... Let's see if I can get... He's two wins by stoppage, and this is Brave, C Brave CF debut. Bum, ba -dum, ba -bum. The comments coming, folks, by the way. Live play-by-play -play commentary, reaction and interaction with you folks here. Been uh, the Gabriel and Payne show, which no complaints, by the way, folks. No complaints. Like the video, drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes. Okay, yeah, this is amateur as fuck. They got t-shirts on. And they got the amateur gloves, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I don't blame uh, Tapology then for not putting this one up. Our first fighter here, two stoppage victories. 
making his Brave CF de- debut. His opponent. Hey, shit, they do intro videos for the amateurs too in Brave CF? Fucking right. It's no wonder you want to fight here. All right, what's his name? Again, folks, I'm prepared for every other fight, every professional fight on here. I didn't, I didn't know that there's going to be two amateurs to start off. Which begs the question, you couldn't do the amateur fights at fucking on time? But anyways, anyways. <laughs> I digress, I digress. All right, here we go. Ahmed Zayed making his walkout. Amateur gloves, they got shin guards on, and t-shirts for the first fight to start Brave CF. So amateur fights, I imagine it's uh, two rounds then. He trains with KHK in Team Bahrain, and this is also his Brave CF debut. Maybe Sure Dog has a little bit more on them. Again, shout out to everyone joining us live here on the channel. Like the video, drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes. Live play-by-play, commentary, reaction, and interaction with you folks here. We do a minimum of two fight companions every week as well. I knew this one wasn't going to be too buzzing. I mean, it's the morning here in North America, right? <laughs> Everyone's going to work. But shit, I was going to watch this regardless. I even told my uh, coworkers at work, I'm like, don't message me. I'm online, but don't message me. You can drop a like on the video and... A comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes, but don't message me. <laughs> All right. Our second fighter in the red. Making his just a little uh, walk in the cage right now, getting a feel for the canvas and everything. Amateur fight. Amateur fight. First one to start this card, folks. Excited for this one. Uh, apologies, I don't have any more information on either of these guys. Usually, I like to put it on screen and do a, like a full breakdown. But we have Mohammed Salah Madi, 19 years old, two, uh, two and one amateur record. Samurai Team Academy is where he is training. Again, they have the amateur gloves on. T-shirt and shin guards for this first fight of Brave CF65. Amateur about to start off this event. One, three, and one loss for Ahmed Zayed. Oh, no, one and one. He's one one on an amateur, 26 years old, fighting out of, like I said, KHK Team Bahrain, Ahmed Zayed in the red. All right, 26 year old against 19 year old uh, Ahmed Zayed against Mohammed Salamadi. I'm doing one one last scan through my uh, bum, ba, da, ba, ba, through topology and everything. Yeah, they they just didn't put the amateur fights here. But hey, round one. Let's get it on. I'm just pumped that we have a fight here. Oh look, three rounds for this amateur fight in Brave CF. Three rounds, two minutes and fifty second rounds by the looks of it. Three minute rounds, three three minute rounds. Ahmed Zayed, Mohammed Salah, Madi, center of the cage right now. Overhand right by Mohammed. Like a Superman jab by Ahmed Zayed. Again, live play by play, live commentary, live reaction here on the City Light Project YouTube channel. Oh, and a nice takedown attempt and reversal by Ahmed Zayed. Zayed now takes the back of Mohammed. Tried to get the back mount, but a good job by Mohammed for getting back up. Mohammed now goes for the trip, takes him down, and now a great scramble by both of these guys. Right off the bat, you're seeing a great display of mixed martial arts, the striking, and now the jiu-jitsu. Ahmed is in the full guard of Mohamed Salah. Ahmed pushing him up against the cage. Salah looks 
very comfortable in his full guard here. Although I imagine doing jujitsu with this much, like with the shin guards, for example, and these bigger gloves must must be a little challenging. Keep the comments coming, folks. Comment driven live stream. Yo, Rogue Strummer, what is up? It's been a while, brother. I got a good underdog pick for you on Bellator if you're interested. Yeah, hit hit me up with it. Rogue uh, Strummer, excited to see you. It's been a while. Thank you so much for joining. Well, um, I'm going to be doing the Bellator uh, fight companion tomorrow as well as UFC too, brother. We'll have a lot more people in the chat too to, to interact with on those days for sure. Again, the first... I don't know how many amateur bouts there are going to be on this card. I know there's two official pro prelim bouts before we get into the main card, but right now we have the first of, I imagine, at least a couple amateur fights here on Brave CF 65. Ahmed Zayed still in the guard of Mohamed Salamadi. 45 seconds left in the first round. Uh, Brahma. Karama, I picked him as a dog last fight also. Well, thank you so much for that pick, brother. Thank you so much for that underdog pick. I appreciate it. Um, Done. Done. Especially if I get any dono money. I'm throwing all the dono money on uh, <laughs> on fighter picks. That's what Ethan Calvary gave me like two pounds last weekend and was like, you better drop this on O'Malley. It paid my bar tab, baby. Uh, he's rangy, athletic striker with grappling. That's what you want to see. A rangy striker who can grapple, they're deadly because some people say, well, they're easy to get taken down. <laughs> sure, but they're dangerous on the ground. All right, end of the first round here, folks. And some good grappling by both of these amateur fighters. I would say that Ahmed got the better of him, just a little bit stronger. He landed a good overhand right and was able to reverse the takedown, the first takedown that Muhammad laid on him. Got some back, got a back take, and then was able just to stay. Didn't do a lot of damage in the guard of Muhammad, but was able to stay in the guard and stay active. He's only plus 100 last fight. He was plus 175 or so. Okay, okay. Fucking rights, dude. Well, thank you so much for the pick. I appreciate it. Payne, did you hear that? Rogue Strummer has got a, he's got a good underdog pick for us. I love it. I love it. Yo, Payne is back in the building. What's going on, Payne? Thank you so much for joining. Again, the first amateur fight here on the card. I didn't know there was going to be amateur fights. I knew that there were two prelims, two pro prelims, and then we got into the main card, but we got a couple of amateur fights here ahead of us. That's okay. That's okay. My apologies for not being able to highlight both the fighters in the amateur fight. Didn't even know that they were fighting. Wasn't on the sure dog or any of the official cards. Anyways, round two, Ahmed Zayed, Mohamed Salamadi. Let's get it! Let's get it on. Three three-minute rounds as these are amateur fights, folks. They got the big gloves. They got the T-shirt. They got their shin guards on. Ahmed Zaid winning that first round handedly, in my opinion. Center of the ring. Neither of them landed any shots yet in the second round. Two minutes and 27 seconds left. Overhand right by Salamadi. That doesn't land. You can definitely tell that, you know, the 19-year-old is a lot more green. Nice takedown defense, but, oh, does he get it? Does he get the double leg? Ahmed Zayed went for the double leg, and he gets it. He gets it, but a decent reversal by Mohamed Salamadi. You can definitely see who the... Oh, and on the way up, Mohamed Salamadi grabbed the leg of Zayed and went for a guillotine attempt, and now Zayed's in the full guard. You can definitely tell that Mohamed Salamadi is a, is a solid grappler. He looks good in the grappling exchanges, but man, does his strike he need some work, as you can see. And again, amateur fighters. I'm not going to dog on them at all here. Uh, I'm just calling what I see. Zayed, definitely the more comfortable striker. And just kind of bullied his way to get that double leg. I don't know if anything even counted as a takedown there for both of the fighters, but at the end of the day, Ahmed Zayed is back where he ended that second round in the full guard of Mohamed Salah Madi, and he's up against the cage with him right now. Keep the comments coming, folks. It's comment driven live stream if you're watching this event as well. Let me know what you think. I know, again, they're amateur fights. There's nothing crazy here. Excited to get into the prelims and main events here on Brave CF65 as top to bottom. It's a great card. I did a little bit of research on some of the fighters, just glance at some of their records, some of their highlights, and fucking rights. Oh, my goodness. 
you didn't have to do this, brother. You didn't have to do this. Rogue Streamer, you can put this on there. You do great commentary, and I appreciate your effort. Man, with the $5 donation, good sir. Rogue Strummer, you come back in here after us not hanging out in a while, and you're giving me donations to put on your fighter? Man, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, again, I will 100% put this $5 on that fighter. 100%. Again, I never ask anyone on these streams for donations. All that I ask is if is that you join our community, that you like the video and drop a comment in the live stream so we can hang out so our video gets more likes and so you can enter our contest. But when you guys do, I mean, I'm going to give you shout outs. I'm going to, I'm going to continue to, to thank you so much because Rogue Strummer, you're an absolute beauty and I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And I hope that that five can turn into a, turn into a little bit more and either help pay off the cameras we used for this channel and, or pay for the beers that night. So again, Rogue Strummer, I'll bring this up and give you a, give you shouts throughout the stream, but I want to say thank you one more time. You're an absolute what does Helwani say? Mensch. Thank you so much, brother. I'm just so pumped that Rogue Strum is here. I'm just so pumped that Pain is here. End of the second round, folks. And again, um, some decent scrambles. For an amateur bout, some decent scrambles here. But, uh, yeah, I'd have to say that Ahmed's winning this fight. In their corners right now, third round about to start. Oh, you got this. Well, I appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much. Um, it, it means a lot, man. It means a lot because just you, just our listeners and, and members of this fight community, I'm not even going to say like fans because maybe you're fans of me. I don't know. Uh, you guys are, we're all just part of this fight community. So I, I appreciate just having you folks here and being able to talk UFC, hell, talk about one championship and, and some of these other promotions as well. LFA, Brave, FAC, that BFL one, though, in Vancouver was a fucking awesome event. And no bias because it was Canadian in Vancouver. Again, shout out to Rogue Strummer again for the $5 donation. Good, sir. You're an absolute beauty. Round three. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Last round of this amateur bout. I don't know how many amateur bouts are going to be on this card, folks. I know there's two prelims before the main event. Oh, what a nice straight front kick to the face of Mohamed Salamadi. That was a beautiful head kick. Again, the striking Ahmed Zayed is clearly winning here. Grappling Mohamed Salah Maddi, the 19-year-old. He's got some skills there. Low kick by Maddi. Might have been checked, actually, by Zayed. You can tell Zayed's done some kickboxing, just the way his stance is. Whereas, again, Mohamed Salah Maddi, very, very green. Outside low kick by Maddi. Two minutes and 18 seconds left in this third and final round. Three three-minute rounds in amateur bouts, folks. Oh, and that was... He didn't connect, but Ahmed Zayed faked the overhand right that he's been throwing all night to go for the double leg, but didn't execute. You can watch this event, by the way, on the Brave CF YouTube channel. They are streaming this for North Americans, and I believe abroad. Spinning back fist attempt by Zayed. That didn't land, but he landed with the 1-2 and overhand left. And that one seemed to stun Mohamed Salah Madi. Ahmed Zayed takes a knee by Salamadi on the entry. But yeah, again, the the striking of Zayed is is definitely miles above Muhammad Salamadi, which begs the question of why Mad why Zayed trying to go for the takedown. I guess just impress the judges. Oh, and an eye poke here. An eye poke with the, how the fuck does an eye poke even happen with these gloves? Again. Green striking by Mohamed Salamadi. You know, inside low kick, hands were out, and he ended up poking Zayed in the eye. Never want to see that. Uh, good to know. I wasn't sure where to watch it. Yeah, and um, just just for future reference, Rogue, on our community uh, tab where we just like make our posts on this channel, I always try to link where the stream is. So we posted three this week, right? Um, and it looks like he's okay. The fight is back. Let's get it on. And uh, I always post like our stream link and where to fight, fight it, find it. Oh, and a nice catch of the leg kick by Zayed, and he takes Mohamed Salamadi down. But Madi going for the triangle. Madi's got a triangle. Madi's got a triangle, folks. 
Reverse triangle, mounted triangle now, and he's punching Zayed in the face, and that is it! Look at the finish it! And it's over! Holy shit, what a comeback. What a comeback. I don't know if he tapped or if the judge ended it, but basically he reversed the triangle, got in top position, and just kind of was squeezing the head and punching down on it. That is devastating. And look at that. Rogue Strummer calls it. He did just get poked in the eye seconds before that, before you probably watched it. He was dominating that fight before. Absolutely dominating that fight before. Good display of respect. Oh, shit. Wow. So that that was crazy. So um, Mohammed went to shake the hand, give a hug, pay his respects to his opponent. And Zayed just pushes him out of the way. I mean, I imagine he's frustrated. I don't blame him. Judge ended it pretty quickly It was, if it wasn't a tap. Yeah, I mean, amateur, right? These are amateur fights. He's going to be choked out anyways, though, I think. I mean, that triangle, especially when you're on top and you're just laying on it, pushing down, I imagine that fucking hurts. Damn. Again, shout out to everyone joining us live here on the City Light Project YouTube channel, live commentary, live play-by-play, -play, live reaction and interaction with all you amazing folks here. First amateur bout on the card. I don't know how many more amateur fights we're going to see before we get into the official prelims and pro bouts. I didn't even know there's going to be amateurs on this card. Um, they weren't listed on Tapology or anything. Payne is back, by the way. What's up, Payne? Again, shout out to everyone joining. You are all amazing. I appreciate all the interaction. I appreciate uh, the support. From Rogue Strummer, you're an absolute beauty. If you're, if you're viewing on Twitter, by the way, migrate over to YouTube. That's where the action's happening. That's where we're all hanging out with each other. That's where, uh, that's where you can enter our contest, too, by liking the video and dropping a comment in the live chat. If we get to 50 likes on this video, we will give away some prizes. And again, shout out to Rogue Strummer for the $5 dono. What an absolute beauty. I appreciate it. That $5 is going to be bet on, uh, what was his name again? Barama Karama. He's a rangy athletic striker with grappling. He's only plus 100. Last fight, he was plus 175 or so. So if you folks want to make some money, hit that shit up. Uh, totally interactive, so keep the comments coming, folks. I watched the UFC one week ago, and Royce Gracie was tapping people. Out. Oh, UFC won. It was tapping people out, and the ref would just sit there, watch the guy just keep tapping and not stop the fight. Like, they didn't even know what it meant. They didn't. That's the thing, dude. They didn't know what it meant. Jiu-Jitsu was so new to North America at that time. I swear that they were just like, uh, until Big John McCarthy got in there, the, the judges at like UFC one to five, because I actually have those DVDs rogue strummer. I have UFC one to five, like a box set. And me and my father watch them. Oh, I don't know. I don't want to say all the time, but every, every few years we'll pop them in and just be like, wow. Like the sport has come a long way because at that point it wasn't even a sport. It was martial arts versus martial arts. It was fight versus fight. Looking at the replays of some of these highlights from this first bout. And again, uh, the veteran got caught there. Two overzealous catching that leg going down and the grappling of young, uh, the 19-year-old Muhammad, I mean, just absolutely, absolutely destroyed him there. The reversal triangle, then punching him in the head. And again, it's amateur, so that's why the, the official came in a little bit early. I mean, maybe Red could have scrambled a bit more. I mean, who knows? But hey, for an amateur fight, that one was, that one was good. We got to see... Uh, the guy in the red with a beautiful, beautiful head kick at one point is striking and his combos were crisp and clean. I mean, you can see he's so disappointed. He got caught. He did that to himself. Yeah, I like the interweight class tournament. I think Adesanya probably beats most of the heavyweights on the roster. Yeah, probably. Absolutely. Um, They do that in jiu-jitsu every now and then. Eh? Uh, Rogue Strummer, where you can just do open weight jiu-jitsu. I've seen like Mike... Mikey Moose Medchi like grapple with guys 
200 pounds and he's like 145 soaking wet, right? Because I think he cuts to 135 for his, uh, I forget what the big Brazilian Jiu Jitsu League is, IF, BJJ, and then ADCC. I know he cuts to 135, I believe. But I've seen him roll with guys who are like 200 pounds. So for Jiu Jitsu, it's fun to see those open weight tournaments. All right. Um, curious to see if we have another amateur fight next, folks. If not, then we will highlight our first prelim. For those just joining us right now, I didn't know that there were going to be amateur fights. Uh, in all honesty, I'm for, what was it? FAC, LFA, sometimes they'll do amateur fights before the event, BFL as well. Um, but they usually do like two or three. Those ones are at least listed on like Tapology and Sherdog. Today, none of the amateur ones were listed as all. Uh, on my fight card here, I have Kevin Rau against Omar El Dafri and... Uh, Mesara Mohammed against Frey uh, Harashish. Sorry if I mispronounced his name. And those will be the first two prelims on this official card. Okay, amateur flyweight bout next. So the second amateur fight on this card, the fighters are making their walkouts now. Again, I will provide any information I have on these amateur fighters. But again, folks, it's tough to even find a lot of information on fighters outside of the big promotions. We do such a great job and do our best here on the Sea Light Project YouTube channel, be it LFA, be it Brave, whatever the promotion, to highlight the fighters. I mean, I got a few tabs here up with every fighter who's on the actual card, be it the prelims and main card. I had no idea there's going to be amateur fights on this card, so I apologize that I can't get them up on screen here or highlight them. Um as I want to, but I will, anything that comes up on screen, anything that I can find on the fly, I will provide that information for you. And at the end of the day, I'm giving you play by play for it and my reaction interaction. So there you go. There you go. Uh, I'm hoping. Is it in L Durbani wins, but I have a bad feeling about it. I picked him at a three to one, not confident at all. Uh, he was pumped up for the face-offs co-main event. I'm excited for that one. Um, Again, Rogue, do you watch a lot of Brave CF or do you just like, do you bet on MMA whenever there's kind of like an opportunity and you have time to watch the events? Ganesh Raj is making his walkout from India, folks. We'll see his official record and everything here in a moment as Brave CF, even just for a YouTube broadcast, did a good job of showing everything there. And here we go. 2021 India MMA Championship gold medalist who represented India in the IMMAF World Championship in 2022. So an amateur fighter, but competing in amateur competitions, and he's winning. So excited to see what he brings here to Brave CF. No, I don't watch Brave, just bet on MMA generally. Well, I dig it, and that's where there's some synergy on this channel and the betting community too, because like I watch all MMA. But I don't necessarily bet on all MMA. So I'm learning a little bit from you guys. And it's fun to highlight these leagues and, and watch some of these prospects. We we didn't we might not even have known were prospects going into watching these events and then come out, you know, two years later than the UFC. And we're like, oh shit, we watched them on LFA or shit, we watched them on Brave. And I love that kind of stuff. All right, second fighter making his walk out to the cage right now. Again, second amateur fight on the bout. As soon as the official prelims start, where we're seeing some pro MMA fights, and we'll dive into the fighters um, pre-fight a little bit more in depth. We'll dive into the betting odds. We'll dive into their what their styles are, what their win-loss records are, where they're from, what their ranking is, all that stuff. First fight on the official prelim is Kevin Raoul against Omar El Dafrari. But it looks like we have another amateur fight before the prelims are announced. Two prelims. And then the main card officially on Brave CF65. We got some amateur fights before then, which you know what? I'm okay with. I'm okay with. Didn't expect it, but I'm okay with. You got any underdogs that you like on this week's UFC card? Um, I'm hoping to film something later today um, and give my official picks. Um, I'm just going and looking at the odds for them right now. So I remember off the top of my head, no, but I do have some notes. Um, if I have time today, I was going to film. Uh, 
my picks and predictions video. I, I missed it last week because I was so busy. And I actually ended up being able to to live stream the event, which was awesome. But I didn't get to make my official picks. So I want to do that this week. Um, just looking at them right now. Oh, and by the way, uh, Mohamed Zuhair, 2022 Asian MMA champion, silver medalist at the IMAF 2022 World Champion. So he was the runner-up to the IMMAF 2022 champion, his opponent, the gold medalist in that. Um, bum, 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 underdog matchup. Oh my God, Arlovsky's fighting? Get the fuck out of here. Um, bu- 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 <sighs> underdog, no, because like I thought maybe Moda would be uh, Carlos Moda would be an underdog and I, I would pick him, but no, he's the favorite. Um, bu- 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 even Jung Young Park's the favorite. I was gonna say maybe, maybe go for him if he was the underdog. Even though, okay, I've, might as well just throw some money on Arlovsky because the judges just keep giving him wins. <laughs> um, okay, yes, I do have one. Uh, Roman uh, Delidze, I think he beats Phil Hawes, and he's a plus 140. So that would be mine, and I'm, I'm gonna highlight that. That was the one I highlighted on my list, too. Um, I'm just not a fan of Phil Hawes, I don't think he's that threatening at all. He, he can start a round off good, and then it's like, meh. Two to three dogs win. Yeah, and it, it, so far the spread is kind of how I imagined. There's not really anybody that's like that stands out, but hey, I, I, I'll pick against Phil Hawes. Uh, that Holmes guy's very good. He lost to Jamie Pickett. Oh, okay. I'm on Delete Zay as well. All right, sweet, sweet. Out of boy, out of boy. Well, when I post mine, again, knock on wood, I'll have time today. I do have a little bit of work to do after this, but I'll, I'll probably get to it. My picks and predictions video, um, comment on it. Roast me. Let me know what you think and if there's any picks that are, are different from that one. Um, I'll run down the full card. You can see examples of my picks and prediction videos on this channel uh, from a couple of weeks ago. I just kind of go through the whole card. I take notes before and uh, yeah, I give my rundown on the fight and my predictions. I do think Hawes is a good fighter, though, and Elite Zay's chances are around 50%. All right, round one, folks. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Round one of three three-minute rounds in these amateur fights, and right off the bat, some striking, and it looks like Mohamed Zuhair in the red was going for a takedown. Raj Ganesh, right off the bat, and again, I've only watched like 20 seconds of this. His striking, a little bit more cleaner. He's the one... He's been kind of pushing forward a bit. Nice head kick, straight head kick. It lands on Zuhair and then land a left and right. Zuhair going for the takedown and he gets it. Wow, that was a fuck up by Ganesh. Ganesh went for, oh, oh and he goes, heel hook, heel hook attempt. So Ganesh went with just a swinging right and just like swung over Zuhair and Zuhair grabbed the double leg, went for the takedown to reverse it on. Ganesh Raj has the heel hook. Ganesh Raj has a heel hook. He's spinning. Is this the end of Zuhair right off the bat? Going for the heel hook is Ganesh. I see uh, Kenneth just commented. Yo, what's up, brother? Been noticing that you do cover these cards the most. Don't pay attention to. Um, I try to cover as many as I can, bro, to be perfectly honest. Like, obviously, we're doing the big ones, UFC on Saturday. Obviously, we try to do Bellator. But I love doing these smaller promotions to shed some light on them, to shed some light on some of these prospects coming up. And also, I'm a fight junkie, Kenneth. I'll watch whatever, whenever. And if it if it works with my work schedule, I might as well fire up the webcam and mic and stream them, give some commentary. So, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll do all of them. A lot of people have called for uh, LFA. I did some Cage Wars. I'm hoping to do all the promotions this year. I think that would be awesome. All the promotions this season. Hit them up. Anyone that's broadcasted will do it. Dude, I even did amateur boxing. I think it only got like 300 views. I didn't care. I didn't care. It was awesome. Still chasing that heel hook is Ganesh. They're still rolling. 
54 seconds left in this first round. Kenneth, I appreciate you joining, though, buddy. I hope to see you tomorrow for Bellator and or UFC. I'd be surprised if Ganesh won. India fighters, pretty low level. Hey, but I mean, he won gold in the... <laughs> Still chasing that heel hook with 34 seconds left. He's not going to get it, bro. These shin guards, I guess, just don't allow it. Keep the comments coming, folks. This is a comment-driven live stream. Absolutely love hanging out with you folks here. Like the video, drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes. 15 seconds left in this first round. Guillotine attempt now by Ganesh and ends up on bottom position, but that's the end of the first round. <laughs> Again, second amateur fight that we've seen on this card thus far, folks. We got two prelims after the amateurs, and then we go right into the main card. Shout out to Brave CF for doing a great job with their YouTube broadcast. Again, lesser promotions. I always want to give them some love when the broadcast is pretty damn good. <laughs> Obviously, for a smaller promotion. And shout out to everyone who's just joining us. We do fight companions. Every single week. A minimum of two, but we're doing three this week. We'll be back tomorrow for Bellator and UFC. If you're new to the channel, live commentary, live reaction, live play-by-play, -play, and of course, live interaction with all you amazing folks. We also have some giveaways. That's right. If this video gets to 50 likes, we will give away some prizes. So like that video, drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes. If we hit 50 likes on the video by the end of this stream, and we're going the full distance, folks, we will give away some prizes, some lucky folks who commented in the live chat. Again, shout out to Kenneth, Ken, shout out to Rogue, shout out to Payne. You all are amazing. Thank you so much for joining. All right, round two. Let's get it all! The center of the octagon. Oh, center of this circle cage. So used to saying octagon. My apologies. Dig this cage, though. Very one championship-esque. It seems pretty damn big, too. Oh, nice left hook by Ganesh. But Mohammed Zuhar landed... Zuhair right to the ground to try to get his back. It's funny, Ganesh landed with a beautiful right, but in that exchange, I don't know if it was right before or right after, Zuhair wobbled him with some strike that I missed, and now Zuhair is just really trying to get his back. Now, it's a very high back take right now. More of a shoulder take to try to maybe isolate an arm. Drags Ganesh right back to the ground and now has his back. Really trying to sink in those hooks in the body triangle. Now just kind of side control half guard. Ganesh doing a good job of not giving up his back and, and scrambling a little bit, but Mohamed Zahir with the dominant position now again. Side control can maybe force Ganesh into the guard and or really try to get that back, but it looks like right now he's modified. Again, it's that side control just because Ganesh is the one who's dictating what he wants to give up. He gave up his back. Ganesh gave up his back. The body triangle is not sunk in yet, but Zuhair now, he's, he's getting close and he's fighting for that rear naked. Oh, yeah, you'll see more of me, man. I love watching fight footage on these lesser-known fighters. And, yeah, I've been watching every UFC card for the past few years, man. Totally addicted to this sport. Kenneth. Hey, that shit beautiful than a motherfucker. That's beautiful, and you're going to fit right into this channel, brother. You're going to fit right into our fight community here. I know it's a slow day today. We only have a few viewers. But trust me, man, when we do one championship, when we do Bellator, UFC, some of the bigger promotions, it blows up. Sometimes we have over 300 people in the chat just all talking fights. It, it's truly outstanding. So I appreciate it, brother. I can't wait to see more of you. The LFA ones are a lot of fun, too, especially because they're like Midwest-based. So I might even go to one of them soon. I just relocated to Minnesota. Side control now for Muhammad Zaire, and he looks like he might be setting up an arm triangle. No, he's just content with some ground and proud sign position and goes for the full mount, and he gets it. Full mount. Ganesh trying to roll out of it. Does a good job of pushing Mohamed Zahir off into a half butterfly guard. But again, Kenneth, that's so amazing to see, brother. I'm so excited you're here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited that, you're, that you love watching smaller promotions as well. And obviously the big ones, we're addicted. And I hope you get to join us on our watch parties slash fight companions uh, all season. Because we do, I shouldn't say all season, all year. Because we do a minimum of two a week, dude. We're doing them every single week.
Not sure if you're able to click screenshots. What do you mean? Like from my live chat? I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm using a different program to stream. I'm not. I am not personally like on YouTube right now, but I can bring up YouTube if it's showing up there and you need me to click something. I've not seen a link in the live chat yet. Um. Oh, and a nice head kick too by Zahir. Yeah, the guy in red is a l is pretty good. Pretty damn good. Good on the reversals, good on the counters. He was clipped as well. Still went forward. Definitely a dominant round. I mean, 1-1 one, one apiece right now, I would say. But red, I think, is uh, yeah, not necessarily broken his opponent, but he's, okay, I know what I can do to him. Where that first round was more of a, a feeling out. And again, two shaving two minutes off a round in amateur, that's a lot of time, folks. Three minutes versus five. I mean, you gotta work quickly. All right. Round three, final round. Three 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 minute rounds. Amateur fights here. Brave CF. Let's go. Let's get it all. They touch gloves and Ganesh with a nice one, two. And early Ganesh is striking looked really, really good, but he's definitely slowed down. Body kick by Zuhair. Zuhair definitely the better grappler. Center of the ring. And it's Ganesh who's kind of always pushed forward, but Zuhair is very good with the counters. Beautiful, beautiful takedown by Zuhair. Perfectly timed on Ganesh's just walk forward entry, and he takes him right to the ground in half guard. Beautiful takedown by Zuhair. Two minutes and 14 seconds, and no, he's really trying to get into that full guard, half guard right now. Ganesh looking for a sweep, doesn't get it. Half guard, sprawled up half guard. Laying down some hammer fists. Zuhair... I, I don't think you can lay elbows in amateur, eh? Because they haven't laid a single elbow, and I'm pretty sure in LFA, their amateur bout, they didn't lay elbows either. So no elbows in amateur MMA. Someone in the live chat commented on that too um, in one of our last streams. Like, why aren't they throwing elbows? And I was like, I think it's just because amateur rules, you can't throw elbows. Ganesh in the full... Oh, Zuhar. Zuhair, my apologies, is in the full guard of Ganesh. One minute, 25 seconds left in this round. Ganesh is going to have to do something really really work for a submission or get back up to his feet because he is losing this fight this was the deciding round in my opinion i think ganesh won the first round zuhair dominantly won the second round and zuhair is dominantly winning this second round as well how's the promotion going pain it's pretty slow to start um it was a slow start. The, the intro videos didn't start for half an hour in, as you know. And right now, it's the second amateur fight. So we haven't even gotten to the pro MMA fights yet. We're still in the amateur fights. 47 seconds left in this third and final round. I imagine there's only going to be two to four amateur fights. I cannot see more than that. Hopefully, this is the last one. Again, no disrespect for the amateurs. But we have two really high-level prelim pro MMA fights coming up next before the main card. So... Shout out to the amateurs here and shout out to Mohamed Zuhair. He's putting on an absolute clinic in this third round. Gets side control now. 21 seconds left in this round. Yeah, Ganesh has got nothing for him. And again, Rogue Strummer. He's like the he's the real MMA guru over here. He called this. Oh, that was that not an elbow? I guess it was kind of a forearm strike versus an elbow. Red puts up his hands before the end of the fight, allows Ganesh to stand up, and that's it. Ganesh knows he lost that one. He's disappointed, but hey, more of a more of a display of respect. I mean, he at least shook the guy's hand, gave him a, a little a little low five there, rather than the first fighter who just pushed his opponent away. But solid performance, a solid display of mixed martial arts in this amateur bite, an amateur bout. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Yeah, I mean, not the most exciting, but see, I can't complain. It's a Friday morning. I don't have that much work to do after this, and I'm watching fights while I sip my coffee, hanging out with Payne, Rogue, Strummer, and Kenneth. 
dude, sounds like a beautiful morning to me. I think the Chase Hooper Garcia fight is interesting because I'm struggling to see Hooper get the fight to the mat unless unless Garcia makes a mistake taking him down. Dude, that's funny you mentioned that because when I was going through the just card earlier yesterday when I was taking some notes for the video that I might post today, um, and just moments ago when I was looking through to, to give my underdog pick, that was the one that I was like, I th- what is he minus like two twenty or something like that to win? If it stays on the feet, man, especially if there's live odds. I mean, I'm hammering his opponent because yeah, you said it there. If Garcia can keep it on the feet, again, I haven't seen Chase Hooper fight in what almost a year now, so maybe his striking is getting a lot better. But let's be honest, he's a submission st- specialist at the end of the day. That one's gonna be a fun fight to watch. It's gonna be interesting for sure. I love when you don't really know how the storyline is gonna go going into a fight because like even the O'Malley Yawn fight, we knew it was gonna be a brawl. Just despite whether you agree with the decision or not, we, we knew what we were getting out of that fight. <laughs> Sterling TJ, not so much, but that's a whole other story. And we were right, Zahir, he won that one dominantly. Unanimous decision, baby. Looking forward to the Jose Torres fight. I think he will win easily, and I was trying to find footage of Freya... Harashi and Masara Mohammed. I think Freya wins by ground and pound or rear naked, brother. Kenneth, thank you so much for giving your predictions for this card. That's amazing. I love it. And I'll, I'll bookmark this because I can bring comments back up, um, even if like, even a lot of people comment and it gets buried. So I bookmark this one because we'll, we'll come back to these when these two guys are fighting for sure. But yeah, I mean, great card. So pumped. Looking forward to the prelims as they start here. Yes, sir. Yeah, Payne, I don't know if you've been in a chat with Rogue Strummer before or Kenneth, but uh, I haven't seen Kenneth or Rogue Strummer for a little while now, so it's cool to see you guys in this chat. On And this is what's so cool about some of these. Like, We may not have 100 people. Hell, we got like 5 to 10. But we have Rogue Strummer, Payne, of course, and Kenneth, who I haven't seen in a while. So it's cool that like even on these smaller streams, we get to hang out with some awesome fight fans here. And again, how could I forget? I got to give you some shout-outs throughout this whole stream. Rogue Strummer with the $5 dono. <laughs> telling me to drop it on his underdog pick. I'm going to do that. Again, folks, I never ask for donations. I'll never be like, oh, you can donate here, blah, blah, blah. I never ask for that. All I ask from you folks is to like the videos, comment on them after they're posted, and comment in the live chat so that we can hang out throughout these streams. That's all I ask. That's all I ask. Anything extra is bonus, and I appreciate it. You're an absolute beauty. That shit beautiful than a motherfucker. All right, highlights from that amateur bout they're showing now. Hopefully, hopefully, we get into the main card or at least prelims here soon. I mean, again, for an amateur fight, that was a great display of mixed martial arts by both the guys, but definitely a uh, buddy in the red is dominating second and third round. Gravedigger, what's up, buddy? <laughs> By the way, Gravedigger, um, your merch has been selected and sent, or at least it's it's sending out today. So as I'll get a confirmation email. I'm probably I probably got it right now, but right after the stream, I'll check my email and I will forward you. Uh, I'll forward you all the the tracking info, so you know it's on your way, brother. But thank you so much for joining. Hooper is looking good with his boxing, man. Okay, he's got a decent one too, but it's just a little slow with it because he's a grappler first. Uh, Stave also got spanked his last fight, so he may be a bit hesitant. Like we said, great point there, and I'm glad you actually gave some insight into the his boxing because I wouldn't have known. Um, that's good to know. That's good to know. Excite- I mean, I- I'm a fan of Chase Hooper, so I'm excited to see him fight. I love grapplers turned strikers too. Oh, no problem. Thank you, Gravedigger. Be like Gravedigger, folks. Like this video. Drop a comment in the live chat, and you're automatically entered into winning some prizes. If we hit 50 likes on this video, we will give away some City Life Project merchandise to a lucky person in the live chat. Gravedigger was lucky lucky enough to win our last contest, and his merch is being sent out today. So there you go. Um, If you're wondering what our merch looks like, uh, this is our merch store. I just threw it in the live chat. It's back online. Check it out. You pick anything from there. And we send it to you. Okay. Is this... I believe we're on to the the actual pro card right now, the first of two prelims.
I'm just listening into the broadcast to confirm. But if so, then we'll highlight both these fighters as they make their walkout. I mean, the announcer's making a big deal out of it, so I believe we have Kevin Rart and Omar Del... Omar El Dafrari. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Keep the comments coming, folks, by the way. I'll get right back to them. Mohamed Shami. I'm looking at my fight card again to make sure. The order might just be changed too, folks. I might just have to switch it up on screen, but... As our first fighter makes. Okay, yeah, so we're out of the amateurs. This is the first fight of the prelims. Fode Al Shami. Okay, so there is a little bit of a bout order change here. That's okay. That's okay. I will change it up on screen here. We can finally highlight some fighters. Appreciate you all, by the way, and I'll get right back to the comments here in a moment. So, switching things around here on the prelims, and we'll probably find out why in a bit, but here we go. 135ers to start. And I'm just going to switch it up here on screen. Hey, again, nothing against... Amateur bouts, but I'm here to watch some pro MMA, baby. Let's freaking go. All right, next here. Got it ready. Uh, throws, he actually throws bombs. I could see him. KO Hooper winning a striking decision. Garcia's chin is super sketch. But uh, Mashat would beat Hooper also. It's confusing. And that's why I love... That's why I love the rankings at that point. Once you get to like the top five or even top ten, you can really predict the storylines going into the fights. This one is, is crazy. No worries, Gravedigger. All you missed was two amateur fights. <laughs> Let me get the dude from Jordan locking it in. All right, let's highlight both of these fighters, folks. That's what we like to do here. We like to show them some love. All right, as we highlight the first fighter who made his walkout, Fuad Al-Shami, the bulletproof Al-Shami. He has a pro MMA record of three and one. He lost his last fight to Ahmed Mohamed Abdul Rauf. Unanimous decision at UAE Warriors 23. Starting off his pro career, he went three and zero oh in AUFC. All three of them were in AUFC against Mohamed Monam Ali, Monamar Felfel, and Mohamed Mano. Uh, and then one amateur decision, unanimous decision against Ali Shaheen. He won via triangle choke. So he has two submissions, one decision, and his three pro wins. That is Fawad Al Shami. Looking at his opponent, Abdullah Ali Yakub. 3 0. Abdullah Aliak Ub in his pro MMA career. All three of his wins, or, or two of his three wins, have come in Brave CF, Brave CF 48 unanimous decision, Brave CF 57 unanimous decision. And then he competed in Belgrade Trophy 2022, where he defeated his opponent in the first round via ground and pound. So, Two decisions, one stoppage. It's going up against Faud Al Shami here next. Looking at his amateur record, a lot of amateur fights, folks. A lot of amateur fights. One, two, three, four, five. Eight amateur fights. He only won. So he went four and four in his amateur career. He's currently three and zero oh overall. There you go. I love highlighting the fighters. It, it just gives me so much. Brings me so much happiness being able to highlight the fighters, and it gives me a little bit of an idea of who they are. 135 year, 135ers, folks. Gravedigger saying going for Abdullah. 
Who am I going with? I am going with Abdullah as well. Three and no, more amateur, uh, more amateur experience. He's has a four fight win streak, obviously with his amateur record being included in that. He stands five five. I don't know how old he is, but I'm sure the screen showed. Oh, there is Al Shami's thirty one. Again, so happy to have Gravedigger, Payne, Rogue Strummer, Kenneth. Um, bu- 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 bu. Who else joined us here earlier? Gabriel, you guys are all amazing. Thank you so much for joining. All right, fighters just being announced. First pro MMA bout on the card. This is exciting, folks. This is exciting. Like the video, drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes. We're trying to get to 50 likes on the video, and if we do, we will give away some prizes to some... Pardon me, to some lucky people who commented in the live chat. So, Yakub, 24 years old, so a lot younger. With the, Okay, so that's definitely going to be my pick. Abdullah, like, locking in twofold now. In his 20s, 3-0 and professionally, his opponent, 31 in his athletic prime, coming off a loss and not as much amateur experience. 24 against 31. Uh, a little bit hot, a little bit taller is Xiaomi, but only by two centimeters. All right, folks, round one. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Center of the ring. Three five minute rounds here. As we are no longer watching amateur fights, we're watching the prelims here. Brave CF sixty five live commentary, live play by play, live reaction, and interaction with all you folks in the live chat. Shami with more of like a traditional kickboxing stance. Nice body kick on the counter by El Shami. Abdullah came in with the flying knee of sorts. Abdullah with the straight left jab. Definitely looks more of like the MMA slash boxing stance where El Shami, very much the the kickboxing, was able to get in the pocket and tag Abdullah up with a couple shots. Abdul, though, he's he's wanting to throw those haymakers. He's missed on uh, two overhand rights already. Three overhand rights already. He really wants to end this quick while Al Shami very looks like he's just content piecing up his opponent, getting in the pocket, coming out. Yakub, he's he's the aggressor though on this one. Let me know your thoughts as the fights play out, folks. You see my reaction, my play by play, my commentary. I want to see some of yours as well in the live chat. Even if it's between rounds, let me know. Totally interactive here. Like the video. You know the drill. Ooh, that high, high low kick, the kick on the up above the knee outside. El Shami landed on Yakub. That looked like it stung him a little bit. I'm curious if El Shami is coming from a kickboxing background. He definitely looks like, oh, and Yakub is swinging way too much now with the, the overhand left, and he almost fell down. He was putting so much momentum into that swing. There's the overhand right. That lands by Abdullah. These guys are just swanging and banging in the center of the circle cage. Yeah, fake by Yakub. Uh, Al Shami did not buy it. Yakub went for the double leg. And Al Shami stuffs it. Now Al Shami has clinched Yakub up against the cage. His clinch work looks good. And, ooh, a nice elbow and shot on the exit. So far, Al Shami, he's looking like the better fighter early in this first round. Two minutes and 24 seconds left. Side kick by Yakub. Yakub's definitely carrying more muscle than Al Shami. So I'm, I'm sure his big overhands are going to sting a lot more. Oh, and there it is. There it is. Yakub goes for a low kick. Al Shami catches it, punches him, knocks Abdullah or knocks Faud Al Shami to the ground. Abdullah caught the kick of Faud Al Shami, tagged him, went to the ground, just pounced on him. Now he's in side control, and this is where he seems he likes to work. That ground and pound. I mean, he's shaped like a fucking fire hydrant. Modified 
half guard full mount here. He has Faoud Al Shim Al Shami pinned up against the cage, and he's just laying down some ground and pound. One minute and twenty eight seconds left in this first round. Dirty old man with my Grasso reprint arrives. She can punch me in the face anytime. <laughs> hey oh. Oh, I love you guys. Keep the comments coming. You're amazing. One minute left in this first round. And working to get back up to his feet is Al Shami, but doing a good job of just holding on to him with that tight grip is Yakub. And there we go. Al Shami back up to his feet. Dominant clinch position. He's pushing Yakub up against the cage. Really trying to get that elbow on the exit. 42 seconds left in this first round. Knee to the body by Yakub. That one looks like it stung. Really chasing that takedown again. Decent takedown defense by Feld Al Shimi up against the cage. And there we go. Gets the takedown. Just ends up pulling and pulling and dragging Feld Al Shami to the ground. 20 seconds left. And Yakub just kind of laying, laying on the crotch of Al Shimi here. Or Al Shami, my apologies. Al Shami's throwing more of the strikes, but the dominant position. That one's a, a hard round to score. I guess because of the takedowns, you got to give it to Yakub. But uh, definitely Shami looked better in the, the striking. We'll check out some of the replays here. Um, you know, some of those overhands landed more than I thought, actually. They're not showing any highlights of Oshami at all, so we know who Braves Boy is. None. They've shown no highlights of him thus far. Zero. That's crazy, because he landed some fucking good strikes in the first two minutes. Hmm. Interesting. They didn't show one highlight of uh, Shami. Keep the comments coming, folks. Hey, if you're viewing on Twitter, by the way, migrate over to YouTube so you can join our live stream and our live chat. Unfortunately, you can't comment on Twitter, which is why we want you to join our live chat. Let's go. All right, round two is upon us. Ref's talking to somebody. All right, round two, let's go. By the way, shout out to everyone joining us here. We do a minimum of two watch parties slash fight companions every week. We're doing three this week. Hell, maybe even four. Bellator and UFC all day tomorrow. So like the video, subscribe, drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes. If you comment in our live chat and like the video, you're automatically entered into winning some prizes. If we get to 50 likes on this stream by the end of this stream, We'll choose a winner from the live chat and we'll send you some City Light Project merchandise. Easy as that. Hey, that shit beautiful than a motherfucker. All right, 30 seconds into this second round. Al Shami with the leg kicks. He's got to be careful. He even rolled up his pants. He's like, he knows I'm going to be doing some kicks here. Outside low kicks. Yeah, that's what he's got to pick Yakub apart with. Definitely see the... Just the even just their body types. You can see that one is the wrestler, one is the striker. Yakub going with that overhand again. Who do you folks got winning the first round? Let me know, because for me, I, I don't know how Brave scores things, but if we're just going typical MMA, it's close, but you have to think that Yakub won it just based on the takedowns and the control time. Faldo Shami, though, looks good on his feet. Like, I like his striking style, personally. God, I need to review the fight card on Ryzen. 40 card is insane. Dude, Ryzen versus Bellator. I am so excited for that. We need to see more promotions do these, like, cross promotions or promotion versus promotion type, uh, type events. Good right hook by Faldo Shami. As he's pushing Yakub against the uh, cage. Nice elbow by Al Shami on the exit. 
mean, the longer this stays on the feet, the better Al Shami's going to do. Going over the flying knee was Yakub. Catches it was Shami. Stuffs his takedown and maybe going for a guillotine here. Guillotine or arm triangle? Nope. Just elects to bring Yakub right back up to his feet where he's comfortable. Two minutes and 39 seconds left in this second round, folks. Vote in our poll question, too, by the way, and let me know who you voted for. It's simply what matchup are you most excited to watch here on this event? And I listed the four most popular ones. Two minutes and 17 seconds left in this second round. Yakub got the takedown, and he is honestly just sitting, not even in the guard. He's just kneeling, kind of modified half guard. Wants to drag Yakub to his back because Yakub is literally just sitting on his ass, back up against the cage, hook in the arm, and he's not allowing Yakub to do anything. If anything, it's helping Shami get right back to his feet. Okay, there we go. Pulling of the legs now is Yakub right back to his butt. Yeah, you guys excited for that Rise and Bellator match card event? It should be unbelievable. Yeah, not doing much here. I mean, some punches from top position, not enough for the judges to even like start, or sorry, the referee to even lean in with concern. Posturing up now is Yakub on his feet. He had the hooks on the body of Al, Al Shami. I mean, Yakub just wants to pull him to his back. Al Shami is actually doing a good job of kind of laying there on his butt, legs planted, at least one foot planted on the ground. He's like kind of with one hook in pushing. Yakub, so he can get up and boom. Just when I said he, he executes it perfectly right back up to his feet. I'm trying to look at the card. It, some of it's on topology. I don't know if they have all of it up there yet. I know Bellator and Ryzen, they've been like posting it. The main, uh, the main fights of it anyways. Yakub chasing that single leg now. I'll show me with some solid takedown defense up against the cage. Oh, blatant cage grab by Yakub. Blatant cage grab by Yakub. Again, a come on, man. You can't do that. 22 seconds left in the second round. Center of the ring now. Solid job breaking away, but there's only five seconds left in this second round. Oh, but straight left. Straight left on Xiaomi. Tagged Yakub. And that's it for the second round. Oh, that's a lot closer of a second round. I mean, this is a this is a good fight. I could, I mean, if the third plays out like that, I could seriously see it going either way. If we're going to lean on control time, Jakub's winning that this fight. However, he does not have as much control time as he did in the first round. The second round, I think uh, Xiaomi did a beautiful job stuffing some of the takedowns did a beautiful job on the cage with his work getting back up with his work with his work on the exits and he a hundred percent is landing more of the significant strikes there's there's no way you can tell me that uh xiaomi is not landing more significant strikes at the end of the day it's going to be what are the judges looking at control time or strikes if one of them can cut the other one open with a strike or something like that then maybe that gives them the edge as well I think Yaku won the first round. Xiaomi won the second round. Let me know your thoughts in the live chat, folks. And by doing so, if you comment in the live chat and like the video, you're automatically entered into winning some prizes. So you probably should just do that anyways. Third and final round, the first professional fight on the card, folks. Let's get it. <sighs> excited uh, for Bellator tomorrow. Excited for UFC. Excited to see more of you join us tomorrow. For both of those events. Happy Friday for those who are joining us here today. Yeah, even the commentary saying that neither of the fighters know who's winning this one. So this this third round is very important. And here we go. Let's get it all. Yakub, honestly, take pride out of it. Take him to the ground, ground and pound or unanimous decision that that's your key to victory. Cause you were, he's being outclassed on the feet here and Fodal Shami. I mean, 
be smart, but score the points, baby, and stuff those takedowns. Yeah, there you go. Those low kicks, nothing high that Yakub can catch and take you down. Come into the pocket and out. Just like in that first round, those those in and out one twos. Oh, a nice left jab by Yakub and overhand right. That tags Al Shami. Oh, and a nice counter. Man, Yakub has found his footing here on the feet. He counters, goes for the single leg right now as he has El Shami up against the fence. El Shami doing a good job right now of the takedown defense. Yakub still hasn't taken him down. And Yakub is doing everything that he can. And Yakub tried to go with a slam, barely gets it though as El Shami's right back to his feet, drags him to the ground now. Does Yakub? Much like that second round, folks. Al Shami on his butt, back against the cage. Yakub <laughs> buried in his crotch <laughs> and under his armpit, just trying to drag him back, but not doing much. That's the thing, man. If you're going to play this wrestling game, go for some ground and pound positions, right? I hate just laying there. I get it. It's going to win you the fight. I'd rather watch NCAA wrestling if you're just going to use your wrestling to lay there. What's up, Victoria? It's been a while. Thank you so much for joining. How are you? How are you, Victoria? I appreciate you uh, stopping by and saying what's up. Two minutes and 58 seconds left in this third round. Finally, Yakub throwing some punches. I mean, he's just been laying on his opponent. Not even laying on his opponent at this point, laying in front of his opponent as he's just on his knees, laying in front of his opponent. They're just bear hugging each other, exchanging shots. As far as the better fighter in in this cage right now, it's Faud Al Shami. No question. He's way more well rounded. It's just a stylistic matchup is hard right now for him. And Yakub, in fairness, is winning this fight. It just sucks to see him win like this because <laughs> it's not entertaining. Back to his feet is El Shami. I mean, and I said it too. I shouldn't be dogging on him too much. I said the, like the, the, the way to victory for Yakub was takedowns. Again, shout out to everyone joining us live here on the City Lake Project YouTube channel. Like the video, drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes. Because even here, I mean, Yaku's just chasing, chasing, chasing takedown where Faud Al Shami now can maybe set up a submission if Yakub does take him to the ground. Yeah, and that's what he wants. If Yakub takes Al Shami to the ground, he can go for that Kimura. I don't think he's going to go for the Bulldog Choke. Come on. Again, let me know who you voted for in the poll question, folks. Almost 20 likes on the video already? That's amazing. Let's try to get to 50. And Faud Al Shami now on top with the bulldog choke. Straight up bulldog choke, folks. This is some schoolyard bulldog choke. It's under the chin. 59 seconds left. Faud Al Shami going with the bulldog jaw lock choke. It's not under the chin, so he's just... I don't think he's going to tap here. I don't think he's going to tap. And if anything, he's grabbing the cage. He's grabbing the cage. Under the chin now. Yeah. I, Al Shami, he went for that bulldog choke and he squeezed a little too hard in my opinion. 30 seconds left though. So that might help him on the judges scorecards for this round. But Yakub, I mean, easily to get out of that, especially when you're nice and sweaty. <laughs> I mean, Yakub is definitely the fan favorite here. Broadcast favorite and fan favorite. Um, again, shout out to you, Gravedigger, Victoria, Gabriel, Payne. You are all amazing. Thank you so much for joining us live here on this channel. And that's it. Three five-minute rounds in the book. Who's going to finish it? It is all over! And that was a fun one. That was a fun one. Except for the third round was a little bit boring, but Al Shami. 
And he thinks that he won this fight too. It, it's close. But I think I'm going to give it to the wrestler. Just the control time, man. Control time, takedowns. I don't know if you get points for takedown defense in Brave like you do in one. I think the first two rounds was a round apiece. I think Oshami did enough to win that second round. Yakub definitely, that first round was his. And that third, it's tough. Graveyard, what do you think? Still in him and Abdullah did a reversal, but it probably won't do him any good. Yeah. The broadcast, like, we have no idea who's winning. Well, we, we might have an idea here. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know who you think won this fight as we are about to hear the official decision. I and mean, it's close. Striker versus grappling match, 100%. A good dis display of respect by both the teams and fighters. Love to see that. Both of them think they won this one. And I mean, shit, they both of them rightly can think that since it was so close. Yeah, love the respect here. The corner is now embracing each other. All right. Official to say, I mean, this is taking a little while, too. The, the judge is talking over this one. Still waiting for the decision, folks. Um, let me know your thoughts again on this fight, on Brave. Let me know if you're excited for Bellator, UFC. Down to chat about anything here. I mean, you're going to hear me do my play-by-play, -play, my commentary, etc. But I want to hear your guys' thoughts on the world of MMA. As this is the, in my, for me, anyways, this is this is the opener for the weekend. Brave CF starts my MMA weekend. All right. Official decision. We're going to hear now. Listening in to the cage. That third round, I, he might have done enough. You're right. All right, listening in right now for the decision, folks. Like the video, drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes. That's all you have to do. Thirty twenty-seven, Yakub. That one is bias. Yeah, that one. Two 30-27s and one 29-28. So the 29-28 was for the striker. The two 30-27s were for the grab, like, were for Abdullah Yakub. I mean, <laughs> split decision so close, like we thought, Gravedigger. But, oh, man, I feel like the hometown hero because the broadcast was rooting for him. The crowd is rooting for me. Maybe he got that little edge there, but hey, respect nonetheless. You could definitely see that two of those judges valued the, the grappling and control time a lot more than the striking, and then we said it was going to be either or. Brian, what's going on, brother? Yo, driving me in Brittany, checking in. Well, I'm glad that you guys are checking in. What is up? Uh, good morning to you and Brittany. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'm glad you two are feeling better, and I'm so excited to see... Uh, We'll just see you two on Bellator and the UFC streams tomorrow. Abdullah did win. Hey, our picks won, brother. Our picks won. So I'm happy. I'm happy. I would, I'm just a little confused. A little confused, but hey, it was close. It was close nonetheless. And I cannot take away anything from his domination of wrestling in that, uh, in that first round. He really put on a clinic. As he continues to develop, I think he's got to lay some more ground and pound when he's in those positions. Because it wasn't even like he was trying to move or do anything. He was just content with laying there, which I get it. I get it. <laughs> if the judges are going to score that for you, you're going to do it. But at the end of the day, it's a fight, and you got to fight. Your boy Charles got manhandled, but uh, both my boys lost. Yes, that my, the only one that on that card that I didn't like expect. 
Dariush dominated fucking rights. Um, O'Malley split decision, a little controversial, but hey, he was in that fight the whole time and it was an exciting fight. Dillashaw was fighting hurt and completely fucked over the division and, and uh, the UFC, not disclosing his injury going into that fight. Fuck the snake. It's over. Get him out of the get him out of the top five rankings. Like let him fight some cans and walk into the sunset. It's over. He held up to the division, and I have no respect for that. Um, but yes, it was a I don't think the card lived up to its billing as like the greatest card of the year. It was damn good, but I think you can even pick a couple of fight nights that were more exciting. But that's usually how it goes. Brian, nonetheless, it was a fun event. Um, and I'm just super excited to hang out with you this weekend. You and Brittany this weekend and watch some more fights, brother. Um, I'm glad you're digging Kyle's fishing content too. He he really loves uh some of the fight community that's been commenting on all those vlogs. And speaking of vlogs, we posted a new vlog this morning, a tarantula feeding. If you guys are into spiders, insects, some creepy crawlers, go check it out. Kyle does a tremendous job of editing the vlog portion of this channel. All right, let's see what the next fighters are here. As I know, the bout orders got a little bit changed. Let's see what is up next. And once we do, we'll highlight the fighters. We'll give a little bit of a breakdown. We'll talk about their records. We'll give my prediction, then I want to hear yours, folks. As always, and Brian can attest to this, Gravedigger, his prize is... Uh, it, it's, it was sent out this morning, so... Again, Grave Digger, I'll send you your tracking info and everything uh, after this stream. But Brian, prize winner as well. All you have to do to enter is like the video and drop a comment in the live chat, folks. Yo, 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 what's up, Matt? Thank you for joining, buddy. How's your day going? You got school or work today? As soon as I hear what the, the second fight is going to be, folks, I'm going to take a quick break. I actually really have to pee. Um, so we use the restroom. We'll come back and we'll highlight both these fighters. Actually, you know what? We'll do it right now. We'll do it right now. Brave is throwing their little uh, promotional. Okay, wait one sec. Are these the next two fighters? All right. I know who the next fighters are going to be, so that's actually perfect. And we'll take a quick break and we'll highlight them, but I'll get them up on screen here. So Kevin Ruard against Omar Del Da Ferrari is up next, folks. 170 pounders on the docket for this next one. Catch weight bout, actually. Uh, Tapology had it slated for 170 pounds. Um, bum, 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 bum. They're about to make their walkouts. We'll do our little rundown on them in just a moment here, folks. I just want to get them on screen. All right, here we go. Keep the comments coming, folks, by the way. It's a comment-driven live stream, live play-by-play, -play, live commentary, live reaction, of course, live interaction with all you amazing people. If you want to win some prizes, if you want to win some free shit, all you, and I shouldn't even say shit, it's beautiful City Life Project merchandise, all you have to do to enter our contest is like the video and drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes. Oh my god, two joints, what's going on? Two joints? <laughs> Let's fucking go, baby. Let's fucking go, Bruce. There it is, baby. Fuck the crackheads. Let's go. I'll tell you what, two joints. I celebrated with two joints. Yeah, that shit beautiful than a motherfucker. Let's go. They're not the worst team in the NHL anymore. Let's go. They're not the bottom of the Pacific anymore. Let's go. By the way, we have a great fight community here, and that's an extension. Most fight fans are also hockey fans, so... Any sports you want to talk about in between the fights, in between me doing my focus play-by-play, -play, I'm taking all your comments. I'm interacting with all of you. And two joints, thank you so much for joining. Just by liking this video and commenting in the live chat, you're automatically entered and winning some prizes. And two joints, I'm from Vancouver Island, British Columbia, though I relocated to Minnesota. So I am a huge Canucks fan. Anytime you want to talk Canucks, buddy, you let me know. Let's go fucking Canucks. a boy. a boy. Hey, thinking positively about the Canucks for a second, at least the Leafs suck too. Yes, man. I mean, I almost like how a lot of Vikings fans hate the Packers more than they like the Vikings. I'm like almost there with the Leafs. I really hate the Leafs. 
but I think my love for the Canucks is just a little bit more. Uh, busy getting my fight prediction for Bellator 287. Atta boy, I'm excited to watch Bellator with you tomorrow. Okay, folks, uh, the fighters are making their walkout right now. We will highlight them in just a moment, but I have to use the restroom. So I will be right back, um, literally two minutes. And while I'm gone, how about a... How about you guys just sit back and hang out with Hasbula? All right, City Life Project YouTube channel, first of many live streams this weekend. Thank you to all who are joining us. Like the video, drop a comment in the live chat. We will be back for live play-by-play, -play, live reaction, live interaction with you folks covering this next fight here on Brave CF 65. Two-minute break, chill with Hasbula, and I'll see you on the other side. Welcome back here live on the City Life Project YouTube channel for our second main professional MMA fight on this card. We got to, we had the pleasure of watching two amateur fights before our first main, I shouldn't even say main card, but event fight here because we have two prelims. This is the second official prelim on the card before we get right into the main thick of things. My name is Isha Jerome. You can follow me on Twitter at VI Sports Talk if you dig my vibe. Like the video, drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes. Yes, throughout this entire stream, and we are going the distance, ladies and gentlemen. We are going the distance throughout this entire stream. We are giving away some prizes, and all you have to do to enter is like the video and drop a comment in the live chat. That's all I ask from you folks. As I want to interact with you i want to get to know you i want you folks to join our fight community uh if you're new to the channel what we do before every fight is highlight the fighters so let's do that kevin Raut out of switzerland a nine and five record he's riding a two fight losing streak right now both of those losses came in octo fight and brave cf 50 before then, he was on a massive winning streak. Seven fight winning streak. And two of those came in Brave CF. Brave CF 31 and Brave CF 36, where he won by KO, TKO in both of those fights. How many submission victories does he have? I mean, this guy likes to end his fights. Um, looking at, at his opponent... Omar El Dafari out of Egypt. Uh, he lost his last fight, but before then was on a four-fight win streak at AUFC, GEC, and again, AUFC. Making his brave CF debut is Omar El Dafari with a 5-2 and two record. I'm going with Kevin Rout. He is the veteran... 32 years old. Uh, DeFrawry's 27. Rart just looks a little bit bigger, too, for the weight class. And round one, let's get it on. Let's get it on. Let me know your thoughts in the live chat, folks. Live reaction, live play by play, live interaction with all you folks. Rart in the blue tape. 
Dafari in the red. Dafari with the karate stance and kicks right off the bat. Catching one of the kicks was Kevin Rout and counters and takes the back of Dafari right off the... In the first 30 seconds, he's already got the back, drags Defrari to the ground. Defrari gets right back up, but still, Kevin Rauer's looking to get that back take. Looking to drag Omar to the ground. Up against the cage right now is Omar. Kevin Rart has a hook in. It's a high hook. A blatant cage grab by Omar. Another cage. Okay, this is the one thing in Brave thus far. It's been two professional fights, and the refs have not done anything about the cage grab. So that's a problem. I mean, ref, you got a fucking camera on your head, too. Oh, and look at this. Defari standing. Standing Kimura? Rar doesn't look phased. One of the arms is singled out. One of Ken Rout's arms is singled out. Defari, look at what he's going to do. Oh, and there we go. Great defense by Kevin. He's still chasing that back. And, oh, Defari tried to do a reversal, and Kevin Rart with that strength just throws him right to the ground. Side mount for Kevin Rart right now. Side mount slash half, or half guard. Looks like maybe he wants to set up an arm bar or something here. I, I don't know, but anyways, he's, he's content getting back up to his feet, and Kevin Rart does that. Let me know your thoughts on this fight in the comments, folks. Three minutes left in round one. Defari trying to use that up kick to his advantage. Kevin Rudd trying to get back in position. He's got to be careful that up up kick though. Defari doing a good job of not allowing Kevin Rudd to get back on top of him, and Kevin Rudd enter, enters his half guard and now is just making him pay with some ground and pound. Two minutes and thirty eight seconds left in this fight, and so far it's been all Kevin Rudd. Omar looking for a submission, but I don't know if he can really get anything from the position right now that Kevin Rard is in. Okay, ref, yes, thank you. Yeah, this Omar guy is using the cage way too much. Feet or toes, fingers, nah. Play fair, buddy, play fair. Two minutes left in this first round into the full guard of Omar is Kevin Rard. I hate that, man. Fucking cage grabs. <laughs> Full guard, some ground and pound, ground and pound being laid by Kevin Rart. Look at this point, ref. If if he does it again, take a point because the ref now is like swatting his his arm and he's and he's on his back. Top position by Kevin Rart, and he's doing in the full guard. He's doing everything that he needs to do here, working to defend or negate any of the defense that Omar is putting in his guard. And then while he's moving or, or trying to negate that some of the defense, he at least tries to make him pay with a big shot or two. Again, folks, if you're new here, like the video, drop a comment in the live chat. We're doing a giveaway. We're doing giveaways throughout this entire stream. If we hit 50 likes on the video, we'll give away some merchandise to a lucky commenter in the live chat. Welcome to two joints as well. Thank you so much for joining brother. Yo, this guy, get his toes out of the cage. Thank you. Oh, he's got to be careful for a heel hook. He's got to be careful for a heel hook. Gets out of his Kevin Rart right back to his feet. Oh, the mouthpiece fell out. If I was Rart, I would just invite Omar right back up to his feet here. The last 30 seconds left. What is he going to do, honestly? Oh. And defer, uh, and Omar tried to get back up. Kevin Rart with a right hook, and now is going for the guillotine with 26 seconds left. Is it guillotine or arm triangle? Regardless, he's just kind of holding him in front of him here. Some body shots. Dominant, dominant round by Kevin Rart. 10 seconds left. Back up to the feet, but Rart has Omar up against the cage, clinched up here. Man, the cage grabs in this first round were atrocious. All right, end of the first round here. I cannot imagine any scenario that Omar is up here. He was on his back the whole time. 
no dominant position, no strikes landed, barely any submission attempts. Dude, this broadcast is saying that Robert has gassed himself? What? What is this broadcast? Robert literally did everything a fighter should do in that first round. And they're saying that they almost twisted it as a negative, saying that he was gassed. Like, what is this? No. He's a professional athlete. After that round, he should be fine. Interesting to see how Omar adjusts, though. If he maybe wants to stand and strike because Raut's a strong, strong beast and he's been able to stay on top of him the whole time. Let me know who you got winning this fight thus far. Let me know how that first round went in your eyes. Live play by play, live reaction, live interaction with all you amazing people here on the City Light Project YouTube channel. We have a giveaway. So like the video, drop a comment in the live chat, and boom, you're automatically entered into winning some prizes. Round two. Let's get it all. And Omar comes out swinging with the leg kicks. Again, kind of. Interesting karate stance for Omar. He likes throwing those kicks. Throws an overhand and tries to go for the takedown, and he gets it. Instantly back up to his feet is Kevin Rar, but hey, Omar gets the takedown. Now they're both clenched up against the cage. Still clenched up against the cage here. Keep the comments coming, folks. It's comment-driven live stream, too. I love hanging out, interacting with you folks. I put pretty much every comment on the screen, within reason, within reason. Great takedown by Omar as he drags Kevin to the ground. Kevin right back up to, oh, almost back up to his feet, but end up giving up his back. End up giving his back, and Omar's got the... He's got the choke in, but it's not from the full back. And Kevin doing a good job of not giving up his back and trying to push it up against the cage. Letting go of the choke is Omar now. Broadcast very, um, what should I say, Middle Eastern bias. <laughs> oh, have the tides have turned. Omar dominating Kevin. Like, bro, calm down. Top position by Omar. Uh, half guard. Kind of that modified half guard side control. He's not doing much, though. Ooh, a shoulder strike here and there. Uh, Kevin's scrambling, trying to get back up to his feet and goes right into a guillotine. Right into a guillotine. Can't see how tight it is right now. Armin guillotine. Kevin ro rolls into the full guard now of Omar. Omar's still chasing that guillotine. Doesn't look like he's squeezing too much, though. He's just kind of holding Kevin in that position. Two minutes and 41 seconds left. Oh, yeah. I mean, Kevin's fine. He gave the thumbs up to the ref. He's not even... Pull he Omar's not even pulling on the neck right now. He's using that position to hold him. He's not being choked out right now. Okay, now he's pulling a little bit. And pops right back out as Kevin. Yeah, that wasn't sunk in at all. Honestly, guys, mute... Mute Brave CF's commentary and just come over here. Not even to toot my own horn. They're not very good. Bias commentary. You know, putting too much emphasis on stuff that like doesn't matter. Like, oh, he's, he's almost getting choked with the gate team. Anyone who watches MMA can clearly see that that was not sunk in. So, just saying, just saying. In the full guard of Omar is Kevin. Getting some ground and pound work done. I mean, one minute and 48 seconds left. If Kevin continues to play this, do this, for the next one minute and 40 seconds, that's enough to win this second round. Win back this second round, in my opinion. Triangle attempt now by Omar. Uh, it's not it's barely a triangle attempt. One of his legs is still under the leg of Kevin, but he gets that up. He gets it up. Omar's got to be careful not to give up his army. I mean, Kevin's doing a good job of getting out of these submissions. He's so, so strong. So, so strong. Top position again. It was north-south, but just laying down the hammer fist now on Omar. Back up to his feet is Kevin. Easily gets into the guard and just laying down some ground and pound. I mean, is this it? Is this it? Is Kevin ending it? Oh. 
I thought maybe that Omar might have just been like not submitting verbally or tapping, but just like giving up his back position and taking some shots to the face. Dominant end to the round here by Kevin. I said if he ended that the last minute plus strong, he was gonna come out on top in the second round. Oh, and now crucifix almost crucifix. He had that knee on the arm. 45 seconds left in the second round, and my goodness. <laughs> my back feels like Louis uh, Pas uh, Passaggia. Passaggia? Sorry if I messed that up. Uh, kicked it. <laughs> I'm listening. All I'm hearing is air. What happened to your back two joints? Are you a fighter two joints? Are you rolling some BJJ or is it just just got a bad back like the rest of us uh, plebeians? <laughs> oh, yes. Now that you mentioned it, totally recognize the name. I'm looking him up right now. I just didn't know how to pronounce the last name, but I remember Wally Buono coming on uh, TSN 1040 all the time talking about Louie. Out of boy, out of boy. Uh, looks like Kevin pulling out for a couple of strikes. Yeah, I, I think Kevin Rout's winning this fight thus far. I've uh, been cutting firewood steady. Nice, man. Honestly, like, though it does, like, leave you a little bit sore, I fucking love cutting firewood. Whether for camping, whether for the wood stove. Maybe it's the Canadiana in me. I love putting on that uh, red or green plaid jacket of mine. Um, if it's a little cold, I even have a denim jacket that I put on over that. Turn the hat backwards, Ash Ketchum style, and let's fucking chop, baby. Uh, it's from the commentary from Brave CF. Interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know. The commentary is fine. The, the broadcast itself is really, really good. The commentary is... I don't know. They haven't sold me yet. They haven't sold me yet, boys. Again, shout to you, two joints. I almost feel embarrassed. Let's get it all. Round three. Embarrassed, uh, not knowing who Louis was off the top of my head. And big shots right off the bat by Omar. He's trying to force this takedown quickly to try to get back up to implement his game. I imagine I mean, he's his styles look really good on the feet, that karate style hasn't elected to want to stay on his feet though against Kevin Rout. Really, really working for the takedown here right now. That single leg right now. Rout's up against the cage, doing a good job of defending. And Omar's just desperately going for that takedown. I'm a lump. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Hey, that shit beautiful than a motherfucker. Um, again, two joints. So glad that you're here, brother. So glad that a Canucks fan is also in the chat. Let's go. Reminds me a little of home. My roommate's a Philly fan. Whoops. Um, my, and then I, I do a Minnesota Wild and craft beer based podcast. But I'm a you know born and bred in British Columbia, so the Canucks are, they're my team. Still chasing that single leg is Omar. Kevin doing a tremendous job on the takedown defense. Again, shout oh. And Omar just, Omar, this is over. This is over. Omar just kind of let go of the position, rolled onto his back, and now is just letting Kevin hit him. Come on, ref. You're going to end this. Omar's done. He's not doing anything. He's just waiting for the ref to end this fight. Kevin is just laying down the hammer fist, laying down the ground and pound. And yes, I understand not a lot of them are getting through, but Omar literally is doing nothing. And the ref didn't end it. Good on him because not all the shots landed cleanly. But, I mean, Omar just, he literally gave up the position, laid on his back, and just allowed Kevin to come in. Two minutes and 59 seconds left. If Kevin gets top position, it's over. Unless Omar, like, throws a crazy up kick and just knocks him out. How crazy would that be? I'm mostly more of a Jersey Devils fan. There you go. I love it. I love it, dude. They're going to be, and I've said this, Grave Digger Jones, New Jersey Devils, um, the LA Kings, Anaheim Ducks. I'm missing one out east. Buffalo Sabres and the Senators are going to run the league in two years. 
they're the the amount of young players they have in their system and on their NHL team right now is unbelievable. They're gonna run they're gonna run the league, man. And LA is already starting to pop in the Pacific. But yeah, you're so lucky, and you're probably gonna snag that Quinn Hughes from Vancouver, aren't you? I mean, you got two of the Hughes brothers already. I know I know the Devils are gonna try to snag Quinn from the Canucks, especially if the Canucks go into a rebuild. Which, hey, the Canucks won their first game, so maybe the rebuild talks are over. <laughs> One minute and 51 seconds left in this third round. Kevin Rart, top position, laying down the ground and pound. Omar, I mean, he's kind of moving side to side, but not doing enough here. Nothing like what he was doing in the first and second round to try to at least get some submissions up. Just kind of accepting his fate. Yup. <laughs> yup for the mate for all those teams being like juggernauts in a few years, or yup to you getting uh Quinn Hughes or or all the above. Again, shout out to those viewing us live in the Sig Light Project YouTube channel. I know it's not a big crowd today. I know, but I kind of expected that. Friday morning, Brave CF, not a huge promotion out here in North America, but I was gonna watch it anyway, so I figured I might as well stream it and I might as well give the opportunity for you folks to win some prizes. So, yes, like the video and drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes. That's all you have to do to enter. 59 seconds, one minute left in this third and final round. And again, Kevin Rao just dominating Omar this entire round. Omar went for some submissions early and then ended up just giving up his position. Like he rolled to the ground off his feet, gave up his back and allowed Kevin just to lay the ground and pound. That's what he's been doing. The ref even almost stopped it at one point. But Omar, again, not all the shots are landing clean. Like, Omar's not super beaten up here. But some of these are landing, and god damn, he must be tired after this. Kevin just keeps posturing up, laying down ground and pound. Posturing up, laying down ground and pound. Now he's, now he's landing. 16 seconds left. The ref could end this. Hey, the ref's allowing him to go to the end of the ground. Or end of the round. 10 seconds left. We just got the... I mean, the ref could have ended this. I understand. Was that a ref stoppage or was that end of the round? Who who cares? That one, honestly, I mean, that's it. Oh, all the above. I mean, when Quinn Hughes leaves, I'm going to be sad because he, when I was watching him play at Michigan, I, I truly thought I'd, he was the best skater I've ever seen since Dennis Savard. Um, weird comparison, I know, but look at Dennis Savard skating for the Bruins. I mean, he was next level at, at that time, and I think Quinn Hughes is just a better version of that skating style. I was so thrilled when Vancouver drafted him. He's such an absolute stud, and it's unfortunate that. And I don't even want to, Jane, I don't even want to rag on the general manager of the Vancouver Canucks. Like I, I've ragged on Jim Benning enough; he's no longer there. It, it's the ownership, and they're sinking this team, and it's it's such a shame. It's such a shame. I mean, fuck, man, the Canucks are. Fans are going to riot again before they win a Stanley Cup. <laughs> oh, man. Disappointed Omar. I mean, he he knows he, he probably lost that fight. I can't, I can't imagine a world where Omar won that fight. We'll see how the judges score this one, but it looks like Kevin Rart is about to snap his two-fight losing streak and improving his record to 10-5. and five. All right, we'll see what the next bout is here. The second prelim was supposed to be my Sarah Muhammad against Frey Harashi. I know some people in the chat here um, were already looking at that fight ahead of time. So we'll see if that one is next because uh, Fuad Al-Shami was supposed to be the first card in the main event. It ended up being the first card on the prelim. We just saw Kevin Rout and Omar go at it. Omar's coach is taking off his gloves. Omar retiring? <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> no, he's just tired. Just needed help getting his gloves off. All right. Center of the ring as we hear the official decision. Um, 
Benning didn't give those. Those was Gillis. Thirty twenty seven. Yep. Shit. Even thirty twenty six. Yeah. Good job. Good fight. Good fight by Kevin Rart. Deserving. Deserving win. Um, Belling rescued the Canucks. Yeah. Look. For that point, I would. I would argue. Yes, he threw a bunch of contracts out. But most of them were easy to get off the books. The Gillis ones were the hardest to get off the books. Hell, the Canucks were paying Luongo until last year, still $3 million due to cap recapture. Um, but I will say this, two joints. Gillis built the better team. Gillis built the better team, and Jim Benning didn't do... Put it this way. Jim Benning had a decade, just shy of a decade to fix it. You had the first five years to clean up the mess and draft. He couldn't even do that. He couldn't even do that. So in my opinion, Gillis, a thousand times better GM than Jim Benning. Jim Benning, in my opinion, sunk this team by not giving them a direction. Gillis at least was like, hey, we're going to sacrifice the future to win now. And he did that. Jim Benning was like, we're going to try to be competitive. We're going to make some trades. We're going to show our guys some slideshows. And we're going to draft the best player available. Buddy, you passed on Matthew Kachuk, you imbecile. I can't stand Jim Benning, and I'm glad he's out. But hey, Canucks general, general managers aren't doing much better right now. And at the end of the day, follow the money. It goes right up to Aquilini. He wanted Benning there for so long. He wants this mess. There you go, Aquilini. Francesco, here's your dog shit of a team. I get fired up, folks. <laughs> No kidding, Kevin is got this boat, 100%. Boudreaux's a good coach, but if the Canucks stink it up a few more weeks, he might not be there for long. Dude, I'm surprised he wasn't fired already. I love Boudreaux, but I'm surprised he wasn't fired already. I read a theory on Twitter that the Canucks are going to ride or die with him all season, then call up the Sedins as like co-managers or co-coaches or whatever, and then bring in that one Swedish coach who's been, who the NHL has been talking about wanting to bring him in as a, the first Swedish NHL head coach in a while. I mean, isn't that story a little too perfect for Sweden? I mean, Vancouver. Um, I don't know if it's going to go down like that. If the Canucks keep losing, they need a change, right? Just for the fan base. Like the fan, the fans are throwing jerseys on the ice. They're burning their jerseys on their barbecues on Twitter. I mean, I know Canucks fans are a different breed, Myself included, though I didn't burn down Robson Street when uh, they lost in 2011. I was there. I didn't do any ride, riding. I escaped. But they're a different breed, man. You got to start winning, especially Jim Benning putting the Vancouver Canucks through a decade of sorrow and doing nothing, no direction. And then this is terrible. Anyways, if you want me to talk hockey or have any questions on other sports, 100% get them in the live chat. We will 100% do so. But in the meantime, let's get to our next fight here. Just waiting for uh, the announcer to announce the next Warriors. Okay, here we go. So we're going with Freya Harashesh. Oh, man, <laughs> I was waiting for the announcer to finish his name. He's like, ah, I was like, holy crap, man. <laughs> um, all right. So excited for this one. This was supposed to be on the prelims, but now it is the, on the main card. So let's fucking go. Both of them undefeated in their young MMA careers. We will highlight both of them in just a moment here, folks. Don't go anywhere. Keep the comments coming. It's a comment-driven live stream. You know this. You know this. And hey, like the video. Drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes. Even if you don't want to just like connect or talk hockey, talk sports, talk fights here, you do have an opportunity to win some prizes. Much like Kenneth here. What's up, his boy? Let's go. Harashish. Let's go. So we know who Kenneth is rooting for in this bout. For the rest of you watching, who are you rooting for? Let me know in the live chat. Bum, ba -dum, bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum,
All right, we got these guys up on the screen here. All right, let's look at Misara Mohammed, a 6 and 0 record and EFC champion. He is undefeated in professional mixed martial arts hell he's undefeated on the amateur scene as well going 2 and 0 on the amateur scene going 6 and 0 professionally his last two wins have come in brave cf last one via knockout the one before to to and i will say he fought two undefeated opponents in his last two matches too a 5 and 0 opponent and a 4 and 0 opponent he beat both of them one by tko one by decision. And then before those last two fights, his first four professional fights were in Evolution Championship and AUFC. Bum, ba -dum, ba -bum. All right, looking at his opponent. Frey Harashish, 1-0 and o professional MMA career. However, on the amateur scene, he went... Uh, he went five and one on the amateur scene, winning his first five fights in a row, losing his last fight before going pro. In Brave CF 49, he made his professional MMA debut and he won via guillotine choke to Glenn McVeigh, who was also making his pro MMA debut then. So there you go. There's a little bit on both of the fighters. I'm going to go with, <laughs> and I hate to do this to you, brother. I hate to do this to our boy, Kenneth here is going for Harashish, but I have to go with the 6-0 former champ, whether it was in an amateur or lesser promotion. I have to go with the more experienced Mesara Mohammed. There's my pick. Locking it in. Let me know the rest of your picks, folks. Ah, shit. I forgot the Philly sports community is on the roll. They're going to lube their telephone poles for the victory riots. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty bad, too. Um, I'm going for Muhammad. Honestly, Gravedigger, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada could have done so much more preventative action for the riots. They didn't even map out an escape route for the NHL players. They were stuck at Rogers Arena for that whole time. They had so many people condensed in that like downtown square that no one could leave and that and, and and or come in. So eventually they just had to like send in like fucking the army to contain it. And it was just it was I've talked to NHL players, I've talked to city workers at the time, and they all said that like, yeah, we we all heard the rumblings, we all you know joked about a potential ride, but we didn't think it was actually gonna happen. Lo and behold, it fucking happened. I was there. If you guys want to ask me about that too, I mean, I was there. I escaped, but I was there. Okay, quick break here, folks. Quick break here. I'm going to grab uh, a coffee. The fighters are being announced in the in the ring. We literally got one minute before this fight starts, and I will be back in one minute time to call it. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in one minute's time to call this next fight. Brave CF 65, live here on the City Light Project YouTube channel. So
And we are back just in the nick of time, round one. Let's get it on. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining our third professional MMA bout on this card. Mohammed versus Alarashesh. Alarashesh in the blue. Tape, Mohammed in the red. Just in the nick of time. I mean, it's not super warm, the coffee, but it's... Or it's not super hot, but it is warm. So there you go. There you go. Keep the comments coming, folks. Comment driven live stream. Oh, and a nice head sidekick by Muhammad. Hell yeah, I love it. Let's see who wins. Hell yeah, brother. Always fun to have different picks and see whose fighters come out on top. Yes, Kenneth, I totally agree. And it's fun when we can kind of go back and forth in the chat on that as well. Appreciate it. Oh, there we go. Muhammad's been tagging up. Alarashish. Back in the center of the ring now. Very comfortable. Looks Mohammed in his striking. Alarashis definitely looks like more of the wrestler type. And the way he's setting up his strikes too to, to get in on the entries, you can tell that he wants to take this to the ground. But Mohammed doing a good job with the takedown defense. Oh, no. was that a fucking question mark kick? Was that a question mark kick to the top of the head? You don't see those every day in the UFC, baby, but in Brave CF, let's go. Fighting for that single leg is Frey, and he gets it. Frey Alarashish gets the takedown center, exact center of the ring. Appreciate all you joining us here live on the City Light Project YouTube channel. Like the video, drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes. We're trying to get to 50 likes on the video. I know we hit 20 a little bit ago. Where are we at with the likes? I know that it's not a big group here today. I mean, when we have a few hundred people, we get to those 50 likes like that. But hey, it's a challenge here today. Tell your friends, tell your family, be like, yo, join this live stream even for five minutes so we can like the video. Get that sucker up to 50 so I can win some prizes. There's not a lot of commenters in the live chat here, which, I mean, boosts your odds of winning the prize, right? When there's less commenters, there's more of a chance for you to win. And let me tell you, if Gravedigger wins today, I'm giving it to somebody else because Gravedigger already won. <laughs> Are in the half guard of Muhammad is Alarashi. She's not doing much though with that top position. Two minutes and 24 seconds left in this first round. Great strikes by Muhammad and good takedown by Freya. Yeah, and you can tell this is a striker grappler matchup, right? It's pretty evident, even just their body types. I'm curious to see how Brave CF's officials, though, work. Are they going to stand him up if he doesn't do anything? Because let's, let's be honest here. Alarashish hasn't done much with top position. Mohammed doing a beautiful job of defending. Beautiful job of locking up his arms. He can't do anything. You can see Alarashish is trying to pull his arm out. And he, he has, I mean, he just did there, but he was having trouble doing so. And yeah, there we go. Alarashas finally laying down some ground and pound when he has the opportunity. Uh, Muhammad, great job to get back up to his feet. And an uppercut, too, on the exit. And now Muhammad's talking a little bit, saying, let's go, let's go. I mean, the striking of Muhammad is definitely at a, at a higher level than Alarashish. He's got to be careful to avoid that takedown. But if this stays on their feet, I mean, it's only a matter of time before Muhammad knocks him out. One minute left in this first round, folks. Yeah, dude. The kicks that Muhammad is throwing. I mean, look how confident this guy looks. Gotta keep your hands up, though, buddy. I don't care how confident you are. You keep those hands up. Solid round, by the way, folks. Solid round. What a nice hook by Alarashish on Muhammad. Oh, but the striking of Muhammad's gorgeous, man. Those combos are beautiful. Flying knee on the entry. Grabbing the cage. Grabbing the cage. Man, there's a lot of bad cage grabs in this event. But in every bout. And there's one by Mohammed as well. Great uh, takedown by Al Rashish. Ten seconds left in this first round. Man, this is a close round. 
again, the judges so far have really valued the takedowns and and ground ground and pound um, control time. So with that, I mean, with that, I guess I guess Ala Ala just won that first round. It's close, man. Let's see if he the knockdown though. Oh, that head kick. It's close, man, because half of the fight, Muhammad was piecing him up with the strikes, and half of the fight, he was getting pieced up on the ground. Well, I guess not pieced up too much, but you know what I mean, getting controlled on the ground. So that one was close. Yeah, the flying knee, I saw that, and it looked like he slipped right after. Yeah, Alor is going to have to do some damage on the ground if he wants to win this fight. In my opinion, that first round was close. I always give the edge to the striker. Like, he didn't cut up Alor by any means, but, I mean, that head kick, the question mark kick, the beautiful uppercut on the exits. I'll give it to the striker for that first round, but I'm curious to see what you, how you folks are scoring it. All right, round two. Let's get it on! Let's see the adjustments by either of these or both of these fighters here in this second round. Neither is Len. Oh, and going for that fancy kick again. In that case, it was a switch kick, and a good job by Alar for just quickly grabbing that single leg, turned it into double leg, and took him down. Mohammed up against the cage. In my opinion, that was a bad adjustment by... Mo Stop grabbing the cage! Oh, God. It's so annoying. Um, that was a dumb move by Muhammad. Why would you throw that kick? Go for the low kicks. Go for the body kicks. Why would you throw something that high and like easy to read, easy to grab as well? Because now you're going to get stuck in this position. Because let's be honest, this is what he's going to be stuck in the entire second round. I can, I can smell it now, folks. Let's see him try to get back up to the cage. Stop grabbing the cage. Man, there's been way too many cage grabs in this promotion. Like, learn the rules, boys. Kimura attempt, perhaps, by Muhammad? As he singles out the arm of Al-Rashish? No, he's just using that for defense. Elbow to the side of the head. Yeah, El Rishesh has a lot to learn. Because, yeah, the guy can wrestle. Look, he's wrestling right now, but he's not doing any damage. Nothing. Zero damage. Back up to his feet. All right, take a point away from Muhammad. He's grabbed the cage too much. Take a point away. Honestly. Again, again, take a point away, ref. Every single time Muhammad is up against the cage, he's grabbing the cage. Take a point away. That's it. It's against the rules. Take a point away. I don't get why they don't do that. You're just showing that I don't care as a ref. I can smack your hand, whatever. Take a point away. Yeah, dude, this is ridiculous. Show that you're the better fighter and you can get up without grabbing the cage. But, I mean, as we predicted, Alorashesh is just laying on him. Oh, and look at that. Grabbing the cage to get back up. Dude, this ref is fucking out to lunch, man. Nice slam by Alorashesh. You know, I, 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 I locked in my pick for Mohammed to win, and I gave him a little praise in the early round, or in the, the beginning of the round, because I really dug his striking, and I still think his striking is incredible. But he's got to stop fucking grabbing the cage, and he's getting ragdolled. What's up, buddy? Yeah, more of the same here. One minute and 30 seconds left in the second round. Ooh, nice elbow, finally, from al -Rashesh. That was nice. Kind of posturing up a little bit, trapping the legs of Muhammad, and then just posturing up an elbow to the face. I like that. Look, I'm, I'm usually more pro striker than, regular, or than uh, wrestler, just as far as 
me picking fights and me wanting to root for X Men, X Fighter, whatever. Like most of my favorite fighters are, are strikers versus grapplers. Even though I love Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, don't get me wrong. Right now, Alarachess has won me over, given that, like, yeah, he may not be the most exciting fighter, kind of like gives me Marab Dishwalavili vibes, but he's not cheating. He's not grabbing the cage. He's implementing his game plan, and it's a working. So even though it's not super entertaining, even though I'm going to be critical of it, 40 seconds left in the second round, it's working as he drags Muhammad back to the ground. And Muhammad's getting frustrated now. And I swear, if he grabs the cage one more time, the ref has to take a point away because this is bullshit. Why does Muhammad keep grabbing the damn cage? I don't know, man. He must, like, bad habit. And that's something, like, maybe in training he does it all the time and no one tells him not to. Because these are blatant cage grabs. He's not even trying to hide it. Not even trying to hide it. Like the video, drop a comment in the live chat if you haven't already, folks. Let me know what you're eating for lunch, too. It's almost lunchtime. I mean, it is lunchtime where I'm at, but almost lunchtime for you Pacific viewers. What are you having for lunch today? I saw my roommate Joe was making some ramen, so that's gonna that's calling my name after this stream. <laughs> All right, end of the second round. So not the most exciting fight. If it would have stayed on the feet, Muhammad, very, very decorated striker is a good word to describe it. He implemented a lot of things there, but I think him getting too fancy and trying to do that so it was a question mark kick again. Yeah, and he paid the heavy price for it. I mean, hey, the, I agree with the broadcasters in this one. You try to put on that highlight reel kick that you've, you you landed it already at one point in the fight. Why do you need another one? Beautiful slam. Uh, by Harashish. So, yeah, no, I th that first round was close. That second round was all oh, harashish. And if anything, it's take away a point from Muhammad if he grabs the cage again. Yeah, Muhammad can't get fancy with his strikes. I mean, he's naturally fancy with his strikes, I feel like. So, like, don't do any of those stupid kicks. Bro, the cage grab just, I start seeing red, dude. Fuck me. <laughs> I call it how I see it, man. And usually in the UFC, like one or two here and there, it is what it is. It's like instinct. But this guy is just, it's too much. Let's get it all. All right, round three, folks. Again, we're in the main card. We're we're not in the prelims. We're not in the amateur bouts anymore. Three five-minute rounds. Third round of this fight. I think uh, Alarashesh is winning. The first round was close. That second round was 100%. Alarashesh. And given how the judges scored some of these fights already, they like the grapplers, they like the wrestlers, they like the control time. Low kick by Muhammad. Spinning back kick by Muhammad. That one barely lands. Oh, a kick to the knee by Muhammad. One, two. Muhammad's striking is so good. It's so good. Stuff the takedown of El Arshesh. One minute into the third round. High kick by Muhammad. Yeah, just don't do anything fucking crazy. Superman punch by Muhammad. Everything that he's land, everything that he's throwing is pretty much landing right here. Al Rashesh landed with the overhand though. <laughs> it's weird, folks, because I picked Muhammad to win this one, but I'm rooting for Al Rashesh at this point. And Al Rashesh going for the double leg. Good takedown defense by Muhammad without even grabbing the cage yet. And there we go, double leg right to the ground. And there we go, another takedown by Al Rashish. Keep the comments coming, folks, by the way. It's a common gym live stream. You are all amazing. Shout out to Gravedigger, Kenneth, Payne. Who else has been joining us throughout this stream? Two joints. Oh, Canada. Oh, Canucks, baby. Brian said what's up earlier. Victoria dropped by. Gabriel. And, of course, thank you so much to Rogue Strummer for the $5 <laughs> donation. You're an absolute beauty. Yes, I'm dropping it on the underdog that you selected this weekend. Again, I never ask for donations. All I ask for is that you folks join our little community here and commenting in the live chat. You're all amazing. Another cage grab by Mohammed. Dude, done. Yep. There we go. 
Thank God for the ref here. The ref stepped in. Yeah, he took a point away because that one clearly stuffed. That cage grab impeded Al-Rashesh from getting the takedown. I mean, now it... Unless Muhammad knocks out Al-Rashesh, Al-Rashesh has won this fight with two minutes and 20 seconds left. He should have taken away a point in the second round too, but glad a point was taken away in that third round. Shout out to everyone joining us live here. If you want to enter our contest, yes, we're doing giveaways. Like the video and just drop a comment in the live chat. You're automatically entered into winning some prizes. Again, shout out to Rogue Strummer uh, for the $5 donation. Hey, he got the point taken away, Kenneth. And there we go. I mean, Mohammed now is just really swinging with intent, and fair enough. That's if, if I was in his position, I'd just swing everything. Because if I'm in his position right now, you know you've lost the fight in two minutes if you don't finish it. Mohammed's stalking down Al Rashesh on their feet now, just looking for that ending blow. Again, shout out to the people of Bahrain hosting this event. Mohammed, his perfect his perfect streak is about to end, folks. His perfect streak is about to end. The six and zero fighter is about to lose. Oh, he rocked Al Rashesh with an uppercut, and then screamed at his face. Al Rashesh went for the the single leg and got it. Al Rashesh is a tough motherfucker, folks, because that uppercut probably would have knocked out half the division. Al Rashesh is an absolute tank. Takes it, goes for the single leg, and takes down Muhammad again. Muhammad, that was pretty crazy. Just screams in his face after landing that uh, that uppercut. Uh, Jacob, what's going on, buddy? Uh, okay, so you're wrong on one of them. I, I know you're trolling, Jacob, but to call Alex Ovechkin a trash player is the most disrespectful thing a hockey fan can say. So you've actually just lost some street cred, um, even more street cred. I mean, I give you a pass because you're, you're a Vegas fan. I mean, whatever. I'll give you a pass there, buddy. But like to say you can trash Ovechkin, a signed Ovechkin jersey, you saying you don't want one of those? No, I'll say Couturier. I mean, yeah. um, but what's up, Jacob? Thank you for joining. Uh, Jake was going to hack me now. By the way, last time I spoke ill of Jacob, he literally sh almost shut our stream down. So blame him if the stream shuts down, folks. Um, but Jacob, happy you're here, buddy. Uh, these are my roommates. They're pretty awesome. The Ovechkin one? Ugh. Couturier? Eh, not so much. About time. Why didn't they take a couple points in that last round? No idea. Brave CF, baby. Again, explain to me why, dude. Explain to me why the greatest goal scorer in NHL history sucks. Just, just hey, oh, and he has a Stanley Cup. Wait, does your team have a Stanley Cup? No. Does your team have the best score of all time? No. Your team got a washed up Pacioretty at one point who like maybe could score 40 at his at his prime. But come on, Jacob. And by the way, folks, Jacob is always trolling me. Never take what he says seriously, except that he will shut down the stream because he has hacked me before. That is truth. Yeah, they should also put them back in the position where he had him before, grab the fence to get a better position. Didn't he didn't he put them back in that position? Or were they just did he just stand them up after? Usually in the UFC they do that. You're right, Kenneth. Uh hmm. I know. Don't talk too much shit. He will shut he will shut it down. Last time I was plugged into my modem and Jacob just like kicked open the door to my house, sent in his goons. One broke my leg and the other just unplugged the wife or unplugged the, the modem. It was nuts. He is a goal scorer. A goal scorer. <laughs> it's funny because Jacob, I try to support you, man. I, like I try to be like, oh yeah, you know, I, I'm one of the only people who like Jack Eichel. But then you throw out stupid shit like OV sucks. And it's like, bro, you got to pick your battles, man. You want to rip on Couturier? Sure, I'm all about that shit. You want to rip on Ovi, though, and nah, bro. I, I got no time for that. <laughs> uh, Gravedigger saying, what is up, Jacob? Again, for, for those who are new and don't know me and Jacob's, like, back and forth here, Jacob Loves THPN has been supporting me for a long time. Jacob Loves THPN is an absolute beauty. Uh, Jacob Loves THPN knows how to grind my gears, but I'm glad that he's here nonetheless. <laughs> And uh, we don't have the official decision yet, but uh, 
Al Harash believes that he won this one. And folks, I believe that he won as well, especially with the point being taken away in that third round. Put up a hell of a fight. How's the Wild and Canucks doing? Oh, left my ass off. What a joke of teams. Uh, the Wild, barely a joke. They're actually doing very good now. Did you not see Flurry's beautiful performance last night? And again, it was against the Senators. Um, no, to be to be perfectly honest, Jacob, like no tongue in cheek at all here. The wild bad start, hundred percent. I ripped on them too. I don't think Flurry's the answer. I don't think Flurry's a top goaltender in the National Hockey League. To be perfectly honest, and I think that that could maybe sink them. However, I do think the Wild are a solid team in the Central. They're not a joke of a team. Are they the best team? No, they're not a joke of a team. Uh, the Canucks are a joke of the team. And by all means, Jacob, let's rip them together. Because I went on a fucking tirade like ten or like 15 minutes ago about the Canucks when uh, two joints was here. They're a joke. Rip them as much as you want. The Wild, I'll defend the Wild a little bit more. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Uh, oh, I doubt it. He's making money. Why would he retire? Look, I hope so for the sake of the Wild. I don't want him playing for the Wild. I think Flurry's a trash goalie. Wild fans come at me for that one. At the end of the day, there, it makes no sense for him to retire midseason. Freya deserves that win, I believe. All right, let's 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 get into it. But yeah, Jacob, I do not think Flowers is the answer, but I don't think he'll retire midseason, especially with the money that he's making. He's making, what, three mil per season? He's a two-year contract? All right, official decision here, folks. First round was 28-28. Second round, 28 or 29-27. How the hell do you get a majority draw from that? How the hell did you get a draw from that when Muhammad got his p- a point taken away in the third round? Oh, man. I don't like the judges in Brave CF right now. There was a bad decision earlier, and this just makes no sense. I guess both of their records are saved. Both of them, or I guess... Ugh, that... Very confused. Very confused on that one, to be perfectly honest, folks. Halorashish is celebrating, too, the majority draw. He should be pissed that he didn't win that fight. Hmm. Very interesting, folks. Very interesting. That one confused me. First round, sure, tied. Second round, you, you, you give it. To the wrestler because he did more and the third round it was closer the wrestler still did more and Muhammad got a point taken away no idea how that uh, no idea how that was scored to be perfectly honest but hey it is what it is yeah dude it's that that is I have no idea how that was a draw <laughs> brave CF judging ladies and gentlemen Wow. Well, I'm glad. I guess neither of them got the loss. So I don't know. Weird, weird decision for me. Weird decision for me. Uh, Jacob, sorry, I missed one of your comments here, buddy. Give me one sec. Uh, we can see the game in the OV glass <laughs> a little bit, eh? Huh? Hopefully, not enough for YouTube to shut us down, Jacob. <laughs> Wild are brainless for letting Cam Talbot leave. You know what? Jacob, I think I think I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna agree with you. I will say this: you know Talbot is 36 years old, right? He's not he's no spring chicken. But yes, I truly thought Talbot was the better goalie for this team because he's an interesting goalie in that he plays he plays well under a certain system that the Wild employed. Flurry, very different type of goaltender. Now I believe Flurry's only like 11 and three, 11 and four with the Wild or something like that since arriving there. You know, late last season, he hasn't looked amazing. He hasn't looked amazing. I'm still a little scared. Man, that ref has me all fucked up. <laughs> yeah. What's up, Kyle? 
Hell yeah to another fight companion. Shout out to Kyle, the co-creator of this channel. Kyle is the editor behind all the vlogs that we post. He, we just posted a new one this morning as well, a new tarantula feeding vlog. So if you're a fan of the vlogs, Kyle is the man, the myth, the legend behind all those. I kind of run the streams. Kyle runs the, the vlog editing, and he's been doing an absolute banger job of doing that as well. So what's up, Kyle? Hope you're having a good day at work. Dude needed to take two points. Uh, one from round two and three. Yeah, that or like, how was the scoring in the third round a draw with the point taken away? That's what makes no sense. I can understand a draw before the point being taken away. Yeah, it makes no sense. I'm off to film some beach fishing. Hell yeah, brother. Look at that. So for those who like the fishing content on our channel, there you go. There you go. That's what I said. The cage grab from the second round should have took some points from him. A hundred percent grave digger. I think I was, we were both yelling at our TVs like, what the hell? What's going on? So no, totally agree with you there, man. That was, that was interesting. That was interesting. Uh, I don't agree with it at all. Okay. So officially we are out of the prelim. So three prelim fights, two amateur fights, and we're on to the main card, baby. We are on to the main card. Just waiting to see if they start it with Shamil against Pavel. If so, we will jump to that one. If not, we'll wait uh, and, and see what's next. But so far, the fights have actually been pretty good. Like, no complaints on the actual product of the Brave FC fighters, the, the broadcasts. I mean, all that is good, but man, the judging... Now, I, I, I might have to do some research for the next one and see what they actually look for because something there is not right. Something there is not right. Anyways, folks, um, some, promo, some promo video going on right now. Showing some of the highlights. This is Brave Combat Federation, all that noise. So uh, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to take a quick break. On the other side, we will highlight the first fight on the main card here. I'll give my predictions. We'll give the rundown on both the fighters' styles, their records, the whole nine yards. If you're, if you're a regular on the channel, you know the drill. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Like the video, drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes. Let me know who you voted for in the poll question and join our fight community as we love to interact and hang out in the live chat. All right, quick break. On the other side, we'll be, we will be back to highlight the next two fighters and get into the main card of Brave CF65 in Bahrain. Thank you to all joining us live here on the Siglite Project YouTube channel. Damn, that belt looks damn good. Dude, one of the nicer belts. Because one championships is kind of the old like UFC style, but it's just massive. Like The belt is bigger than my fucking torso. Um, dude, that is a damn good looking belt. I mean, when you got a prince... Of a uh, prince who owns the the whole promotion, you know that that belt's gold plated, baby. All right, on the other side, we will be back to run down the next fight here. Grave Digger's taking a quick break too, so perfect timing. Don't go anywhere. Like the video, drop a comment in the live chat, and I'll see you on the other side. So
What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the City Light Project YouTube channel. Thank you so much for being with us. We took a little bit of a longer break, warmed up some coffee. And again, I want to apologize, folks. Tapology, this fight isn't even listed on the fight list on Tapology. Hussein Ayad is making his walkout right now. And unfortunately, folks, like this, this, this fight is not even on the Tapology website for matchups right now. All wins by way of stoppages coming off for or back to back first round finishes is Hussein Ayad. And you know how I love to highlight both of the fighters before the fights, during their walkouts. We talk about their fighting styles, their record, their experience. She, for a fight that was supposed to be on the main card, ladies and gentlemen, this one is not listed on Tapology. So I apologize for not having the correct fight on the screen. It said that Shamil Gaziev was supposed to fight Pavel uh, Delitoko. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, some heavyweights start off the card. That did not happen. Instead, we got these two fighters. And at first, I was like, okay, are we starting amateur again on the main card? No. No, it looks like this was just a late addition to the card, so I'm going to do my best to do my play-by-play. -play. 
I mean, I'm sure that won't affect the play by play at all, but just, uh, and I should be used to it by now, folks. I do a lot of these live streams. I do a minimum of two fight companions, the two live streams every single week. And let me tell you, a lot of them, nine times out of 10, the smaller promotions, bout orders will change. Half the fights don't even go through. One of the guys fighting a different guy on the same card, X, Y, and Z. I should be used to it. But coming off one championship, coming off, coming off UFC weekend, everything's just like perfect. They don't change the bout order. They don't change the fighters. They don't add shit day of. Now, again, I'm not accusing them of adding this fight day of. It's just not on Tapology. It's not on SureDog. So I apologize for not doing my full breakdown. If you're new to the channel, before every fight, I do my full breakdown. We highlight the fighters. We talk about the betting odds, the whole nine yards. We have fun with it. Couldn't do it for this one. Couldn't do it, which is another reason why I came in just like another minute late off the break because I was looking for more information on both of these fighters. Couldn't find anything. So anyways, there it is. They're being announced now in the, in the center of the ring. Isa Salim, 24 years old, 6-3 and three record. Fighting out of Iraq at a Samurai Team Academy's Isa Salim. Again, shout out to everyone joining us live here on the Stay Light Project YouTube channel. You are all amazing. Let me know who you voted for in our poll question as well. I see we got 35 votes. That is awesome. All right, fighting out of the red corner. Six wins, three losses for Hussein Ayad, 28 years old. Fighting out of KHK Team Bahrain. He is here, home in Bahrain. Keep the comments coming, folks. A comment-driven live stream. You are all amazing. We're at 24 likes. If we can get... You know, I'll even drop it down a notch. I originally set the goal at 50. If we can get to 40 likes on this video, we will give away some prizes. There you go. There you go. All right, 28 years old, Hussein Ayad, 24 years old, Issa Salim. Again, this matchup isn't on Tapology. For anyone in the live chat right now, is this on like your betting site, this matchup as well? Because this one kind of came out of nowhere, but I'm pumped for it. I am here for it. Let's freaking go. Round one. Let's get it on. I got some General Tsao on the way. <laughs> oh, and there we go. Kick right off the bat. Caught the kick now. I had. Kenneth going with Salim. Thank you so much for continuing to stay on uh, throughout this stream, <laughs> Kenneth and Gravedig. You guys are amazing. Gets the takedown, does add. Salim on the ground now, full guard. 30 seconds into this fight. What an explosive start to the fight. I was reading the comments here. I just, I totally missed it. All I saw was the catching of the kick after being pushed into the cage. I'm sure we'll take a look at the replay if it was something crazy. Uh, beautiful pass to side control. Unbelievable pace to start off this main event again, or this uh, main card again. The fighters on screen right now. That is not <laughs> who is fighting. This was a an addition to the card and a beautiful shot from top position by Hussein Ayad, who is just all over Issa Salim early in this fight. Trying to get full mount, but Salim is back, is pressed up against the cage. Not enough room to change that position, unless unless Ayad goes to his feet and sweeps there. Hussein Ayad. Man, the, the broadcast said it. Almost a flying omoplata attempt. I don't even want to call it a reversal for Sa Saim. Uh, Hussein Ayad pulled guard there trying to get that submission. Again, let me know in the live chat here. Is this fight listed on the CF website, your betting you know, app or, or sports book? Because on Tapology and SureDog, this fight is nowhere to be found. I need to do a little search. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Maybe it's just because they don't have an account. Yeah, well, that, not even an account. It's because there's no page for either of these fighters on those websites, which is why just like their database can't show. Oh, 
And Issa Salim making Ayad pay for the onslaught early with a beautiful combo there, right back to their feet. Two minutes and 35 seconds left in this bout. A good knee and a double combo by Issa Salim. This is a fight, ladies and gentlemen. Issa Salim with the two hooks there. Issa Salim making Ayad pay. Oh, he wobbled him. Issa Salim wobbled Ayad, but Ayad comes walking forward again. This is an absolute scrap. A right hand by Ayad and Issa Salim clinches and tries to go for the takedown. Nice knee and elbow on the exit. Hey, this is a great display of mixed martial arts, ladies and gentlemen. For two fighters who have no idea who they are, who aren't listed on Tapology, spinning back this attempt by spinning, followed by spinning back kick by Issa Salim. I hope this stays on the feet, ladies and gentlemen, because with one minute and 51 seconds left in this first round, it has been so much more exciting than on the ground. But who's saying that? I add with a beautiful, just like splitting hot butter. Or I guess I should say splitting butter with a hot butter knife. Easily slid into a double leg takedown. Issa Salim, though, might chase a guillotine here. Wow. Oh, Ken, you found it. Issa Salim is 3-3 three and three and has a loss against uh, Marissa Mohammed by unanimous decision. Only found Issa because he fought him on Tapology. Oh, okay, okay. Got nothing on my end. Yeah, it's just like I couldn't find their profile easily. But okay, dude, Kenneth Smith. What an absolute beauty. Thank you so much for coming in big and helping me out here in the live chat, buddy. Again, I don't care if there's one. Well, I guess two because the boys are here. But what is? I don't care if there's three or 300 people. The fact that anyone's here watching these fights with me, I'm fucking blessed. So thank you so much. This is a great start from, again, the two guys that we didn't even know about. That's your beautiful oh, look at that. Less of a takedown by Salim Moore of Hussein Ayad pulling guard there. In the full guard. I mean, nonstop action here, boys. And girls. I don't, I, if there's any females watching, what up? they's and thems. I don't give a fuck. As long as you're a fight fan, you are welcome in this community. Let's go. Oh, perhaps setting up a triangle. Armbar, armbar. Who's in Ayad? Go for the armbar. This... 10 seconds left. Oh, six seconds left. It's not fully extended, and he's going to survive the round. What a... What a fucking first round. What a first round on the main event. Stand up, ladies and gentlemen. St that was one round. That was one round. I'm going to have to clip this just as my reaction throughout this fight if this turns out to be fight of the night. <sighs> Phenomenal round. I, like... Who won that round? Who cares? God, I wish I could show these guys some love on uh, on the screen here. Okay, I'm going to try again. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, it's so funny. I can't show. Yeah, I can't show it. Anyways, sorry I can't show this bout on screen. At least the stats here and everything. Um, this one wasn't listed on Tapology. All right, round two. Let's get it on. Which I'm happy. It kind of came out of nowhere. That's a great first round from both fighters, 100%. Oh, yeah, my bad. I spelled his name wrong. Issa Salim found, uh, fought Mesar and Brave SC40. Yeah, I found it. I, got, I was picking up what you're putting down, buddy. Don't worry. I'm probably even worse at you with my spelling mistakes, so I... I I barely even notice them. But thank you so much, Kenneth. Thanks to everyone viewing right now. Like the video, drop a comment in the live chat. We're trying to get to 40 likes. That's right. I dropped it by 10. If we get to 40 likes on the video by the end of the stream, we will give away some merch to a lucky person in the live chat. Oh, and a nice shot by Issa Salim and Hussein Ayad. Really trying to go for the takedown again. Oh, Ayad's hurt. Ayad's hurt. He's just allowing Salim to hit him in the side of the head. This might be over, folks. This might be over. Issa Salim is just piecing up Ayad. I just goes for a desperation takedown. And honestly, if Issa just slides his arm under, he could have gone for that guillotine. I'm surprised the, the ref didn't end it there because he just, again, he just gave up. 
He was just like, all right, hit me in the side of the head a few times. But hey, credit to the ref because it looks like Ayad has a little bit more gas left in the tank. Slim is wailing on a yeah, just that's what I was just saying, buddy. I was surprised the ref didn't end that there. But hey, the way the way Brave CF ref and judges are going, I mean she. And Ayad now top position in the full guard of Issa Salim. Wow, what a fight. Three minutes and thirty-one seconds left in the second round. Again, I apologize, folks. I have the wrong uh fight bout shared up on screen. It's just uh you know what I'm gonna do to to avoid confusion. I'll just put the card up like this. And then when we get to the next fight, the actual one on the screen, I'll just choose that one. Less confusion there. Again, for UFC fights, folks, it's awesome. I just have the ESPN one up and it gives us live in time stats, which is amazing. Then I can break down the stats between rounds as well. It's awesome. I think Bellator is starting to do that, which would be sweet if I could share that as well. All right, a little bit slower of pace now that Ayad is in top position in the guard of Issa Salim. We saw how Ayad worked in his guard armbar attempt. Um, Issa Salim doing a good job in his guard as well. Not necessarily going for the submissions per se, but his defense. Uh, you know, withholding Hussein Ayad to do pretty much nothing here is good. And he's throwing some elbows and strikes in bottom position as well, is Issa Salim. Hammer fist. Okay, this is a weird thing to say, but is on anybody else's stream is the like the YouTube stream is the shadow of Issa Salim purple, or is that just me? <laughs> what a tremendous uh, start to this fight! You gotta watch those. Oh, watch the eye pokes there. Still the full guard and and doing just that guarding and striking, pushing him off. Was Issa Salim? I add now on his feet, Issa Salim. Uh, now in full guard, high guard here as he has his leg over the head of Ayad, enough to kind of get him into a little crucifix here as he has his, un his one of his arms trapped and he's just elbows in length. This is a beautiful position by Issa Salim. What is this fight? What is this matchup? Why is it on? Why isn't it on topology? Wow. So far, this is this is the best fight of the day by a long shot. This beautiful high guard that he's using just to wail on him. He's winning this fight from bottom position being the aggressor. This is beautiful. One minute left in the second round. Hussein Ayad has to get out of this. He's not winning this round staying on this top position. Salim is dominating from his guard right now. Is it too far of a stretch to say Issa Salim is dominating from his guard right now? Look at the way he's look at the way he's fighting those hands. God damn, what a fight. What a fight. 28 seconds left. In the second round. Yeah, it's probably not on Tapology because it's Hussein that doesn't have Topology page and can't really post on Tapology card. Yeah, I don't even think it was on Sure Dog either. Um, anyways, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Lower promotion. Sometimes it's hard to get the the ones on screen for BKFC. I had to go back and forth from Tapology and the BKFC uh, website. I love me some bare knuckle fighting championship folks. The only thing is they've been putting a lot of their cards on Saturdays up against the UFC. As soon as there's a break in UFC, though, again, I hope BKFC takes advantage of it and plays that shit Saturday night because I will watch it. And you know what was awesome? BKFC joined the live chat and was like, I love what you guys are doing. Thank you so much for promoting, you know, the our league and everything. And it was amazing. Uh, don't forget, folks, I've lowered our goal on our, you know, to, for our contest giveaway. I lowered it from 50 likes to 40 likes. So tell your friends, tell your fam, tell your aunties. Aunties go crazy for the live streams, folks. Like the video, drop a comment in the live chat. Boom, you're automatically entered into winning some prizes. Once we get to 40 likes on the video, we're going to choose a winner from the live chat. That's right. If we hit 40 likes on this video, if you've commented in the live chat, you have a chance to win some prizes. So let's go. 
What a fight. What a fight. I have no idea who's winning right now. I have no idea who's winning. If I had to choose, I would say Salim because on the on his back, it was it was he made beautiful work of his full guard. Trapping the hands, getting that high leg up, elbows. What an awesome fight. Round three. I don't even want this to end. Round three. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. All depends on this third round. Oh, nice double inside low kick. Three from Salim. Left hook. They both look a little wobbly. They both look a little tired. Uh, dude, BKFC, tell me how crazy that uh, Perry Page fight was, man. Dude. Dude. Shout out Bellator. Oh, here we go. Salim on top position again. He dropped Ayed. Top position. He's raining down shots on Ayed. Elbow. Issa Salim, top position and just raining down elbows now on Hussein Ayed. Yes, the Michael Benham Page fight against Mike Platinum Perry in BKFC was amazing. It was unbelievable. Shout out to Bellator for doing the cross promotions. Again, Bellator versus BKFC. How cool was that? Now we're going to have Ryzen versus Bellator. I love what Bellator is doing. I love what Scott Croker is doing in that regard. Uh, yeah, it has Boudicca, right? Uh, Salem is pounding, I add. Yeah, dude. Salim is going to win this fight, barring a crazy submission from the back. And you know what? Credit to the, the official. He has given Hussein Ayad all opportunity to survive and work in this fight. I mean, doing his best Herb, and Herb Dean impression at times. But you know what? In this case, fair. Nothing was too crazy. Nothing was too dangerous. Again, folks, if you have friends who you think would dig these watch parties, these fight companions, whatever you want to call them, watch-alongs, uh, share the link with them. Even if they can't join live right now, we just want to grow this fight community. And most of us are general sports fans as well. I love how Gravedigger Jones is a hockey fan. I mean, fucking rights. I know we got some football fans, NFL, CFL alike. Elbows now from top position. As Issa Salim does beautiful, you know, Issa, Issa Salim on his feet, he's look good. In his guard, he's look good. In the guard of Hussein Ayad, he's look good. And Hussein Ayad has given him a fight. Hussein Ayad has hit him with some good shots. Ended the first round with his arm trapped in an arm bar. Unbelievable fight thus far. Best fight on the card yet brave cf65 shout out to all the new viewers who are joining if you are new to the channel we do a minimum of two fight companions every week but we're doing three this week we have bellator tomorrow morning and then ufc in the evening and depending how long ufc goes we might fire up the jake paul anderson silva boxing match as well we have contests, giveaways on every single stream that we do so all you have to do to enter is like this video and drop a comment in the live chat by doing so you automatically entered into winning some prizes. When we get to 40 likes on this video, on this stream, we'll give away some prizes to a lucky commenter in the live chat. So there you go. Yeah, that shit beautiful than a motherfucker. One minute and 24 seconds left. Ayad is done, man. Ayad is done. He is He's mentally broken. Issa Salim just stole his soul there in the ring. Still in the full guard as he's been in pretty much his whole round, just beating up his opponent. One minute left in this third round, folks. One minute left in this third round. Elbows again from top position, Issa Salim. Forty-five seconds left. So the pace obviously has slowed down to this point, given that pretty much his entire round, Issa Salim has been working in the top position in the guard of Hussein Ayed. And you can argue the second round, maybe the pace wasn't as crazy as the first round either, but I would argue it was because Issa Salim was dominating from his guard, working, being offensive. 
And yes, this round wasn't the most exciting one, but this was a hell of a fight. This was a beautiful display of mixed martial arts all around. Very happy with this fight actually seemingly coming out of nowhere. And that's it. End of the round. End of the fight. Oh, shit. It's not. He just stood him up. My apologies. There were 10 seconds left, so they took the score, uh, the, the time clock off the screen. I just assumed it was the end of the fight, but there was 10 seconds left. And Ayad going in being the aggressor. So my apologies. Here we go. Now it's the official. Can Can it's all over! Very interesting that the official stood them up there with 10 seconds left. I guess Issa wasn't doing enough, but he was doing enough on his back. Last time in the second round, again, the, the ref and, and judging alike in this promotion have uh, have raised my eyebrows a little bit, but damn good fight. Best fight on the card thus far, hands down. Tell me otherwise, chat. Tell me otherwise. Dude, I got to pee again. I've been drinking so much coffee today. Skip breakfast. Went with two cups of black coffee. If my roommates are listening, I did grab extra coffee. So we good. <laughs> Looks like uh, I had still a little mentally broken. Where Issa's in the center of the of the ring right now, he seemingly knows he wants. He's fired up. Where Ayad's kind of sulking in his corner a bit, and, and that's no disrespect. I'm just I'm just calling it how I see it here. Maybe disappointed in his performance. Uh, showing respect to his opponent is Issa Salim. His camp. And and his opponent himself giving him a hug there. I love I love the respect that mixed martial artists show each other at the end of fights, folks. You have to getting into that cage. That's why I kind of grabbed my gears earlier. That one in the first amateur bout. Um, it was a comeback win by a nineteen year old, and uh, against uh, an experienced guy who's like 26, 27. And the 26, 27 year old, he got caught. He got caught in a submission despite dominating the fight, in my opinion, on the feet and everywhere. Um, the young guy went to give him like a you know a shake and a hug, and he's like pushed him. I'm like, come on, man, you're the older fighter too. Oh, so that's beautiful. The the Iraqi flag, the Bahrain flag. I mean, they they each like showed some respect for the countries too. All right, all right. Oh, exchanging of the flags now, and wearing them in the uh, in the official decision. That's pretty cool. Oh, I feel I feel bad for uh <laughs> He's just got some swagger, eh, folks? I mean he knows he won here. He knows he won. Now imagine if he loses this decision. I mean, I feel a little bad for Ayad there. I mean, obviously he's trying to be like a good sport and everything, not spoil the moment. But he's pissed. <laughs> pissed at himself. All right, here, official decision cannot imagine Ayad winning this fight. But it would be typical Brave CF based on how the judging has been going today, and it would make for some drama here. Dude, this is a split decision. Are you shitting me? Okay. So Issa Salim wins split decision. <laughs> Still, split decision? Are you kidding me? How the fuck was that a split decision? Again, sorry for swearing, Kyle, but I don't get the judging in Brave CF, folks. That's my... The fight so far have been pretty good. The, the Better than some of the fights we saw in James Krause's fucking league. Better than some of the fights, hell, I've seen in Invicta and LFA. But the, the judging, man, is... I don't know. Again, maybe it's me. I didn't do enough research to see how their judging is, what they predominantly score and don't score. But I don't care. This fight's in North America, and that is not a split decision. That is a unanimous decision. Like, maybe one judge is off the rocker a little bit. But... Yeah. Anyways, great fight. No complaints. Just very, very weird. I mean, Gravedigger, don't you agree? Like, I don't know if that was 
if that warranted a split. I don't think it was that close. <laughs> you know, like if like Sean O'Malley won a split decision, that's a close fight. You go fucking this, it, this wasn't close in my mind. Um, yeah, interesting. Did Ayad get absolutely like destroyed? No, but Issa Selim beat him in every area of the mixed martial arts game. He beat him in the wrestling, he beat him in the jujitsu. He beat him in the guard game, both offensive and defense. He beat him on the stand-up. Stuffed fuse takedowns. Didn't cut him up, didn't bruise him up per se too, too much, but he beat him in every area of mixed martial arts, in my opinion there. Wow. I'm surprised he didn't cut him up with some of those elbows too, to be perfectly honest. Hey, good display of respect. Okay. Okay. Let's get ready for the next one, folks. And I hope it's the heavyweights. I hope it's the heavyweights. I'm going to go drain the main vein. I'm going to use the restroom. I will be right back after this break. It won't be as long as, you know, the other break uh, coming into the main card, I promise. Okay, yes, we do have the heavyweights up next. Let's fucking go. On the other side, we will highlight the heavyweights who are coming up next here. We'll highlight their fighting styles. We will highlight their records. We will run down... Everything about them here is they're both on Tapology and Sherdog. What a treat that was, though, to start the main card moments ago. Back in two minutes. Don't go anywhere. Like the video. Drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes. If you haven't already, let's get this video to 40 likes, folks. Let's go. Let's get this video to 40 likes. Stand up. Brave CF 65 live here on the City Light Project YouTube channel. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. I have to take a quick pee. back live here on the city life project youtube channel for another live fight companion watch long watch party whatever the hell you want to call them we do a minimum of them two times a week hell we're doing three this week we might even do four depending on how late the ufc fight goes tomorrow we might actually do a little jake paul anderson silva action all right first heavyweight fight on the card love the heavyweights love the heavyweights in different promotions and we have an absolute <laughs> we have an absolute jacked up beast against you know more of the traditional tiuvasa tub of your heavyweight body which hey let's fucking go this guy's an absolute animal the man walking out right now and we are going to highlight both of the fighters here you can see them on screen I'll get right back to the comments here in a second. We have Pavel Delidko, who just made his walkout. He is shredded to the max. 4-1-0, and oh, riding a four-fight win streak out of Lithuania, the 31-year-old fighting out of Boston. Uh, Boston, England. 
against Shamil Gaziev. 8-0 fighting out of Bahrain. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Only one inch shorter than his opponent, opponent Pavel, as well. Let's take a deeper dive in as Gaziev is making his walkout right now. The hometown favor, 8-0 again, professional MMA record. Um, And it looks like he's making his brave CF debut. So he's fought in BFC, he's fought in MMA series, he's fought in AMC, he's fought in Pro FC, and Aries FC. Making his brave CF debut in Bahrain. Mr. Shamil Gaziev. Let's see, look at his amateur. Uh, oh, a ton of amateur fights. Holy shit, folks. He went... Ele- so he went 9-2. and two. As an amateur, and he's eight and zero as a professional. Uh, and I'll get right back to the comments in a sec here, folks. Don't you worry. Uh, Pavel the experiment. I mean, it looks like he's been experimenting a little bit, if you know what I mean. <laughs> four to one, or sorry, four one and zero is his professional record. Um, making his brave CF debut as well. He's fought in Cage Steel KFS. An almighty fighting championship. He lost his pro debut and has been on a four-fight tear ever since. TKO, 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 baby. This guy likes to knock motherfuckers out. He has fought in the amateur scene as well, going 4-0 on the amateur scene. Um, Rear naked choke, ground and pound, and two TKOs. So this guy's never gone the distance ever as a heavyweight. Pavel Delidko. Let me know who you got in the live chat, folks. I want to know. Just an overall win for Sleem. I don't know why they called it a split. Dude, I have no idea why they called it a split either. It makes no sense. All right, heavyweights, folks. We got the heavyweights on the dock. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. We do a ton of fight companions every single week live play-by-play, live reaction, live interaction with you amazing folks here in the live chat. We have a contest right now, and all you have to do to enter is like this video and drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes. When we get to 40 likes on this video, and we're going the distance, folks. We're already almost four hours in. But once we get to 40 likes on this video, we've even dropped the goal from 50 to 40. We will choose a winner from the live chat. And we haven't had too, too many people chatting today. It's, it's, it's been a slower day. So you have a very high chance of winning a prize if you can help us get this video to 40 likes. I mean, both of these fighters, you can tell, are tough as hell. Very different body types, but at heavyweights, it doesn't really matter. Shamil Gaziev, like I said, 8-0, 32 years old, fighting out of KHK Team Bahrain, the home crowd. Man, someone's going down. This ain't going the distance, right, folks? This ain't going the distance. Someone's getting knocked out in this fight. The first heavyweight bout on Brave CF65, ladies and gentlemen. 31 is Pavel. 32 is Shamil. Pavel a little bit taller. Gaziev has more of the reach. All right, round one, heavyweights. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. These are big boys. Both of them are tall too, man. Pavel, just a muscle machine. Shamil, just a big fucking boy. Shamil, though, with the re- with the slight reach advantage. Height's not really going to make a difference. They're both pretty much the same height. Pavel, a little bit taller. Stalking Pavel is Gaziev. Gaziev going to the ground? Gaziev clinches up here. Looking for the takedown. Looking maybe to tire Pavel out in this first round and knock him out in the second round. Going for Shamil, baby. I'm going for Shamil too in front of the hometown crowd. Let's freaking go. Let's go on the guy. Let's root for the guy who clearly is not on roids. How about how would we say that? How would we paint the picture that way? We'll go for the guy who's clearly not on roids. <laughs> oh, a nice left jab by Gaziev. Left hook by Gaziev. And oh, Gaziev just got clipped by Delico. 
a right, I don't know if it was a right hook or a straight right, but that clip Pav or that clip Shamil, and he did not like that. He just he just felt the power of Pavel Delko. Delitko? Am I saying it right? Dude, they are monsters. Oh, and a nice left hook by Gaziev. I think that one rocked Delitko. And Gaziev now going for the takedown. Good takedown by Gaziev. Pavel trying to get right back up to his feet. Uh, Shamil gets the back now of uh, Pavel. Pavel back up to his feet. They're clinching up against the cage. I mean, Dalko is... I don't care how strong Shamil is. Look at Dalko. This guy's an absolute beast. As long as he doesn't gas early. In two minutes and 48 seconds left in the first round. He looks like the stronger cat, all right? He may not have that Bahrain strength. But my goodness, <laughs> they don't call him the experiment for nothing, folks. Keep the comments coming, folks. By the way, it's a comment driven live stream. Like the video, enter our contest. Where are we at with likes on the video? I want to give away some prizes. I didn't even know, I didn't order myself any new merch yet. I got to get that so I can show it off in the live streams. But uh, I'm pumped all the all the contest winners up until Gravedigger. His is being sent out today. Uh, they've all gotten their prizes. Everyone's super happy. Brian's in the chat. You can ask him. He loves his hoodie. Ethan loves his hoodie. I hope Luke Devlin got his. That one was to Ireland, and it was a little bit trickier to get it through customs there, but I'm pretty sure we figured it out. But it doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter where you live. Even Adabayu in Africa, we'll fucking send it to you too, buddy. I'll try. One minute and thirty-three seconds left in this first run. I thought that I thought this was gonna be just a like a Derek Lewis Tiuvasa type fight. Just both of them just going at it right at the bell, but a lot more technical here. Gaziev winning based off the takedowns and tagging Delico once, but Delico hit Pavel and stunned him early in the first round. Oh, that counter was just a little too slow by Delitko, but if he would have connected with that, good night, Jim Kite. Good head movement by uh, Shamil. Solid heavyweight fight. Oh, and a left. It almost looked like a left uppercut. Kind of a hook, hook jab. I don't know what you want to call that. I'm no boxing expert here, but Pavel Delitko... Landed on Shamil Gaziev. Delico. Unusual stance there is he has his right arm kind of out. I don't know if it's a range thing, if he's trying to bait Gaziev. The downfall to that is Gaziev can read a lot of his moves and, and a lot of his uh, techniques right, right when they're about to happen. Uh, 10 seconds left in the first round. Looks like we're going into second round, folks. Spinning back fist attempt by Gaziev to end the first round. Woohoo! Didn't land, but I like it, baby. Good display of respect by both these guys, too. Somebody's going down. I'm going to be yelling timber soon, folks. Don't you worry. And um, I'm getting a desk soon. I'm getting a desk soon. I'll be in my own office soon, and I'll have, like, the better mic. I know this isn't the best mic. It's the job done. It's not the best mic. Um, but I appreciate it, folks. It's not even, and, hey, Jacob loves THPN even said it's not the best backdrop. but It is what it is. Well, he was ripping on the backdrop. I think a signed Ovechkin jersey is pretty awesome. And, I mean... I don't, I mean, Couturier, I'll give him my respect. He's a solid hockey player. He's a tremendous hockey player. I just, fuck the Flyers. Sorry, Joe. It's not that, like, I'm a Flyers hater by any means. Like, I actually think their logo and their jersey are some of the best in the National Hockey League. It's just, like, I have no attachment to the Flyers right now at all. Other than, I guess, it's, I guess it's funny that Torts is running them into the ground. Quite literally. Do you see some of their, like, players almost die in training camp? No, almost die is a stretch, but. Bag skating 2022. Come on. <laughs> All right. Round two is about to begin, folks. Does somebody go down? I hope we see a hell of a knockout here. I hope we see these guys 
let loose a little bit in the striking department. Round two. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Let me know who you think is winning this fight, folks. I got Gaziev winning that first round. And Gaziev looks like he has some damn good cardio because he's still pushing the pace in this one. And that must be the game plan. Hey, gas out the guy with more muscle early. Implement, you know, your striking after. Nice straight left jab by Gaziev. Oh! Gaziev stiffed Pavel Daliko. Oh, a one with the right and left hook from hell dropped. Pavel Dalidko and this official, man, this official, I've seen him a few times tonight. This ref does not want to end fights. Gaziev didn't even attack. Gaziev didn't even attack because it was, it looked like a walk off left hook. Look, Gaziev was like, it's over. And the ref's like, uh, 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 no. Honestly, the ref could have ended the fight right there. Unnecessary damage, in my opinion. Yeah, the ref's saying, keep going, keep going. And then Gaziev hits him with a few, gets the full mount, and it's over. Yeah, this official has been sus all night, in my opinion. Yes, there's been some cases where the ref has allowed some fighters to go on a little bit longer, and at the end of it, upon review, I'm like, you know what? It, it was good, but this one, I mean, you could have ended it right there. Boom! Oh, oh, Nine and oh, baby. Nine and oh. Oh, shit, indeed. That was a beautiful knockout. Stand up, Bahrain. Your boy just knocked out. An absolute monster in his own right, Pavel Delitko. I thought Delitko was just going to go right through the canvas there. Beautiful, beautiful. And you know what? I love the game plan. Wrestle him a little bit. Implement a pace. That's going to tire him out and maybe it, it wasn't super gassed, but just his time was a little bit off there and boom, knocks him out. Ken Smith, weird ref, man. They need to replace him. Hey man, this is brave CF. I have no idea how like they're officiating or anything goes, but yes, if that, that was in North America and the ref wasn't Herb Dean, that would have been stopped. If it was Herb Dean, I mean, if it was Herb Dean, he would, he would have just let Dalico die. Let's let's be honest. Herb Dean is the worst referee in the UFC by a long shot. And he used to be one of the best. Now he's just as much of a laughing stock as uh oh, fuck, I forget them now. I forget the two the two joke ones. The one who'd always do the heart and um Yamagatsi? What's his name? Anyways. Steve something or other. Yamagatsu? I don't know. Anyways. Listening to uh, the winner being announced here in the center of the ring. And Gadziev, a little emotional here in front of his uh, home crowd. A great display of respect. Wow. What, a, what an awesome fight. What an awesome fight, folks. That's two for two on the main card that I've really, really enjoyed thus far on this Brave CF65 card. Wow. Yeah, I mean, he just knocked out a monster. Knocked out a monster. Okay. Um, Carl Booth against um, Ahmed Laban. Is that the next fight? I hope so. Oh, the... Uh... Watching the replay again right now. And this should be the next fight up, folks. So I'm going to get it up. And we'll highlight them both here in a moment. A lot of catch weights here <laughs> on this card. Oh, man. Yeah. And th that damage at the end was unnecessary. But hey, I've I've said my piece on that. This ain't the UFC. This ain't the the this ain't, this ain't the promotions that I usually cover. 
I'm starting to get a hang of how one championship works, but that's pretty nuts too. Love one championship. As a fan of violence, it, it, it's my favorite. It's my favorite promotion because they do everything they can to bring the violence. Um, oh my God. This mouse that I'm using just sucks so much. I'm literally just trying to highlight something and it's not working. So give me one sec here. I just want to get this up on a little ticker. Then we'll highlight both of these fighters. And I believe it's Ahmed Laban against Carl Booth next. Again, that's what it is in the bout order. The bout order has been a little bit suspect throughout the night, but if it's not, we will change it, folks. In the meantime, like the video and comment in the live stream for a chance to win some prizes. That's right. When we get to 40 likes on the video, we will give away some prizes to some lucky people in the live chat. Steve Mazzagatti and Mario Yamazaki. Yes, yes. How could I? I don't know why I forgot off the top of my head. Must have been those two joints. Is two joints still here? <laughs> I'm kidding. That's not what I did in the break. Too early for that. Uh, crazy fight, man. Yeah, man. These uh, these first two. And Kenneth, again, shout out to you and Grave Digger, who just you guys have been here this whole time. And and it hasn't been a big live stream today. There hasn't been a lot of people, but that's okay. Some fight streams would have just shut it off if they're like oh i didn't hit it today there's not 100 people there's not 20 50 people they would have just ended it me i don't give a fuck if there's just one of you i love that there's even one other person in this case four or five you know up to 10 people grave digger jones included who just want to watch some fights with me today so so honored so thrilled to have you folks and rogue strummer one of the ogs he's been supporting the channel for a while I haven't seen him in like a month drops in and drops the five dollar donation i told rogue strummer i'd give him shouts at this entire stream so i'm giving him shouts again thank you so much rogue strummer for supporting the channel early on when we were like barely at 500 subscribers and now past a thousand still showing us some love he did say the caveat is i have to use that to bet on his underdog 100 percent will do that because ethan gave me two pounds shout out ethan uh calvert on a one championship live stream and told me to use that to bet on o'malley i did Paid my bar tab that night. Hey, oh, hey, that shit beautiful than a motherfucker. All right. Again, I'm pretty sure this is the next fight. If it's not, we will readjust. In the meantime, uh, we'll take a quick break on the other side. As the fighters are walking out, we will highlight the fighters. We'll run down their fighting style, their record. I'll give my official prediction, and then I will hear, or I want to hear yours, by the way. So let me know in the live chat. And again, we have a contest going on here today. Every single stream that we do, and we do a minimum of two a week, folks. We do giveaways. All you have to do to enter is like the video and drop a comment in the live chat. Just say, what's up? Join our fight community. Um... We absolutely love watching fights with other MMA and uh, combat sports fans so we can talk about the event or upcoming events. How we were even talking hockey. We're all sports fans here a little bit ago. Absolutely love having you all part of these streams. You are all amazing. So we'll get right back to highlighting these fighters and getting back to some play-by-play -play live reaction interaction, of course, here on the other side. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be right back. So Oh. 
back live here on the city light project youtube channel for another watch along fight companion here live play by play live commentary live reaction and interaction with all you amazing folks here i took a quick break there because i wanted to grab this to show both our hockey and fight fans here as the fighters make their walkouts and we will profile them and run them down here in a moment check this out speaking of fights don cherry's rock'em sock'em 15 Brought to you by Cold FX. Dude, I got a uh, Don Cherry custom bobblehead and it came with this. It's the Don Cherry's hand picked best fights between 1989 and 2004. So the best fights between that, that range. Oh my God. This is absolutely legendary. If you're a fan of fights, if you're a fan of hockey, if you're a fan of hockey fights, Don Cherry, baby, let's go. All right, let's profile that, these next two fighters, and I want to get your predictions, folks. Light heavyweights, Mohamed Syed Malim, 11-4-0 in mixed martial arts. He lost his last fight in Brace CF 57, but before then, he was on an absolute tear. Six-fight win streak before suffering... Uh, it was a no contest, and then in the rematch, he lost against Mohamed Fakhreddin. Again, 11 4 0 record, Mohamed Saeed Malim. His opponent out of, or I should say, uh, Mohamed Saeed Malim out of Algeria. His opponent, 6 0, the hometown favorite out of Bahrain. Magomed Gazisulov. I mean, he's an of in the end of his name, so you know he's probably going to win. 6-0 and o in professional mixed martial arts, making his brave CF debut. Crazy amateur career. Six. 12 so 10 and 2 on the amateur scene he is a perfect 6 and 0 oh professionally magomed gadzi yusilov
205 is here, light heavyweights, folks. We just saw the heavyweights go at it. We just saw whew, we just saw a crazy knockout in the heavyweights. Mago Mohamed Saeed Malim, 38 years old. Magomed Gadisulov is 28. Okay, so they're feeding the young Bahrain uh, kid to the wolves here by the looks of it, folks. All right, here we go. Round one. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Light heavyweights here. Brave CF 65. Live play-by-play, -play, live commentary, live reaction, of course, interaction with all you amazing folks in the live chat. Like the video, drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes. I think we're at like 26 or so likes. We need to get that. We need to get that bitch to 40. Once we get the video to 40 likes, we will select a winner from the live chat. And that's all you have to do to enter is like the video and drop a comment in the live chat. Kenneth, thank you so much. I, I'm glad that you dig my vibe, dig my energy. I'm going to bring it every fight stream. Nice knee to the body. By Magomed on Malim. Malim, 38 years old. In great shape for 38 years old. Against a 28-year-old, though, and Magomed Gadzin Yasulov. Gadzi Sulov with a nice left hook. Malim going for the takedown. A little clash of heads there. Might have cut Malim. That's unfortunate because those those can really fuck you up. I mean, look at Tyler Santos against Valentina Shevchenko. She would have won that fight if it wasn't for that clash of heads. Again, like the video, folks. Drop a comment in the live chat if you want to win some prizes. We do giveaways on every live stream that we do. We live stream minimum of two times a week. Stalking Magomed is Malim. But a good job of getting through the pocket is Magomed Gaz Gazi Yusalov. When I think about it, I mess it up. When I just like read it, it's been pretty good thus far. Clinched up, and they're separated. Like I said, Magomed, he's gotten off in the last bit of his last name, so you know he's just probably going to win this fight. <laughs> Shout out to those who joined us throughout this entire stream. I know it wasn't a big one. I kind of knew that going in. It's a Friday morning in North America. Mostly everyone's working. I should be working. I have to do some work after this, admittedly. But I appreciate those who've joined. And I, I'm excited to hang out with a lot of you tomorrow for Bellator and UFC. We're doing back-to-back -back streams tomorrow. Hey, maybe back-to-back -to, -back to back, as we might do Jake Paul, Anderson Silva as well. What a nice one-two by Magomed. Gazid Sulov. Oh, that jab went through and hit Malim. Gazid Sulov is rangy, man. Oh, and he went for the knee, caught it. Did Malim and actually cranked him with a right hook. I mean, that was a veteran move. That's the experience shown in. One minute, 55 seconds left in this first round. Again, shout out to everyone who's Kenneth, Grave Digger Jones, Jacob loves THPN. Kyle joined us for a bit. Brian, bum, 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 bum. just scrolling. Two joints: Matt, Victoria, Payne, Gabriel, and of course Rogue Fucking Strummer with the five dollar donation. Thank you so much, buddy. Props to uh, Malim. I mean, clash of heads, cut him up a little bit, and he's still the aggressor in this one. Magomed looks good, though. I mean, very much a gauging of timing, I think, for Magomed right now. Ooh. And it looks like Malim actually tagged Magomed, but Magomed countered and then takes him down. Easy takedown. And Magomed doing what those Magomed... <laughs> insert first part of the name, Ovs, do to everybody. 50 seconds left in this first round. And what these OVs do to people is they take your back, they get on top position, and they maul you and beat the piss out of you. <laughs> I'm not going to waste my money on Paul and Silva boxing match. Hey, fair enough, fair enough. You can, fair enough. You can just listen to me scream about it. 
I mostly just want to see Silva win. If, if Paul wins, then then it's a waste of money, 100%. But if Silva wins, then it's like fucking rights. I saw that. I saw that. I was a believer. What a nice overhand right by the Magomed. Hey, but he kept stalking him. Kept stalking him. That was a good round. That was a good round. And hey, the 30, what is he, 38 year old? He looked damn good. Looked damn good. Or right, looking at some replays. Yeah, beautiful single leg takedown there. That's that Sambo background, baby. I'm just assuming that he is Sambo or some sort of wrestling. Hey, Mokhaev and Islam Makachev, both at this event. Mokhaev, isn't he alumni of Brave? Chimaev also was knocking people out in Brave before entering the UFC. Oh. Round two is about to begin. All right, let's get it on. Round let's two. Again, shout out to everyone joining us live here on the City Light Project YouTube channel. Like play by play, live commentary, live reaction, live interaction with you folks. We have a contest going on. Eye poke. Magomed. Accidental eye poke on Mohammed Saeed Malim. Um, but as I was saying, we do contests on every single stream that we do. So like the video, drop a comment in the live chat. If we have 40 likes on the video, we'll give away some City Light Project merchandise to a lucky commenter in the live chat. I mean, Jake Paul needs to fight someone his at his own size. I mean, and age. Um, I mean, I get what he's doing. Look, I don't, I'm not a fan of Jake Paul, the YouTuber, the Disney star. The way that Jake Paul has entered boxing, is it any different from any boxers who fight just absolute shit boxers and pad their records? At least he's fighting those with names, those who are were actually professional fighters in their career. And I get their way past their prime, the Woodleys, the Askren, the fucking Anderson Silva. But it's something to test yourself. And then after this one, if he wins, get into the actual boxing scene with some bigger names. I don't... Look, if I if I was in his shoes, I would do the same thing. So I cannot fault him, the boxer. And he's actually kind of impressed me. And Silva, it's not like he's Tito Ortiz, right? He beat the piss out of Tito Ortiz too. Um, but 100% understand why people don't want to buy into that, literally and figuratively. Totally get it. I'm not going to sit here and try to convince you otherwise. I love Anderson Silva more than most people, you know, like love athletes, right? So... I'm a believer. If I have to pay 20 bucks for fight TV to watch him fight, I'll do it. I'll do it. Uh, I definitely think Anderson beats Jake. And dude, I love Jake. There wasn't a fight. I thought Jake was going to lose except Woodley because he's got serious power, but props to Jake for eating that shit. The first fight against Woodley was actually a good one. The second one, I mean, Woodley wasn't even prepared to fight. Sorry, I haven't been commentating on this one, folks. It's been pretty even on the feet here in the first two minutes. Mohamed Saim Malim and Magomed Gadzi Desulov starting to slow down though a little bit is Malim and he is the older fighter by 10 years got a lot more experience in mixed martial arts than Magma Magma with a beautiful takedown beautiful takedown but right into the guillotine of Malim uh, and he gets out of it almost back to his feet back to his feet now center of the ring and stop rousing Dana White <laughs> let's go then should have to fight the Gypsy King. Oh my God! I mean, that's that's basically a death sentence. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? Oh, and a nice uppercut by Malim on Ga on Magomed Gadzi Sulov. Gadzi Sulov eats it though and ends up getting the takedown. Top position now. Two minutes left in the second round. Could you imagine? Oh my God! The Gypsy. I love the Gypsy King. By the way. We'll talk about uh, two beautiful comeback wins in the Deontay Wilder fights. I can't wait to say Ngannou fight him eventually. 
Ganu sending the Gypsy King to the Shadow Realm. No, I, I still think any boxer who's a pure boxer will beat M any MMA fighter not named Rob Font or Calvin Cater in a pure boxing match. I truly think that like even like even the Diaz's, even Holloway, I don't think that they fare well in boxing, boxing compared to to mixed martial arts striking. Cater and Font came from that background, so that's different. And I'm sure I'm missing some pure boxers in the UFC who became mixed martial artists. One minute and 15 seconds left in the second round, and Magomed is doing what Sulavs do. <laughs> Absolute domination. He's actually getting some ground and pound as he's working in the full guard of Mohammed Saeed Malim. Let's go, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Again, shout out to everyone joining. Shout out to everyone who joined. Still got a few hours left here on this card. All right, 25 seconds left in this second round. Oh, and a nice overhand right by Magomed, but Saeed Malim is just chasing that uppercut. And credit to Mohamed Saeed Malim. Beautiful uppercut and left hook. That one hurt. That one hurt, Magomed. Magomed's hurt. Magomed's hurt, man. Magomed with the push kick. Good job on him to try to get him off the pocket there. Use his range. Malim's got some power, though, folks. Walking forward still is Malim. Five seconds left. A nice overhand right by Malim. Magomed of the I mean, he's he's in it. He's in it. Unreal. Uh, I would buy that card. Also, Magomed is trying to get out of the hold. Yeah, dude, that was. That was good. That was good. I give the 38-year-old credit. He's in this. He is in this despite, I mean, Magomed doing Magomed things, right? Let's be honest. He is very much a textbook Dagestani fighter, even though he's uh, fighting out of Bahrain. I'm sure he's got some Dagestani, uh, descent, D Dagestani descent there. <laughs> uh, how do you folks score that one so far? Let me know. I'm just sharing this on Twitter again. Don't mind me. If you're viewing on Twitter, please migrate over to YouTube so you can join our live chat. And there's that cut early that occurred early on in the fight. All right, round three. Let's get it on. Light heavyweights, let's get it on. All right. And Magomed with a single leg, and he gets it. Mudsen Malim gives up his back here to try to get back up to his feet up against the cage. 30 seconds in this, and the pace that Magomed just put on here, I mean, he felt the power of Mohamed Saeed Malim. It's probably recognizing, listening to his corner, like he is older, your opponent. He's going to gas in this round soon, like especially if you out-wrestle him. And this is what he's doing now. Pressure, wrestling pressure, grappling pressure, knees to the leg here, making Malim work to get back to where Malim was honestly winning. And yeah, Malim was taking some shots on the feet too, but he was finding a home for that uppercut against Magomed and actually rocked him at the end of that second round. Keep the comments coming, folks. Totally down to interact with you. If you like the video and drop a comment in the live chat, you're automatically entered into winning some prizes. If we hit 40 likes on the video, we'll give away some City Light Project merch. I guess happy Halloween weekend, too, to everybody who's celebrating. I was just scrolling Twitter. I'm seeing everyone's, like, Halloween costumes. 
seeing some of my friends in Canuck land, seeing some friends on MMA Twitter. Amber, by the way, on MMA Twitter with the, the clown makeup was sick. That was awesome. No, oh, a, cra- a cage grab in Brave FC or CF. Surprise, surprise. It's been the story of this card is fucking cage grabs. But yeah, folks, if you, we, we do giveaways on every single live stream. We do a minimum of two a week. Saul grappling here in the clinch, by the way. Mohamed Saeed Malim got back up to his feet and trying with the trip takedown was Magma and he didn't get it. Mohamed Saeed Malim now threatening with a double leg. But again, folks, we do giveaways on every single stream on this channel. If you see us live streaming, you can assume we're doing a giveaway, and all you have to do to enter is like the video and drop a comment in the live chat. Because if you drop a comment in the live chat, that gives you an opportunity to be the winner. Because if we hit 40 likes on the video, I, I randomly select someone from the live chat, and we send you some merch. So there you go. There you go. Hey, that shit beautiful than a motherfucker. Two minutes left in this third round. Both these fighters back are still on their feet, playing the clinch game. Mohamed Saeed Malim really wants to take down Magomed, and he's working to get now just a single leg. Wondering if the officials separate them here if nothing occurs of this soon, because there's two minutes left in the third round. Still, I mean, Malim's trying, but he's not advancing position. They're kind of fighting the hands. He's got one arm hooked in, but to be honest, Magomed's pretty much got him controlled here. Magomed, I think, is just Trying to recover. Oh, and Saeed had the leg for a second. Now guillotine. Now Magomed has him in a guillotine. Uh, and he let go of the guillotine to just dominate the position a little bit. Still, his back's against the cage, but he is dictating what's going on here in this clinch. Saeed Malim ditches the effort to go for the double leg or single leg now, and they're just clinched up against the cage. Oh, cage grab. Man, this official's blind, I swear. Trying to go for the double leg now again is Mohamed Saeed Malim. A lot of pressure here, but one minute left. 55 seconds to be exact. If this is the only thing that Mohamed Saeed Malim has up his sleeve for the, in, in the final minute of this round, he is going to lose this fight. 44 seconds. Got to do something, drag him down to get that takedown or just on the exit, land an elbow or something here. Something to separate yourself from Magomed in this round or you're not going to win the fight. 30 seconds left. Appreciate those viewing right now and you're digging the play-by-play and commentary. You are all amazing. Magomed reverses him. 21 seconds left. Oh, yeah. Said Malima is just dead tired by the looks of it. And it looks like Magomed dropped for takedown. Couldn't get it. There we go. The slam takedown. That's it. Magomed seals the deal. There's 10 seconds left in this fight. And Magomed is just raining down the ground and pound from top position now. And that is it. Look at the finish it. And it's all over. End of the third round. A valiant effort from the 38-year-old Syed Malim. He probably should have just tried to strike with him and not go for the takedowns, but... Who am I to comment? I'm not 38 years old with a decorated MMA career in the center of that ring fighting an up-and-comer 6-0, now 7-0 Magomed with an Av at the end of his last name, right? I mean, that's some Dagestani pressure. Uh, Fight to the Bahrain, though, so another hometown victor here. And there's a couple times there where uh, we're just watching the replay uh, where Malim just gave up his back looking for a guillotine, then quickly let it go. But, I mean, solid effort. And pretty good light heavyweight fight, to be perfectly honest. I mean, the main card has not disappointed yet in Bahrain. Brave CF65. Yeah, man. Solid fight. Solid fight. The first one on the card was the best. Obviously, the heavyweight knockout. Beautiful when you see some heavyweights knock each other out. This one, I mean, I would have liked it not to go the distance because a lot of the fights here tonight have been going the distance. There's been one finish, or two finishes, I should say. One uh, one in the amateur bouts, 
where it was a it was a tri- reverse triangle choke and ground and pound ref stoppage and then the heavyweight knockout. Other than that, there hasn't been any stoppages yet. So we need going into the main fights here on the main card. Brave CF sixty five live here. Watch party on the City Light Project YouTube channel. We need some more finishes, baby. Let's go. Exactly that. Keep the comments coming. It's comment driven live stream. You are all amazing. Love hanging out with you here. Okay, so are we going to have Ahmed Laban against Carl Booth next? We shall see. I mean, these judges have been pretty sus (laughs) and just a little crazy all night. So, I mean, I wouldn't even be surprised if they rob Magomed of this, but... Seemingly, Magomed's going to be seven to zero here. Official decision, center of the ring. Huh? Any day now. How about this ref? Looks like he could light up some of these guys at two hundred five. Eh. <laughs> All right, judges scorecards. Unanimous decision. Yep, 7-0. and Magomed. So one judge gave it uh, 29-28. The other two judges, 30-27. Hey, fair. That was that was fair. We've seen some we've seen some weird split decisions, whether it's for the winner that we actually thought was going to win or the loser who were like, how the fuck did they lose that fight? There have been some weird split decisions on this card. This one was like... Agree with every judge there, 100%. All right, I think we're going to have Ahmad Laban against Carl Booth next. They're just showing some highlights of this last bout, and then we will find out again. The bout order and topology has been a little bit different, a little bit different than some of the changes that Brave FC's thrown our way, or CF, I should say. Well, the best from Rumble in the Kingdom was the first bout, those 135ers we had. Dude, that was the best fight of, of the card thus far. I mean, again, other than the heavyweight knockout. Uh, like the video, drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes, folks. All right. Hopefully we see... Uh, I've been wanting to see Carl Booth fight. I've heard good things about him. Um, like the video, drop a comment in the live chat, like I said, blah, 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 to enter our contest and whatnot. But also vote in our poll question. I want to know who you voted for in our poll question, folks. All right, Brave is going to commercial break here. All right, here we go. Ahmed Laban, he is next. Super welterweight is 175. All right. Should we highlight the fighters now, folks? Yeah? Should we do? I'm not drinking any more coffee today. I, I think I'm maxed out on the coffee. It's what? Holy crap. It's 2 30. We've been going since 10 a.m. here. Four and a half hours. Thank you to everyone who's been riding or dying with us this whole stream. Thanks to anybody who's been tuning into some of these Brave CF watch alongs, ours included. Love doing some of the lesser, I shouldn't even say less. Love doing live streams for some lesser known promotions out there, folks. Okay. Let's highlight both these guys. Ahmed La- uh, Laban. <laughs> He's got a unibrow according to uh, <laughs> topology, but hey, I'm Persian. I know, I know about that. Um, the shadow Ahmed Laban 12 and five out of American top team. Uh, Zagreb. He lost his last fight against Isa Izakov. Unanimous decision at Brave CF 61. Before that, though, one is put on a three-fight win streak in Brave CF. Brave CF 48, Brave CF 52, Brave CF 56. In all three, in that three-fight win streak in Brave, unanimous decision, TKO, and guillotine choke. So, well-rounded. Before then, fought in UAE Warriors, 
where he were let's look in all his wins in UAE Warriors they've been by TKO before then fought in Cedar FC and Phoenix CF this guy loves to finish his opponents 12 and 5 Ahmed Laban looking at his opponent Carl Booth 10 and 5 the boomer Carl Booth He lost his last fight unanimous decision in Aries FC. Before then, beat Carlos Beloso in Brave CF 50. Um, he has multiple wins in Brave CF, actually. One, two, three. Three wins in Brave CF. Or oh, five. Five wins in Brave CF. He actually fought in their second ever uh, show back in 2016. And he's putting up he's put up win streaks in his career. Six fight win streak between 2015 and 2016. And then is like lost two, one, two, lost one, one, one ever since coming off a loss is Carl the Boomer Booth with a 10 and 5 record going up against Ahmed Leban with a 12 and 5 record. Both coming off losses, both fired up, both have put win streaks together in their professional careers. I'm excited for this one. Both with some decent walkout music, too. I'll go Carl Booth. Hey, just in time for Halloween. Yeah, I haven't eaten any Halloween candy yet, folks. I got to actually buy some. Because it's probably going to be trick or treaters in the in this neighborhood. I just moved, by the way, from Canada to the United States, Vancouver Island to Minnesota. Ahmed the Shadow Laban. Now you see me. Now you don't. That was pretty good by the broadcast there. Looks like everyone is going uh, Laban by submission. Okay, okay. So is this another grappler striker matchup? Eight wins by TKO, three by submission, three world kickboxing championship. So this guy's a kickboxer, and he's submitting people in MMA? Dude, he looks like the real deal. Lebanese kickboxing champion? How good is Lebanese kickboxing, Gravedigger Jones? <laughs> is that C? Oh, he's jacked out of his mind, too. All right, the, the, the broadcast says that there's going to be a knockout in this one. I hope they're right, because we've only seen one knockout tonight and one submission for a total of only two finishes on this entire card thus far, and I've lost count of how many fights we've seen. There have been a lot, folks. There have been a lot. Oh, I should just sit back every now and then, eh? Oh. Ugh, there's too much of a buzz. This mic's shitty. Sorry about that. <laughs> and my headphones don't go. I was going to lean back and hang out, but I'm like, oh, I can't. My headphones don't go back that far. All right, Carl Booth, 33 years old, 10, 5, and 0. We just highlighted both of the fighters. They're being highlighted on the broadcast right now, folks. Like the video, drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes. From the looks of it on Tapology, yeah, Good point. And by the way, if people don't know that, you can actually vote for fan voting um, for polls and stuff like that on Tapology. It's a really cool site. Um, it's funny. I've seen some, uh, I think it was Hannah on on Twitter, on MMA Twitter, Miss MMA Casual, <laughs> or Miss Casual MMA. I think that's her title. Anyways, she does a lot of uh, writing now for MMA. Oh, what's the outlet? Anyways, I'll plug, I'll plug that show later. But she was tweeting out, she's like, Meeting a guy for the first time, me thinking, is he tapology or sure dog? <laughs> it made me chuckle, okay? The diehards will understand. I didn't do a good job of telling that story. All right, here we go, folks. Here we go. Super welterweights. Are you pumped? The broadcast said we're going to see a knockout. Let's fucking go. Let's see a knockout. Ahmed is 30. Carl is 33. Carl's fighting out of England. 
Let's go. Let's go. And the Lebanese fighter comes in with a kick right away. Let's get it all. And Carl Booth grabs his leg and drags him to the ground. But holy crap, this is a grappling match right off the bat. Ahmed Laban trying for the reversal, but Carl Booth is in his guard and he's just right on top of him. Holy crap, this just went down so quick. I feel like a TKO in Brave is like finding a unicorn. <laughs> Looks like it. All right, so I mean, pff, Ahmed Laban just came out so winging. I don't know really what kind of kick he was throwing, but he's throwing out something there. And Carl Booth caught it and threw him to the ground. Carl Booth in the full guard of Ahmed Laban. Ahmed Laban doing a good job of controlling the head of Carl Booth. And he's actually trapped both of his arms right now. Carl Booth cannot do anything. Solid defense on the bottom by Ahmed Laban, but Carl Booth doing a good job of moving around, trying to free up those arms. <laughs> Ahmed Laban with the heel kicks to the back of Carl Booth in his guard. That's hilarious. High guard now for Ahmed Laban, maybe trying to set up a triangle or something. A good job by Carl Buto pushing Laban into the fence, giving him less room to work to maybe sprawl or get out of a submission. I'm going to town and booth. <laughs> Fast pace, but a solid job by Carl Booth for staying grounded and doing some solid work in the guard of Ahmed Laban. Maybe not in the strike department, but at least getting him close up against the cage. But... Laban, he looks dangerous from his back here. Doing a good job of defending and blocking the arms of Carl Booth. Or grabbing and controlling the arms of Carl Booth. Keep the comments coming, folks, by the way. I know there's only a few of us here watching, but I enjoy all the interaction with you folks. And hell, if we can get this video to 40 likes... We're going to choose a winner from the live chat and you will win some City Life Project merchandise. Um, you get to choose actually from our merch store. I'm sorry, Gravedigger, that the merch store was down for a few days there. Very annoying on my end too, but we all good. Oh, we all good. Two minutes and 30 seconds left in this first round. Carl Booth still in the... Full guard of Ahmed Laban. And again, the, the the refing and officiating both in this promotion are a little, uh, come see, come sub. But uh, the refing is just very inconsistent. Like, stand them up. It's been two minutes. Okay, there we go. And he stands them up. <sighs> Thank God. I was going to say. All right, back on their feet. Yes, let's see some striking here. Kind of a crazy kickboxing style from Carl Booth. I'm just bouncing around. Kind of looks like karate almost. Or sorry, Ahmed Laban. Carl Booth looks very much like an MMA <laughs> boxing stance. MMA striker stance where Ahmed Laban just bouncing around. Ooh, that outside low kick of Carl Booth looks like it looked like it hurt. Like the video, folks. Let's try to get this sucker to 40. They even kind of kind of like that Dominic Cruz style. Comes in, throws some strikes, bounces out. His hands are down though, and I do not like that. Keep those hands up. Spinning back fist. And that one looked like a hurt booth. Spinning back fist. And then an outside low kick. Another outside low kick. Overhand left, followed by overhand right by Laban. It's not pretty, but they're landing. Carl Booth not giving up a position by any means, not letting Laban get in with the strikes easily. Like, his defense is there. Abed Laban is just a very unorthodox striker. And those low kicks already. Booth's lead left leg is, is bruised. And look at that. Beautiful. Laban with the low kick again, followed by a Superman punch. I'll continue to address your comments, folks. So keep them coming. Love the interaction. 15 seconds left in this first round. Oh, and there we go. Booth is starting to recognize that. I don't want this. I don't want this low kick landing anymore. 
Ooh, uppercut opportunity by Laban, but he misses, and Booth actually made him pay with the counters. And Booth has been landing some good shots too because Laban comes in, drops his hand, and just does some crazy shit. He'll go with the low kick, drop his hand instead of keeping one high. He'll drop one and go for the overhand, then maybe like an uppercut and come back. But he's very open. He's very big. He's very open there. And Booth's making him pay for it with some of these counters. Let's take a look at some of these replays here. Well, oh, and yes, and Booth spent a ton of time in top position as well. Laban, though, with a good job of dragging Booth to the ground too and almost got that top position. But yeah, that, that outside low kick, the spinning back fist landed and wobbled Booth just, just for a moment. It's weird because Laban, at like first glance, you think it's Masvidal, but he moves like... Dominic Cruz. It's Masvidal looking Cruz Moff. Two jabs from Ahmed. All right, round two. Let's get it all. Body kick, left hook on Carl Booth. I, man, I just hate when guys leave their hands down like that. It's just stupid form. And, like, this is mixed martial arts. You have a greater chance of being clipped if you're not conscious about your stand-up defense. Eve, like, just having them there, is, it makes it a little bit harder for someone, even if they're picking you apart on the outside, to get to get through. I get that boost not pressing forward too much. I get it. But again, it's just one of these things. I'm like, I've seen it time. Look, look at there. Kick right through the middle. Nothing. Both giving great counters and exchanges. Yeah, this is a great fight. Great fight. Oh, and a body kick drops Carl Booth. Ahmed Labour with a body kick drops Carl Booth. Booth's not getting back up easily. I mean, Laban's already letting him, but ooh, that was nasty. And it looked just like a front kick almost. Back to his feet, and Laban, he smells blood. And Booth is a former champion. Booth, I mean, definitely a, a veteran in this game. But I can tell he's probably like, I've never fought anyone as unorthodox as Ahmed Laban. And Laban is a weird fighter. I'm critical of it, but he's, he's, I'm critical of him and his fucking hands like drop, but Hey, <laughs> it's working what he's doing right now. Body kicks again, threatened with the switch kick and actually went in for some overhands instead. None of them landed cleanly though. Three minutes left in the second round. Fun fight, regardless, folks. Fun fight. Thank you to everyone joining us. All the new viewers. We do a ton of these watch parties every single week. Bellator and UFC tomorrow, and we do giveaways on every stream. All you have to do to enter is like the video and drop a comment in the live chat so we can interact with you and so we can choose your username as the winner if you are randomly selected at the end of this stream. Sidekick by Ahmed Laban. Ooh, and that was a nice straight left fall by overhand right by Ahmed Laban. Laban now stalking down Carl Booth. He's got his timing down, seemingly. Left, right to the body by Laban. Booth with the inside low kick. Spinning back kick. Lands, but doesn't land clean. Ahmed Laban, man, you can see this guy's got some kickboxing. This guy's got some kickboxing talent and... And a complete mixed martial artist now where we saw on the ground he was threatening. Or at least on the ground was able to defend very, 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 ni very nicely. That's what I'm trying to say. What's up, Millie? My roommate's cat's uh, saying what's up. Millie, you going to make an appearance? Come here. <laughs> you folks can probably hear Millie. Amelie, oh, Amelie, oh, Amelie. Oh, <laughs> she hates that song now. I'm trying to fool Booth and getting mess him up. Nice kick by Ahmed. Yeah, man. 
Ahmed Laban, uh, tremendous second round here for him, for sure. It was on his back a lot of the first round, so we didn't get to see just his stand-up. And it's weird, and I'm critical of him having his hands down, but again, it's working here, and Carl Booth isn't, isn't exposing anything, right? He isn't exposing kind of the kind of the way Laban is cheated at times. Not cheated, cheated, but, you know, cheating in position because Booth's been giving it to him. Another spinning back fist attempt and that, oh, that low kick, that low kick fucked Carl Booth up. Carl Booth stepped backwards, winced, and then went right to his back. And Laban invites Carl Booth back up to his feet. That's the smart thing to do as that left leg of Carl Booth is fucked. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. If Laban lands one more leg kick, and dude, Booth is smart here. He's very much up against the cage, not giving that leg kick any room to land now back to the center of the ring. Oh man, look at that left lead leg of Booth. It is messed up, man. It is messed up. And that's all Booth is going to think about the rest of this fight is that leg. That's all he's going to think about as he limps back to his corner for the end of the second round going into the third. All that he's going to think think about is that leg, and that's going to set up something for Booth. Booth's probably going to knock him out here because he's going to tease him with the leg kick in time like an overhand or something. I smell it. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, man, like, oh, ouch, 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 ouch. I'm watching the replay of it right now. Beautiful, beautiful spinning moves, both the kicks. I love that fake Muay Thai kick and then Superman punch. That's beautiful as well. Hey, the better fighter is winning right now despite having the unorthodox style. Oh, yeah, Booth. Booth showed the chink in the armor. Yep. And here we go. Third and final round. Kenneth still here. You absolute beauty. <laughs> Booth needs a picture perfect haymaker. Is Booth going down in this match? I think he I think he is. I mean, whether he takes another two shots to that leg or Laban teases him with that leg kick and sets up, you know, something on like a a high kick or or exactly what he's doing right now. Tease the leg kick through a two combo. Head kick. Head kick hits him to the ground. Booth drops again. Can't even stand. It's over, man. Oh, that, that was almost a fucking kick to the groin there. LeBan, get, like, let him come back up. Four minutes, 24 seconds. He's just still kicking that leg. What a dick. I love it. Oh my goodness, and here it is. This is over. Laban tagged him on the ground again. Laban, come on, man. Call him up. Laban needs to bring Booth back up to his feet right now. Instead, he's just beating him on the ground here. That's hilarious. All right, back up to his feet is Booth. Back up against the cage. His leg is so fucked. He has his right foot forward now which was not his lead leg throughout this entire fight oh it's so bruised man you can see it you can see the swelling that calf is messed up three minutes and 32 seconds left i'm going for the kill he lands one more shot on that leg it's over man and look he's just stalking him Oh, ho, ho. the mouthpiece. The mouth, Booth spit out his mouthpiece. That leg kick hurt him so much. Laban again with the kick. Laban, Laban. Booth can't even walk forward, man. You can tell his mind is only, there's probably so much pain right now. And there we go. That left leg is forward again and, Tried for a front kick. Booth with a desperation takedown can barely walk, man. Two minutes and 38 seconds. Credit to Booth, though. This guy's an absolute savage. This guy is so tough. Straight left jab. 
Ahmed Laban, keep your fucking hands up, man. Keep your hands up. Laban, just going with those high kicks. Keep your hands up. And Booth went for a high kick. I don't know if you want to kick with that compromised leg, but okay. Two minutes and 15 seconds left in this third round. Shit. Booth might survive this round. Oh, and a body kick again. Oh, and the low kick again. This hurts, man. This hurts to watch. LeBron just playing with his food at this point. One, yeah, if he lands that clean, the guy's going down, man, and it's over. LeBron, you know, not getting too crazy here because, you know, it's a boost leg that's compromised. He can barely move here. LeBron, though, should, should be going in for the finish, but, like, just don't sacrifice defense to do so, right, and get clipped. Right now, it just seems like he's playing with his food. One minute, and 23 seconds left. Attacks that other kick, and, or that other leg now. Does LeBron... I mean, Booth is an absolute savage, man. Oh, body kick now, and that one hurt Booth. LeBron pressing up against the cage, tags that leg again. Left jab. This might be it. This might be it. 58 seconds left, and if LeBron could just push Booth up against the cage and just comp continue to tag him, it's over. Oh, my goodness. Look at Car Booth's an absolute savage. Another body kick by LeBron that sends Booth back. I mean, LeBron is a kickboxer, folks. His kicks are absolutely deadly. 37 seconds left in this third and final round. That's how he goes. He lowers his guard and pounces him. Hey, unorthodox fighter, man. And it's 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 scary to watch him fight because I feel like, oh, one counter and, you know, and you're done. Kind of like the way Ryan Hall fights with his crazy jiu-jitsu, right? Like, he leaves himself exposed in so many other ways of the game. But credit where credit is due. This has been a, such a fun uh, fight to watch. I know it's all like, ooh. It's the only one not in a gimbal. Final seconds of this fight, folks. Oh, and a one-two by LeBron. And Booth is an absolute gamer. He's still walking forward. LeBron gives him one of these. Booth falls to the canvas, folks. Booth falls to the canvas, gripping his legs. And LeBron doing a great job. I mean, the doctor has to check on him, but LeBron was going right to him to pay him his, you know, his respect. Dude, these... I mean, LeBron, credit for his striking, striking. His punches, very, very good as well. But, like, with amazing spinning back fist that land, but those kicks to the body. Yeah, a few to the body and the liver, plus those low kicks. Yeah, Booth is done. LeBon wins this one, and what an absolute savage performance. And LeBon seemingly 13-5 and five now. Uh, and he's ranked number nine welterweight overall in the Middle East rankings. I imagine he's going to move up into that top five after this one. All right, we got our co-main event next, folks. So again, no finish in this one, uh, as Gravedigger Jones says. Uh, seeing a finish in Brave FC is like seeing a unicorn. Well, we saw two unicorns today, so hey, I mean that that's something. That's something. Um, bum, 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 bum. All right. Next fight here in a moment. Just want to hear the official winner of this one. Judges still tallying up their scores. Fighters still in their respected corners. Yeah, even the commentary, they, they know who's winning this one. If I've made kick like two more times, it would have been torn apart. No, 100%. And credit to Booth for his kind of closer stance, backing up against the cage. He wasn't allowing Ahmed to, to kick the legs any more times. So, hey, just great fight all around. Booth's a savage. Ahmed's a savage. 
heat sleep fight. That's a funny shirt. All right, let's listen in for the official decision. 30-27. Unanimous decision across the board. Ahmed Laban with, with the win, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. <laughs> More like, (laughs) beautiful co main event next, folks. Only two more fights left. These five hours have gone by so quickly, it's insane. Absolutely insane. It's gonna be a long night, actually, because I have to catch up on all my work after this. Oh, he speaks English, so he's actually uh, getting interviewed. Shout out to the, the interviewer with the Joker tattooed on his hand. God damn. So he's ready for the next fight. I mean, shit, man. Give this guy one more fight here and give him a title fight. So it's super welterweight. So what was it 175 in Brave? That's his division. He's asking, um, you know, was it a smart move to, to come up to this division? And he said, yeah, I think this is my division. So many, the commentators saying there's so many different and, and various cool and interesting matchups for you in this division. He's asking, uh, he's saying, do you want to call anybody out? Hey, look at that. Mukhaev with Hasbula in the audience. Doesn't call, doesn't call out anyone, just says I'll, I'll fight anyone. American top team out in... Uh, where he trains, that's amazing. What a what a win. What a fight. Co-main event next, folks. We will highlight Torres. We will highlight... What is his name here? Izadine Alderbani and Jose Torres. This is going to be a tremendous, tremendous matchup, folks, here. 13-2 and two, Izadine against 10-1 and one, Jose Torres. Oh, he's calling, he's calling Hasbulla to the octagon or to the ring. And Hasbulla's like, no, 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 I don't want him. <laughs> That's hilarious. Saw Hasbulla there, went to call out Hasbulla. Hasbulla's like, oh, no, 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 I fuck you up. <laughs> Hasbulla's also been hanging out with us in this stream too, folks. I don't know if you saw. Oh, man. Um, I was just listening. Uh, Hasbulla was on the uh, the Full Send podcast, and they did a tremendous job uh, with the editing and interviewing him there. W- whether you like Nelk or Full Send or whatever, th- that podcast was was a great job. As um, they had the interview there, and they they edited it really well. And Hasbulla opened up to them, and it was actually pretty cool. He's just like a normal, average guy, and he's like, "Yeah, it's pretty crazy. People want to like pick me up, take pictures with me, and it's exhausting." He's like, "But I just want to make people happy," and he loves cars. <laughs> All right, folks, we're gonna take a quick break. On the other side, the co-main event of the evening, Jose Torres against Izadine Alderbani, 135-pound co-main event. Bantamweights up next year, folks. I always keep forgetting that he's not a kid. Yeah, he's uh, 19, 19 or 20. He might have just turned 20, actually. Um, and he got famous at like 18 years old um, just from Instagram. Post some funny stuff on Instagram. Um, And then the UFC signed him to a deal. Brand ambassador. What a beauty. All right. On the other side, we will dive in to the co-main event. We'll highlight the fighters. We'll talk about their record. We'll talk about their fighting style. I'll give my prediction, and I want to hear yours. We'll get into all that. And then the main event after, Brave 65, folks. What a tremendous event thus far. What a tremendous main card. One finish but the fights have been awesome. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back 
on the other side. So Folks, we are back live here on the City Life Project YouTube channel. What's going on? Thank you to everyone who's been joining us throughout this entire stream. Over five hours now we've been streaming here, watching Brave CF all the way 
all the way back in the beginning of the amateur fights, all the way to the main and co-main event. We are here. We have landed the co-main event. We will highlight the fighters in a moment. Just again, huge thank you to everyone who joins us on our live streams here. We do a minimum of two fight companions every single week. We're doing three, maybe even four this week week as we got bellator and ufc back to back tomorrow and depending on how long ufc goes we might also fire up the jake paul and anderson silva boxing match too so welcome to the new viewers like the video drop a comment in the live chat a so i can say what's up to you and b if you do that you are automatically entered into winning our contest we have a contest every single live stream and we have the same thing if you like the video and get it to our goal of and this week it's 40 likes or this stream, it's 40 likes. If we hit our goal of 40 likes on the video by the end of this stream, we will choose a winner, someone, a lucky listener, a lucky community member who commented in the live chat. So there you go. It's easy to enter. We want to give you some prizes. All right. If you're also new to the stream, we love to highlight the fighters before the fights as they're making their walkouts right now. Let's do just that. Is it Dean? Al Durbani, 13 and 2 pro MMA record. The Palestinian Samurai is his nickname. He's currently on a five fight win streak. Um, looks like he's making his brave CF debut as he's fought in ACS Fight Night, UAE Warriors. Spent a lot of time at UAE Warriors, Phoenix FC, Desert Force, and Al Baltal, Gladiators FC as well. So, been around a ton of promotions. Uh, UAE Warriors is where he fought his last three fights, and he won all three of those as, oh, I guess last five fights, I should say, where he went four and one in UAE Warriors. Or six fights, sorry. Um, anyways, five fight win streak for Izzedine Al Derbani. Looking at his opponent, decorated American kickboxing and boxing striker Jose Shorty Torres, 10 and 1 professional mixed martial arts record. Trains at American top team. He's on a two fight win streak right now. In Brave CF 49, he defeated Blaine O'Driscoll. Majority draw at Brave CF 42. And at Brave CF 23, he beat Amir Albazi. You mean Amir Albazi? Oh shit. Okay, so he Amir Albazi is a legit fighter. Amir Albazi is in the UFC. He's 15 and 1. So Amir Albazi's only loss has come to or at the hand of Jose Torres. Damn. If that doesn't show how good a, of a fighter Torres is, and I get Albazi was young at that point, but still, that's solid. So he's beaten UFC caliber talent in his career thus far. I'm going with Torres, baby. Lock it in. I'm going with Torres. Fighting out of Chicago, American top team. He's beaten some killers. Jared Brooks, too. Yeah, Jared Brooks is solid. Jared Brooks is 19 and 2 and is currently in one championship right now and fought in Bellator as well. Man, this guy's legit. Jose Torres is legit. Fucking rights. Co main event. Let's go, baby. <laughs> I got Jose Torres. I don't see any real competition from Izzedine except maybe Yusuf uh, Giredi, but he fought a bunch of cans too. Let's see how Jose Torres looks after a year and a half off fights. Yeah, he beat Amir Abizi. Jose is fucking good. I might go for Izzedine for this one. Yeah, I might sp spice it up a little bit, Grave Digger. Spice it up. I would be shocked but impressed if Izzedine can take out Jose Torres. Number five, flyweight ranked. Yeah, I'm pumped for this one. This is going to be a good one. Let's go, folks. Let's go. Get your predictions in the live chat. And let me know if you voted for this fight in our poll question. As the poll question today was, was pretty simple. It was essentially, 
which of the top matchups are you most excited for? This one's one of them. Um, I'm I'm gonna check in on it actually. Um, bum, 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 bum. Twenty five likes on the video. Let's try to get to forty, folks. And this fight leads the poll. Leads the poll with just shy of fifty votes. So if you're watching, vote in the poll question. What fight are you most looking forward to on this Brave F? Oops, I messed up. I wrote Brave FC. It's supposed to be Brave CF. My apologies, folks. My apologies for that. Um, Jose Torres against Izzedine, 36%. The main event, 30%. And uh, Malim's fight and Booth's fight were both 17%. Oh, shit. I can't believe I wrote FC, not CF. That's embarrassing. Anyways, keep the comments coming, folks. You all are amazing. Oh, I'm pumped for this fight, folks. I'm pumped for this fight. Let freaking go. Just being announced now in the center of the octagon. Ah, oh, I said it again. Squared. Ring or squared ring, circled ring. God damn, circle cage. I'm hungry, folks. I'm hungry. Five hours and 20 minutes of streaming is finally beginning the show. The circle cage. Much like one championship. And it's a damn nice cage, too. Looks like the mat's nice and even. Look at that. Look at all his sponsors. This guy's making bank and brave. <laughs> All right, folks, I'm locking it in, Jose Torres. Like Kenneth highlighted, Izzedine, I mean, he's been crushing cans his career while Jose Torres has fought UFC caliber guys. Round one, Coleman event. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Live play-by-play, -play, live reaction, live interaction. Bonk. Some strikes thrown at distance by Izzedine right off the bat. Izzedine, 34 years old. Torres, 30. A nice one-two by Izzedine. Inside low kick on Torres by Izzedine. Outside low kick on Torres. I mean, Izzedine really throwing some bombs with his elbows and uh, capitalizing on his range. A nice knee. I mean, Izzedine being the rangier and taller guy, he's really using that to his advantage right now, especially those outside low kicks on Torres. That outside leg kick, that one sounded like it hurt. Izzedine, though, can he sustain this type of pressure the entire fight? Torres now with an outside low kick. High kick by Izzedine. Torres getting closer and closer into the pocket. And he's pretty much blocked the, the punches of Izzedine thus far. Izzedine doing some good work with the kicks, though. Body kick just landed. Inside low kick landing. Oh, and a nice knee. A nice knee. Torres landed on Izzedine, and then Torres with a beautiful judo throw right into that modified half guard top position. Beautiful, beautiful technique by Jose Torres. Bonk. <laughs> Every time uh, you say octagon. Yep. <laughs> Most of the cages are octagons, especially like the, the LFAs, the, the FACs and things like that. It's the circle and squared ones. It's because I'm used to saying octagon. Isn't PFL also an octagon? Um, Bellator's N1 are beautiful, though. And this one, too. Braves, uh, Braves' cage is sick. Barely any blood on the mat. 
Torres not doing too much from top position here. Oh, as he kind of moves, is it into the side? Is he doing a good job of defending here from bottom position? He's doing that. The smaller guy is doing that. Still in the half guard. Oh, and there we go. Laid down some hard shots, some elbows there. Good job by Torres. He singled one of the hands out of Izzedine, that left one, and Izzedine got it out and is able to defend again. Torres doing a good job keeping that top position. Nice elbow by Torres. If you're viewing on Twitter, migrate over to YouTube so you can join our live chat. Still in that half guard side control. And whenever Izzedine, you know, almost tries to get out or is defending enough where the ref might stand it. I mean, Torres, he works. Forces Izzedine to defend a different position, lays down some ground and pound. And he's winning in the ground and pound. I mean, it's not like he's just laying on him here. He's laying down some hard shots, elbows, and some solid, solid strikes every time Izzedine breaks that grip. 30 seconds left in the first round. Like the video, drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes, folks. If we hit 40 likes on the video, we'll choose a winner from the live chat. So make sure to comment. And we'll, we'll ship you some City Life merch. Half mount, full mount now with 15 seconds left. Fully mounted, only 15 seconds left, though, for Torres. But hey, might as well get a strike in or two. And this looks good on the judges' scorecard. End of the first round, ended up top position, ended up full mount, ended laying down ground and pound from the, like the best ground and pound position you can be in the full. I mean, other than the crucifix, the full mount. And Izzedine showing off his solid striking. His kicks looked very, very good. But, I mean, look at that experience by Torres. Oh, he just grabbed him, manhandled him, and tossed him to the canvas. And then control control time. I mean, put it this way. Yeah, he got pieced up on his feet a little bit. You can see, you can see the damage in his face. However, control time and significant strikes all go to Torres in that one. All right. Man, Torres, he doesn't even look like he's gassed out at all. He's got so much left in the tank. All right, round two. Let's get it all. Let's get it on. Center of the ring. Trying for that outside low kick again was Izzedine, and then tried to spin back kick, but Torres read that, and Torres is stalking him now. Torres with a nice left hook. That rocked Izzedine a bit. Izzedine with the outside low kick. Torres shoots with a takedown. Single leg and gets it. Beautiful. Pins Izzedine up against the cage. And there's more of what Torres did in that first round. Modified half guard. A little sprawled up now. And I mean... He might be able to sweep him here and get into that full mount. Modified half guard side control sprawled up now, though. It's pretty much a side mount. Isn't he doing the best job that he can of at least singling out one of Torres' arms? But Torres making him pay every time he... 
every time Izzedine gra- uses both his arms to isolate one of Torres' arms, Torres does a good job of just getting a strike down. And Torres, top position, full mount. Torres has the full mount. And, I mean, he was so close to finishing the fight in that first round. you got to imagine now that he has three minutes time to work <laughs> that he'll end this one. Taking his time, though, posturing up. Ooh, some nice strikes. Three minutes left. Still full mount. Is he doing a good job of trying to roll back and forth? Ooh, potential arm triangle now. Two minutes and 42 seconds. Potential arm triangle. I mean... Arm triangle, it's in. Side control. Survived the the arm triangle, but gave up his back and side control. Now, I mean, Torres is just is it Torres is literally ragdolling this guy. Torres is choosing right now to strike rather than yeah, lift him back up and throw him to the ground. Oh, and back up to his feet. Good job of scrambling by Izzedine. Back up to his feet now, and Torres takes him right back to the ground, right into that side control, modified half guard. That beautiful position. I guess this is more of a half guard here, but Torres is going to adjust. One minute and 50 seconds left. Yeah, I mean, in that first round, he pieced him up pretty good on the feet in like the first minute or so. A couple shiners, a little bruised under that left eye in particular. Oh, was it north-south or side control now? Almost north-south, but side control. Was looking for a Kimura. Good sprawl by Izzedine, but I mean, total control here by Jose Torres as he just pushes him down to his back again. Gets right into side control. Absolute domination of a second round by Jose Torres. It's still inside control. Has one of Izzedine's arms. Izzedine giving up his back. And there we go. Torres takes his back, gets the hooks in. If he can flatten him out, it's over. I mean, if Izzedine rolls over again, he's in that full mount. So he's kind of just on his side right now, just taking a beating by Torres. You can try for the arm triangle again. I mean, might as well. Uh, I don't think he's going to get it. 27 seconds left. I have screw the arm triangle, man. Just get posture up and just lay down some ground and pound. Or even just go to side control at this point. I mean, regardless, he won this round. So do what you want, Jose Torres. <laughs> um, oh, what a nice elbow there. Full mount. I mean, we all called this, right, chat? I think the first two minutes of the first round, we're like, oh, shit. This Izzedine guy can strike, but I mean, on the ground. Credit to him, some decent defense. He's he's rolling, he's sprawling, but he's... Man, the pressure that Torres put on him that entire round. And Torres is not even tired. Seemingly, anyways. Yeah, there we go. The broadcast said it right there. If there was any ambiguity in that first round and that second round, nothing. Zero. Pure domination right now for Jose Torres. All right, third and final round. Again, <laughs> this event's going so long because there's been no finishes. There's been two. One submission in the amateur bouts. We had three amateur bouts. Um, and then the heavyweights. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I wonder what the adjustments are going to be from Izzedine here. Because clearly he knows the game plan. He's like, if I get a little too crazy with the strikes, he's going to catch my leg, take me down. If I try to go for the knockout and just swing, you know, I might overextend and he might take me down. So a good show of respect here. But uh, 
I mean, Torres, he's a beast. All right, round three. Let's get it all! Is he in throws a high kick? Right hook by Isidine. I mean, yeah, he's got to go for it. Oh, and Jose Torres lands a right hook. It was a little over the top, actually. Nice combo by Isidine. But yeah, Isidine has slowed down. Isidine striking in the first two rounds, or in the first uh, two minutes of the first round was beautiful. Nice, nice flying knee, though. Muay Thai clinch. Smart, smart by him to do that, actually. But I mean, he's he's tired. He's beaten up, and Jose Torres clinches right up against the cage. And oh, unfortunate knee. Jose Torres pulled him down a bit to try to knee him in the in the stomach, and oh, knees him right in the groin. No, not a dirty move at all. Or that was purely accident. But we heard out there. We heard the scream of visiting after. Okay, let's take a look at the replay. Isidine's got time. He's got time. This wasn't like the one championship run and knee breaking the cup and shattering it. Uh, Yeah, that was a little high. Yeah, I mean... Hey, whether Isidine is selling it or not, I mean, he's still on the ground, so... Whether he's using the time to recover, you're allowed to do so. We saw that was a that was a knee to the groin. Taking some deep breaths. Oh, he's getting some ice on it. Oh no, this is looking worse than I thought it was right off the bat, folks. Again, shout out to everyone just joining us right now. A little bit of break of action in the third round as uh, Izzedine took a knee to the groin. Walking it off right now. Walking it off right now. He's got time. He can use the full five if he wants. The ref's reminding him of that. You've got time. No rush. I know not again. We just saw this, what, a week ago? Oh, and he looks pissed. He looks pissed. All right, here we go. Back in action. Let's get it all. No, Jose Shorty Torres. He knows. I mean, they, it was an accident, purely accidental. He's he's shorter than Isidine. Isidine, the spinning back kick. Three minutes and 50 seconds left in this third and final round. A fight that seemingly Jose Torres is winning. Torres just stalking Isidine down. Is it even with the body kick? A nice left hook on the outside. Back to the center of the ring. Outside low kick by Izzedine and a couple combos for good measure. He's just throwing though. And Torres grabs him, clinches up, and sends him to the canvas. Another nice judo throw by Jose Torres. Hell yeah, he is, brother. Three minutes left, and Torres is back in top position. That cup was shattered, though. That, oh, horrendous. Horrendous. Oh. He's going for the arm triangle again here, or Kimura? Side control for Torres. Is he doing a decent job of defending, trying to roll over, but he's got the neck of Torres. Torres still, still landing shots from that right hand. Oh, a nice elbow by Torres. Side control, and he's just beating him up. Two minutes left in the third and final round in this co-main event. One more fight to go, folks. The moment you've all been waiting for is two to five minutes away.
Torres gets the arm. Torres gets the arm. Torres gets the arm bar rolling his Izzedine, but Torres doing a good job of staying with it. Torres almost gave up his back. Almost gave up his back to continue that arm bar, but Izzedine did a great job of rolling out of that. Wow. Great event thus far. Great main card despite the lack of finishes. <laughs> And shout out to you all for joining. Like the video, drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes. If we get to 40 likes on the video by the end of the stream, we will give away some prizes. I know it's a slower stream. I know everyone's, you know, still at work. <laughs> but I figured I'm watching Brave CF anyways. I might as well stream it. I hope to see a lot of you back here tomorrow for Bellator and UFC. Posting both of the videos ahead of time tonight so you guys can like and start voting in the poll questions early. And credit to Izzedine for getting out of that gravedigger. But now Torres has the back of Izzedine again on the ground. I mean, other than the first two minutes of this fight where Izzedine was laying down some solid striking, this has been all Jose Torres. Kenneth was right. Side control, your last 30 seconds left. Torres thought about going for a choke. Ended up very comfortable just wrestling. Side control here. Whether Izzedine rolls from his stomach to his back, it doesn't matter. I mean, full domination, full control by Jose Torres. Last 10 seconds of this fight, folks. Torres rolls, gets his back. Headbutts. You can headbutt? Torres, oh, okay, it was playful. It was playful. Torres was laughing. I was just like, you can't do that. You're going to headbutt. Anyways, folks. Look at the finish it. It is all over. The co-main event is in the books. And uh, let's be honest. We all know who won that one. <laughs> we all know who won that one. Jose Torres. Absolute domination. Absolute domination of his opponent. Hey, first round, I'll give credit to Izzedine Alderbani. He looked good in the striking department. He got out of submission attempts. He 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 was in the fight the whole fight. And it's, I mean, he's not too beaten up. But if you look at just the ground and pound, the control time, the submission attempts that Shorty Torres threw on him, I mean, pure and utter domination. Can't imagine the can't imagine the judges are gonna rob uh, Shorty Torres on this one. It would make no sense if so. All right, still awaiting the official decision. Oh, and yeah, Nizadine is just exhausted, still laying in the center of the canvas right now. I know, I was looking at that too, but then the, the, the broadcast said that it was a little playful and that they were like smiling and stuff after. I think it was just like, like I lost this fight, I'm going to headbutt you now, and Torres just kind of, he got it. He got it. Torres won this, I'll take the L. Hey, well, you were just being the contrarian here. I'm sure in your heart, Gravedigger, you, uh, you thought the Torres was going to win too. Solid fight, Torres. With a little bit of a shiner under the left eye. But other than that, man, did, did this guy even break a sweat? I mean, Izzedine is oh, he's emotionally wrecked there on the chair. Disappointed with that loss. Maybe in some pain as well. Oh, it looks like his knee's in a lot of pain too, his right knee. Torres checking on his opponent though. Great, great display of respect here. And, and just for the viewers who've been here, uh, Kenneth and Gravedigger from the start, any of these uh, new streamers as well, or new uh, viewers as well, typically I don't take as many breaks as I've taken uh, today in between fights, but I mean, it's been a slow day, right? Like, usually for UFC streams, 20 to 50 people, one championship, 300 people. 
Bellator, it's hit and miss, but we, we do usually, what I'm trying to say, have a chunk of people where the conversation just keeps going and going and going and going. You guys are talking amongst yourselves, asking me questions. We're like, I don't even have time to take breaks today. And no complaints. Just been a slower day, as I predicted. So that, that's the reason why I'm taking a few more breaks here and there. Just because I can. <laughs> but, if, you know, when the conversations are buzzing, I, I never take breaks because I want to stay super alert and interactive and not miss anything you guys are talking about in the live stream in the live chat so appreciate grave digger appreciate kenneth um jacob pain two joints matt brian gabriel and rogue strummer for the five dollar dono let's go <laughs> Yep. Jose Torres. <laughs> Unanimous decision and hey. Good display of respect by both of these guys. No an emotional pain and physical pain. Torres with a tremendous fight. All right, just listening into Torres as he's in the center of the cage right now, talking to the interviewer. Uh, the uh, the interviewer is asking him, "Why did it take you so long to get to bant bantamweight? You looked awesome." Oh, Torres is, super, is an absolute beauty. He says he just got back from knee surgery. He knows how tough it is to come back from knee surgery. And apparently, like, his opponent might need needs knee surgery because his knee's fucked. And he's just like, oh, man, I know I know how that feels, and I feel for my opponent. What, what an absolute beauty is Jose Torres. We're just listening into the broadcast here, folks. Uh, the interviewer asking him if he feels that he's been overlooked in this division. He says, absolutely. He says, I was focused. I got the win today. The interviewers put out some names and ask them, you know, what kind of matchups do you want moving forward? Bregatona, he's saying he wants to fight him. Says uh, maybe another fight before the championship fight, though, so I can get uh, get you know get a little bit more used to bantamweight. And he's giving a shout out to Chicago. No, he's uh, he's doing good. Giving a shout out to Chicago and some of the lower end areas, and saying we need to make a change because where I grew up was a, a tough spot in Chicago, the murder capital of the world. Wanting to make a difference in his hometown. Ah, what a beauty! What an awesome human, Jose Torres. Yeah, man, homie looked good for the first two minutes of the fight, first round, but got bullied the rest of the fight. Yep, he did absolutely. You are exactly that. Exactly. Again, Kenneth Smith, Gravedigger Jones, you've literally been watching this with me for the last four to five hours. Respect, and I thank you so much. You two are amazing. Yeah, that shit beautiful than a motherfucker. All right. The main event of the evening is next, folks. The main event of the evening is next. How excited are you folks for this one? Hamza Kweji against Eduardo Mora. 
145 pounds main event of the evening rumble in the kingdom brave cf 65 let's freaking go we will highlight both of these fighters in just a moment i mean it's 3 50 p.m on a friday i know i have to basically folks i took the whole day off to do this doesn't mean I, I don't have to work. I got to do all my work in the evening now. So I'm, 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 hmm. should I have a beer? I mean, I've been watching fights all day. I feel like I've deserved one, but at the same time, it's like, then I'm going to work and I work from home. I work on the internet as I push up my nerdy glasses. Um, but what do you think? Should we celebrate the, the, the main event of the evening and crack a cold one? What, what do you folks think? Let me know. Let me know on the other side in the live chat. Let me know if I see the thumbs up or the thumbs down. I'll make sure in this break to go and grab a cold one. Like, subscribe, drop a comment in the live chat. Let me know if I should crack a cold one here for the final fight of the evening. And I will see you in one minute on the other side. We are back live here for the main event of the evening. Brave CF Rumble in the Kingdom 65, ladies and gentlemen. And we have come to that moment, the moment you've all been waiting for, the main event of the evening. Hamza Kweji. Out of Bahrain, the hometown hero. 
11, 3, and 0. Oh. He lost his last fight in Brave CF 57 split decision to 11 and 2 Brad Canoda. Before that loss, put up an impressive record, impressive win streak of five wins in a row, all in Brave. I guess four of them were in Brave CF, one of them was in BFC 67. Not a huge, no amateur fights. Started off his pro career, three wins in a row, suffered his first loss, then put another three win streak together. Lost and then put up that five fight win streak before losing to Brad Kanada at Brave CF 57. 29 years old is Hamza Kueji looking at his opponent. Eduardo Mora, 7-3 and three MMA record. This guy's a world Sambo champion, though. He's a BJJ purple belt. Uh, 31 years old. Fighting out of... Where is he fighting out of? Where does he train? Oh, he trains out of Bogota, Colombia. There you go. Uh, lost his last fight, unanimous decision in Brave CF60. But before then, put an impressive win streak of four or five wins as well together. So it's funny. Their their last was their last six fights are very similar. Five wins, one loss apiece, losing their last fight each. Um, bah, 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 bah. So he lost his last fight in Brave CF. Beat Nareen Tabarez in Matchmaker MMA 2. One in Brave CF 26. Uh, competed in LFC. KMMA. And LFC again before that. He's fought a ton on the amateur, okay? Let me just count these up here. Uh, two, four, six, eight, ten... So 14 fights on the amateur scene. He went 12 and two. He lost his professional debut. Then one, his next two lost one, then went on that five fight win streak before losing his last fight there. That is Eduardo Mora, seven and three, 31 years old. Hmm. Hmm. Who am I going with with this one, folks? I think I'm going to go with... The hometown boy, Kueji, 11 and 3. More of an impressive win streak, more of impressive opponents, has fought more in Brave and has won more in Brave. So he's used to this competition. That's who I'm going for. Kueji, locking it in. Main event of the evening, folks. If you haven't already voted in the poll question, if you haven't already, let me know your final predictions for this main event fight. And finally, if you haven't liked the video and dropped a comment in the live chat, just to say hi. Please do so, as by doing so, you're automatically entered into winning some prizes. Um, and uh, let's go finish this card with a knockout. 145. We'll see. Let's fucking go. Probably go for it in Bellator. Okay, I won't drink beer now. I'll wait till Bellator. Yo, Shane, what's going on, brother? Uh, Shane, one more fight. The main event of the evening is next. We've been going for almost six hours, buddy. I think he's my third favorite fight, fight announcer. This one in Brave, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. I like uh, the backup to um, to Bruce Buffer, and I'm pretty sure he was the announcer in Strike Force. My bet is Kweji. Yep, that's what I'm going for too. Shane, you want to do one beer bet? Let's go, buddy. Let's go. Who do you got? Who do you got? I got Kweji. Jiu-jitsu and Sambo champion. That's scary. You know this, you know this Colombian is strong. He may not be crisp clean as far as the technique in mixed martial arts yet, though I believe he's a, he was a world, or he was a national mixed martial arts champion. But you know he's gonna be tough. <laughs> Shane's got the other guy then. All right, let's go locking it in. Shane's got the Colombian. 
Uh, but Shane, we're going to be streaming all day tomorrow, buddy. Bellator and UFC back to back. And then if UFC ends early enough, we're going to jump on and do the Jake Paul Anderson Silva boxing match as well. So potentially three streams tomorrow for sure, too. And we're starting off the weekend strong in Bahrain. Brave CF65. Let's freaking go. That shit beautiful than a motherfucker. Uh, no, Shane, this is on YouTube. Brave F or Brave CF YouTube, Shane. The links in that community post that I made. Oh, and they're staring each other down. A good, you know, they didn't break at all as far as like their seriousness or anything like that, but did give the the fist bumps. Twenty nine years old is Hueji. Mora is thirty. Kweji's a little bit taller and has a little bit more reach. A good glove touch there. Round one of the main event. Let's get it on. I mean, both incredibly dangerous. I feel like the skill level has just gone up every fight in this main event, which was awesome. Starting with that mystery fight that we didn't even know we were going to see, and it's still, I still think that one was fight of the night. Yeah, Shane, let me know if you found it. Uh, Brave FC or Brave CF Combat Federation on YouTube. Outside low kick by Mora. Mora's the one kind of setting the pace early in this fight, but light on his feet is Kweji. Back in the center of the ring. You know who the hometown favorite is here. Kweji from Bahrain. One minute into this, both these fighters still feeling each other out. Mora <laughs> faked a Superman punch, which is kind of funny. Mora walking in with the strikes there. Put a little too much on that one as Kweji dodged and he kind of lost his balance. Kweji with the right straight jab. Mora's the one who's kind of switching up his stances a little bit. When I spinning back kick by Mora. Onto the body. Didn't land super clean, but nice technique. From a just predominantly like Colombian program. And again, two minutes into this first round. But he looks he looks good. His technique at least looks pretty good. And I do say this though, just because you're bouncing around, just because you're switching stances doesn't mean you necessarily have good footwork. So that's not what I'm saying here. I'm just saying so far what I've seen is technique is good. Landed with the one, two, left hook. Sweet. It's been pretty good, Shane, but like, put it this way, three additional fights that I didn't even know about were on this. So it's been a long card. We had, or sorry, four. We had three uh, amateur fights and then just one extra fight on the main card, which actually was so far the fight of the night, in my opinion. Uh, Hamza Hueji gets the takedown. More back to his feet, but Hueji rolls on the takedown to get his back. Good scramble. Kweju almost got back up to his feet and or the top position, but Mora spun out of it. Kweju now comfortable taking his back. Like the video, drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes, much like my buddy Shane. I know Shane's going to be all up in the Bellator and UFC stream tomorrow. Bellator is live on YouTube. At least the prelims are. And uh, UFC. Still has his back. Moore actually throwing some strikes <laughs> from behind him. Crawling up. Or still has his back. His Kweji. Moore tried to spin him off of him. One minute and 24 seconds left in this first round. Ooh, and Hueji drags more to the ground. Still has his back. Continuing to pressure him, drag him to the ground. And you're just... Yeah, body lock. Hueji, it's been locked up. And he's just ragdolling more right now. Of 
I'm just hanging on to the back right now in the body lock and Mora tried to just kind of like throw himself off, but that didn't work. And it actually ended up giving up his back on the ground to Hueji. Mora has isolated the arm of Hueji though. Mora purple belt in jujitsu. So no stranger to having to rolling with someone on his back. Mora looked good on his feet, man. You can definitely see Hueji's comfortable being a grapp or comfortable as a grappler here. Okay, that's what I figured. Every now and then they throw the main event also on uh, on YouTube. I'll just have to uh, I'll just have to subscribe. All right, end of the first round. Wow. Great round for this main event. Again, a great display of mixed martial arts from both of these fighters. Exciting stand-up. I'd, I'd give the stand-up edge to Mora. Obviously, the grappling. Um, I mean, yeah, obviously, the grappling goes to Hueji. Mora even cut up Hueji at one point, but I think... Again, the way that brave judges have been going, that that's a draw round. And I'm not even kidding. I would have given it to Hueji. I th ah! No, fuck, it's a draw round in, in my books, too. Hueji with the more control time, with the more takedowns. Mora actually cutting up Hueji and landing strikes on him for essentially two minutes and 30 seconds. Um, Grave Digger Jones, you said the main card of Beltor is on Showtime or Prime with their subscription? Are you talking Amazon Prime? Or just Showtime Prime? Like I go on Showtime website and subscribe. Round two. Let's get it all! I've never had to pay for or you know, I've always been able to watch the Bellator main events on YouTube. So, uh, any help? Nice single leg by Hueji. Hueji actually slipped was able to get back to his feet enough to get a single leg. And now he's just attacking the back again of Mora Mora, who's trying to get back up to the cage. Mora back up to his feet up against the cage now. Four minutes and 32 seconds. We're 30 seconds into the second round. And Ham Hamza Hueji does not want to stand and bang, stand and strike with Mora anymore in this fight. So unfortunate for the fans here. It might not be the most exciting main event. If they stayed on their feet, I mean, Mora would have put on a show, but Hueji... Unless he can get that submission. Because there, there's only been two finishes on this entire card, and one of them was in the fucking amateurs. The others being the heavyweight. So if, if Hueji can actually submit Mora here, that would be huge. A lot of mouthpieces have been knocked out tonight, too. Nice elbow from the backside. Oh, look at that! Eduardo with a beautiful roll to grab the heel. That's that jujitsu. Going for attacking the heel hook. Attacking the heel right now is Mora. Trying to straighten up that leg. Full on leg lock. Then maybe he can spin into a heel hook. Doing a good job of using his other foot is Kueji. Hey, Mora with the beautiful reversal there. Rolling that Iminari roll to grab that ankle. Oh, Amazon Prime? Fuck yeah, I have Amazon Prime, Grave Digger. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. Hell yeah, baby. Hell yeah. Grave Digger, you just made my fucking day. You just made my day. I think the next round is going to be more Hueji. <laughs> I'm so pumped it's on Amazon Prime. Oh my God. Oh my God. All right, still a grappling match on the ground here. Esquadji has the back of Mora. Drags him right back to, down to the ground. Literally the center of the ring right now. Mora gave up his back, or had his back given up to Hueji. Turning now, Hueji side control. Like kind of his back, but if Mora turns in, he's going to be side control. Now it's more of his back. 
and the hammer fists. I mean, this is ground and pound. This is Kueji controlling position and striking when he has the opportunity to do so, grabbing the back, and he's just going to ragdoll him again. Two minutes left in the second round. Again, I'm so pumped that Bellator is on Amazon Prime tomorrow. And what's awesome is the Bellator event ends right when the UFC is about to start. So might miss a couple of the early prelims for UFC. Big whoop. All right, still clinching on the back. I mean, Huey is just dominating more on the ground in the grappling game here. Moro with some decent shots on the back. Moro's tough as nails and in damn good shape. So I don't think he's going to be completely gassed going into the third, but this is so tiring. Huiji's game plan is being executed perfectly here on Mora. Huiji lifts him right back up, sends him to the ground. But again, I do respect Mora's jiu-jitsu. He definitely like can see. Well, I mean, he's got that Sambo background too. So again, he's no stranger to this type of uh, of wrestling and this type of fight. Credit to Hamza Huiji. The guy's tough as nails and he's an incredible wrestler. Gets his back, gets his back. Trying to get that body triangle, but he does not get it. Flattens him out. Does he get the triangle? 34 seconds. No, it doesn't quite have the body triangle and has one hook in. Mora, good job of holding the hand of Hueji, the right hand. He's not allowing it to come pop out over his head. I mean, pure defense mode right now for Mora with 15 seconds left in this round. A dominant, dominant round. That first round, I mean, draw and or the edge to the wrestler. I mean, this one is all, all Huiji. Pure domination in the grappling. And there it is, end of the second round. Absolute domination. Absolute domination, folks. And like the video, drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win some prizes. We're trying to get to 40 likes. That's right. We even dropped... We even dropped our goal by 10, 40 likes on the video, and we'll give away some prizes to a lucky commenter in the live chat. So like the video, drop a comment in the live chat for a chance to win. If you're viewing on Twitter, by the way, migrate over to YouTube so you can join our live chat, join our fight community. All right, round three, third and final round. The final round of this brave CF65 event is upon us, folks. Shout out to everyone who's joined us here tonight. You or today, you all are amazing. Final round of this amazing event today, folks. Are you ready? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'll get right back to the comments here in a second. He didn't hurt more at all. Just racked up control time and takedowns. All right, here we go. Third and final round. Let's get it all. Every one of those where they got back up to their feet, Shane, and he just dragged him back to the ground. That counts as takedown points as well. So ton of control time, a ton of takedowns. Little to no damage, but hey, was striking in every position. Mora is a little just like... Probably phase two. And more than with a good combo there. A one, two, overhand right, and a body kick for good measure. I said that first round, more looked damn good on the on the feet. Close to a low blow there. I saw that too, to be honest. Eduardo Mora really trying to swing for it here. And I mean credit credit to him. He knows he's not winning the fight on the ground but he'll keep it on the feet. Inside low kick by Mora. Ooh, that was checked by Hueji. Spinning back fist by Mora, and Hueji with a beautiful read, takes him down, gets right on his back. That wasn't super smart by Mora there. He should have just stuck to nothing fancy. I mean, there's levels to this game, right? And Hueji, he read it. This guy's going to do something fucking stupid. 
And Hueji now with the back. Doesn't have the triangle yet, or doesn't have the body triangle yet, but definitely has the back, and he's scooping to find the neck here. Just needs to flatten out Hueji. They roll. I think he has one hook in, or sorry, one arm in. As soon as he secures that body triangle, as soon as that, he, he doesn't have the choke in yet. Moro's doing a good job of fighting one of the hands. He's got to get that body triangle. That's the first step. Two minutes and 58 seconds left in this third round. What's all this purple shit on the ground? There's like confetti or something on Kweji. Still with that back control. Mora's corner, you can see just the, the urgency on their face there. Oh, singling out the arm here. Might go for arm bar if he can extend it or beat Mora to defend the arm bar and then go for that uh, rear naked choke. Trying to flatten out Mora, but he's just still sprawling and trying to spin. Weiji, though, locked on his back. I mean, this is like Algermain Sterling esque back control. Hey, I said it first, broadcast. There are levels to this. <laughs> Oh, man. Thank you so much for everyone who's joined us in and out of this stream, by the way. What a day of fights it has been. And, you know, the main card did not disappoint. A lot of finishes, no, but it did not disappoint. A beautiful display of mixed martial arts, as we're seeing here. Body triangle sunk in. One minute and 25 seconds left in this third and final round. Mora tries to stand up to shake off Hueji. Probably the smart move here. But Hueji, if he can, he can threaten an arm, uh, an, uh, arm bar... And he goes for the Kimura. Keylock. I mean, there's a few submission attempts here. One minute left. He can ground and pound from the back and or try to set up that rear naked choke. But again, that first round was close when they were there just on their feet. Mora is an excellent striker. I'll give him that. As soon as this went to the ground, decent in Minari rolls, decent defense. I mean, he hasn't been submitted. But the pressure, relentless pressure by Hueji, who now is just raining down elbows from the back as he flattens out more with 30 seconds left in this fight. Oh, and look at that. A reversal by Mora. An escape and reversal by Mora. I mean, too little, too late. And let's. Oh, Keylock. Keylock. Now, Mora's top position, though, full mount is Mora, but he's not winning this fight. And Huey just pushes him off. Yeah, I mean, Amora just throwing some strikes here. Amora with the judo throw, hilarious. But again, too little, too late, but props to Amora or to Mora there. And look at that. They embrace there. They embrace. Huey probably telling him, like, you're an absolute savage. You're a beast. How did you not, like, give up any submissions there? Uh, Mora still new to Brave CF, still new, still a young new mixed martial artist compared to Hueji. Beautiful end to this event. We didn't see a finish, but we saw two warriors go at it till the end. Little bit of a comeback, at least for pride, for your own pride at the end there, and they made this a fight. Usually, dominant grappling matches aren't the most exciting fights. This one was pretty damn good for a main event. I will say that, for Brave CF anyways. If this was the UFC, yeah, we're riding, but that's a whole other story. All right, we will await the official decision, then we'll hang up the gloves, folks, because I don't think we've hit our goal of 40 likes on the video. Shane, let me know. Where are we at with likes? We at least went over 20, so that's good. Can't imagine the judges have too much to discuss here based off how those second and third round 
round. On 25 likes, hey, not bad, not bad, folks. You all are amazing. Thank you so much. It was a slow stream today, and you know what? Kind of figured that. Didn't matter. I had Gravedigger. I had Shane here. We had Payne, Kenneth. Uh, Brian and Brittany showed up for a bit as well. Gabriel was here. Uh, Kyle showed up. Jacob loves THPN. Two joints. Who's a Canucks fan, by the way? Victoria and Rogue Strummer, by the way, with the five dollar donation. Rogue <laughs> Strummer, thank you so much again. We talked a little UFC. Can't wait uh, for the Bellator stream tomorrow, folks. Bellator and UFC back to back tomorrow. All right, official decision here. Center of the ring. Listening in. Brave Nation main event. Oh, yeah, all good. It's because it's a work day, but fucking I'm here working and listening, man. Oh, Kenneth, that's why you're a beauty. Yeah, that shit beautiful than a motherfucker. I appreciate it. I know tomorrow will be good. I mean, and it's, a, it's a lower promotion, too. Pride of Bahrain takes this <laughs> unanimous decision. Let's go. And here comes the confetti. Hey, they put on a good show. It looks like if you're in the arena, it was a fun event to go to. The broadcast was really, really good. The play-by-play -play was mid, but the play-by-play -play here made up for it. Am I right? Am I right? She knows me four beers now. Hey, great card. Great fights. I mean, a day of watching fights, I can't complain. A day of hanging out with fight fans. You guys are supporters here on the channel. I can't complain. Only two finishes, but we had a ton of fun watching this, uh, this entire card. Literally, from the fucking amateur fights to the main event to a, su to a surprise uh, main card fight that, we, that, in my opinion, was fight of the night unbelievable stuff you are all amazing don't forget to like the video drop a comment on the video after it's posted and as soon as you see our bellator stream video up which it will be up in about an hour or two hours time when i get it up on youtube like that video vote in that poll question very excited to hang out with you tomorrow again reminder tomorrow bellator ufc streams back to back that does it for me here today, folks. Follow me on Twitter at VI Sports Talk. Subscribe to the channel. Ring that bell for notifications so you know when we stream next. And of course, check out the new vlog that Kyle just posted. I'm going to go check it out. You should too. Join us for Bellator tomorrow on UFC. With that being said, you all are amazing. I gave shouts to every single one of you. I love you all, and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.